A girl was floating in the air above the entrance to a large gray temple. Her hair was lavender in color and on her head was an ornament resembling a tiara with a stud decorated with stones. On her forehead was a diamond-shaped crystal of a sky-blue color. She was dressed in a white dress with a rather deep neckline and a blue cape. In the girl's hands was a scroll. Looking at the crowd of young girls and boys gathered near the temple, she said that a 19-year-old student who had not reached the sixth level of Kai study would be expelled from school. The students whose names will be read out will be able to go about their business in peace. The girl began to read out numerous names aloud, while the long-haired brown-haired Gu She Young stood in the crowd and was very worried. He had been practicing Kai for more than six years, but was only able to reach the fifth level. He lacked quite a bit to stay in the sect of immortals. When the guy realized that his name was not pronounced, he swore obscenely and fell to the ground, losing consciousness. The guy abruptly jumped up on the bed with a scream, deciding that he had a terrible dream. The girl who was reading the names came up to Gu. The guy was very surprised by Zia's presence. Aloud, he noted that there were many bubbles of different colors flying around the girl and asked her about their origin. However, the girl replied that she did not understand what he was talking about and said that Shei Yang had not reached the sixth Kai level within the prescribed number of years and therefore would be expelled from school. Zia noted that the fifth level of Kai will be enough to ensure the safety of yourself and your loved ones for the rest of your life. Gu seemed to ignore what the girl said and again informed her that strange multicolored bubbles were flying around her. Zia was enraged by Gu's reaction and told him that he had been unconscious for half an hour. Leaving the room, she began to talk about the fact that there are many people who cannot enter the immortal door, but the young man stopped her. The girl turned back towards the guy, expecting to see him on the bed, but he suddenly appeared a centimeter from her face. Shei Yang was standing very close to Zia and again talking about some strange bubbles. He reached out with his hand to touch one of them. Zia was very indignant and confused at the same time, so much so that she could not move and only cursed, while the young man continued to reach for the bubble. At that moment, when the young man touched the blue ball, it hurt him and he felt as if some kind of force possessed him. Zia was extremely outraged by Gu's behavior and hit him in the face with all her might so that he flew into the wall. At that moment, another young man entered the room, happy at the news that Shei Yang had woken up, but his smile was quickly replaced by surprise at what he saw. Zia approached the guy and with anger in her voice ordered to make sure that Gu left the room. Shei Yang was kneeling on the floor at the same time and expressed concern that he thought his ribs were broken. The guy squatted down and with a laugh began to tell Gu that he saw him trying to touch Zia. According to the guy, Shei Yang is going to leave school, but still dares to touch the hands of the first beauty of the sect the most beautiful Zia Kinkyu. Gu didn't pay attention to the words of the guy standing in front of him and imitating Zia's expression, as all his thoughts were focused on the bubbles flying around the guy. They were slightly different from the ones that Kinkyu had, but in general, they were similar. The guy asked Gu if he knew that Zia, as an inner disciple who came to the test, ranks first in physical skills. At that moment, Gu stood up and began to approach the guy closer and closer to touch the bubble flying around him. The guy was embarrassed by Gu's behavior and asked him what he was doing, to which Gu replied that everything was really not as it seemed to him. The guy did not believe him and ran out of the building shouting that Shei Yong was a pervert, while Gu shouted after him that he had misunderstood everything. Gu stood in the doorway and thought that everything that was happening was one big misunderstanding, when suddenly he noticed a lot of bubbles flying inside the building, on which there were inscriptions such as, Life Force, Attribute of a Tree. The guy walked and touched the bubbles with his finger to burst them. He realized that when he punctured the bubbles, his body absorbed everything written on them. The guy was very happy with this outcome of affairs and wondered if he could become the greatest with such powers. Shei Yang was sitting on the floor of his room looking at the blue glowing stone in his hand. He reasoned that it seemed to him that the life force from the bubbles is an attribute that increases the ability to cultivate. Even that low-grade primeval stone that the guy was considering added as much as 97 units of vitality. After absorbing the stone, the original property of the bubble disappears and turns into a countdown. The guy could not understand why he suddenly began to see these bubbles, but since God gave him this opportunity, he decided to use it for his own good. The next day, two guys walking around the square were discussing Gu Shei Yong. One of them could not believe that Shei Yang was a pervert while the other was glad that Gu had failed the test and would soon be expelled from the sect. Suddenly, the guy heard Shei Yang's voice behind him, calling him by the name of Zhang Hai. Zhang turned around, saw Shei Yang, and immediately ran away from him screaming. Zhang begged Gu to let him go, 
But Shei Yang only grinned angrily and said that he could not let him go because the guy had what he needed, bubbles. Zhang Hai was running away from Gu Shei Yang and begged him to stop chasing him. To which Shei Yang replied that if Zhang stopped running away, Gu would stop running after him. Shei Yang thought that only by absorbing more tree attribute points as soon as possible would he be able to revive his talent. Otherwise, even if there is more life force, absorbing it would be a waste of time. If Gu leaves the sect, then in the future he may not have the opportunity to absorb attribute points. Suddenly Shei Yang stopped abruptly, as he saw a young man near whom a new bubble was flying, previously unknown to him. Gu was so surprised that he stopped chasing Zhang. The young man greeted Shei Yang and smiled benevolently at him. Shei Yang laughed and looked at the guy with a sly squint. The young man was very frightened by this. The look and he followed Zhang's example and began to run away from Gu shouting. Shei Yang started chasing after the two guys and ordered them to stop running away from him, while Zhang, who called the second youth by the name of Wu, asked him about how he ended up in this position. Watching all this from the side, the crowd of students stood in horror and asked someone to stop this outrage. Shei Yang continued to chase after the guys. He called them bastards and asked them to give him some more suck urgently. The guy understood that if he did not absorb their attributes, he would be kicked out of the sect on the same day. Wu and Zhang, who did not know about the existence of bubbles around them, had no idea what Shei Yang meant when he asked them to give a suck, but the version that Gu was a pervert was even stronger in their heads. Suddenly, Zhang stopped and stretched his arm to the left, thereby stopping Wu, who crashed into her and cursed obscenely in pain and surprise. Zhang was surprised out loud that he and Wu were running away from Shei Yang and urged them to stop playing catch-up, because they already have the sixth level of Kai and Gu has only the fifth then they can easily defeat him, since they have nothing to fear. Gu, who heard this, stopped abruptly and asked his comrades about why they were running away from him, because he does not eat people. At this time, Wu whispered in Zhang's ear that he had heard that people possessed by a female ghost could suck male yang energy. He also suggested that Gu Shei Yang woke up from a faint quite recently, and it is quite possible that he is possessed and for this reason wanted to inhale the energy of men. After listening to guesses from Wu, Zhang, saying that only his fist could solve everything, began to warm up before the fight. Xie Yang noticed this and thought that he was lucky that Zhang wanted to fight, because now he wouldn't have to worry about how to take the bubbles from him. He said out loud that he was ready to fight and asked about which of the guys would be the first. Zhang replied that no one would want to fight Xie Yang one on one and called on all the students to pile on this pervert together. Xie Yang just smiled and said that he was more than satisfied with this arrangement. The guy thought that before he was worried about how he could get close to such a large number of people, but now he would concentrate only on collecting bubbles, and not fight head on. At that moment, while Shei Yang was thinking about it, Zhang was the first to punch him in the face and asked the guy what he was thinking about and noted that he laughed like a girl. Shei Yang got angry, cursed and said that he had not yet expressed his readiness for battle, and thought to himself that he was lucky to have managed to capture Zhang's attribute, otherwise this injury would have been in vain. Suddenly, a large number of students at once piled on Shei Yang from all sides, simultaneously shouting unflattering things at him. While everyone was beating Shei Yang, he only concentrated on taking the attributes and mentally thought that in the future he would take revenge on them all. However, after gaining a large number of bubbles, the guy realized that his cultivation could not withstand such a number of attribute points. Suddenly, Zia appeared on the street and looked at everyone present with surprise. She asked the students about what they were doing and why they were crowded there. Suddenly she felt someone grab her shin. The girl looked down and saw Shei Yang there. He was lying on the ground all beaten up and begged Zia to save him. In his hands he held several attributes of different colors. The girl looked at Gu in surprise, and then angrily kicked him so hard that he flew several meters away, and dropped one of the attributes. Shei Yang thought to himself that this blow was mean and he must have hit the girl hard earlier. After all, the girl was the first genius of the inner sect and was responsible for overseeing the outer sect. The guy counted all his attributes and realized that he still lacks them. Zia approached Gu and pointed her sword at him, calling him a bastard, recalling her words that anyone who has not reached the sixth level of Kai can leave the outer sect. In response, Shei Yang quietly said that he was already at the sixth level of Kai imprisonment. In response, the girl said that she is the main disciple of the Green Cloud sect and perfectly sees his level of cultivation. Zia said that at the moment Gu barely reached the fifth level of Kai, and although this is already more than he had at the time of the announcement of the list, the fifth level is the fifth level. She ordered the guy to get out of the sect and mentioned that she would not blame him for what he had done earlier. But if Gu continues to lie and cheat, the girl will destroy his weak cultivation without regret. 
The other students who were watching Zia and Gu's conversation felt a little sorry for Shei Yang. Zhang said that he was well aware of Shei Yang's strong desire to stay in the sect, but to reach the sixth Kai level before the age of 18 is very important. This rule is necessary before checking whether the student will be able to raise his level in the future. Besides, everyone who wanted to join the sect had to have a level not lower than the third. In response to this, Gu shouted again that he already had the sixth level. Zia looked at Shei Yang with annoyance, but did not have time to say anything because the guy said that if the girl did not believe him, she could check for herself. The girl called the guy stubborn and reminded him that if he still has not reached the sixth level and continues to lie to her, then she will destroy him. Shae Yong asked what would happen if it turned out that he still achieved the sixth level of Kai. Zia replied that in that case, he would get whatever he wanted. Zia Kinkyu swore that she would not go back on her word. The students who were watching Zia and Gu whispered to each other and called the guy a loony because he was seriously going to run into Big Sister Zia. Sister Zia is the first genius in the clan with great talent, and her cultivation has already reached the peak of the Yuan realm. She has only one step left to reach the next realm. In turn, Shei Yang is a disciple of the outer sect, who has already been expelled. The students did not understand how he found the courage to offer a duel to this girl. Hearing these words, the young man was surprised, because he did not offer a duel and thinks that he will pass the test to reach the sixth level of Kai. This meant that he just needed to hold on to the sixth level for as long as possible. The guy examined Zia's bubbles and noticed that she has diligence, vitality and sword intent. From his experience, the guy decided that vitality is the most important of all attributes. This attribute directly affects the cultivation ability. There is also a root bone that can improve the efficiency of the vital energy that Gu has already absorbed. But the effect of the attribute with the name Sword Intent by Doi Shei Yong remained a mystery. Su ordered the guy to attack her to see his strength, but he refused because he heard that the girl had already reached the peak of the Yun Sphere. Su is two spheres higher than Shei Yong which means that the girl will be able to defeat him with one left hand. The guy mentioned that in this situation it would be difficult for him to show his real strength. The girl replied that she would be able to see the level of Gu only after he made a lunge. Since this is a level test, not a duel, the girl will not take the initiative, and Shei Yang can safely attack her. The girl answered exactly as the guy needed, and he thought about it quite to himself. Gu lunged at the girl with the intention of taking her life force, but Zia dodged very quickly and flexibly and the guy managed to grab only the bubble with the sword intent. The guy tried to grab the attribute he needed again. Then Zia turned out to be very flexible, and was able to dodge again. The girl pointed the sword at Gu and summarized that he was too poorly prepared and did not pull even to the fifth level. At this time, the guy touched the bubble with the sword intent, and a blue sword aura appeared around him. Zia was offended by the fact that Shei Yong was distracted during the fight and she gave him a savory slap in the face. The guy flew off a few meters along the way shouting obscenities. Zia told Gu that it would be better for him to just give up, turned around and was about to leave, when suddenly Shei Yong stopped her with a shout. The girl looked questioningly at Shei Yong and then he asked her if he should make his move now. The guy quickly ran towards the girl, simultaneously taking the sword from one of the students. Gu sliced through the air with his sword and left a blue trail. Everyone was surprised to see that his sword had an aura. While Sister Zia stood in amazement, Gu took another attribute from her and thanked her for the opportunity to take the test. The guy once again thought about how lucky he was that only he could see the bubbles. The guy could not even think that the sword intent would help him reach the sixth level, and the life force of the best expert of the inner sect would be a gift in honor of overcoming the sixth rank. The girl emotionally began to ask the guy about where he got the aura of the sword. In her opinion, it was impossible, because only people who have been practicing fencing for many years are able to master the aura of the sword and she did not understand. How could an outer sect disciple create such a thing? In response, the guy just laughed it off and reminded her that the girl promised to do anything if Shei Yang won. Gu joked that he would like to take her place and now that he had passed the test, the young man could ask for anything. The girl hoped out loud that the guy would have at least a drop of conscience when he took the inner sect test. Gu said that he was joking about the promise given to him by the girl, and in fact grandfather was just afraid that he would be kicked out of the sect, and therefore tripled the competition with Zia. To this, the girl replied that when the guy was released, he would need to go to the inner door and say that he was going to meet her. All the students were very surprised by this answer. Even Shei Yong did not expect such a reaction from Zia, and he felt embarrassed. The guy decided that first he should go to the pavilion of Tibetan scriptures. Gu walked out of the Tibetan scriptures pavilion, 
holding a scroll in his hands. He thought about how it was a pity that the disciples of the outer sect could only pass to the first level, but the lone assassin sword technique that the guy bought was considered the best. Rumor has it that good practice can even control the energy of the earth. Most of the attributes of the outer sect disciples were absorbed by Shei Yang, as a result of which the essence stone disappeared. In fact, the life force of these items is even more pathetic. In any case, the test of promotion to the courtyard, which will be in half a year, Gu cannot miss in any case. He can only go there to test himself. A few days later, in the Killian Mountains, Gu was testing his guess that monsters also have attributes. His guess turned out to be correct when he met a bear with the attributes, rage, protection, and strength. However, the guy did not expect that he would meet a second rank beast at the very beginning of the mountain. The first and second ranks of monsters on the Tianyuan continent are equal to the Kai imprisonment area and the third and fourth ranks are equivalent to the Jiayuan area. The fifth and sixth ranks are the Condensed Truth Realm, the seventh and eighth ranks are the Xu and Pill Realm, and in the end, the ninth rank corresponds to the practice of the Shenhai Realm. The bear that Gu was watching was superior to the guy, so he had to be careful in dealing with him. At this time, not far from the place where Gu was, the disciple of the inner sect Hua Shiron, together with the disciples of the outer sect, hacked down the same bear. The disciples of the outer sect said that the one who dared to molest Zia King Hu recently went to the Killian Mountains all alone. One of the outer sect disciples accompanying Hua began to recount all the events that took place a few days ago between Gu and Zia. During his story, the student called Sister Zia by name, after which he would immediately receive a slap in the face from an angry Hua Shuron. The man was outraged that an outer sect disciple dared to call Sister Zia by name. The enraged Shuron, having learned that now Shei Yong can ask Zia anything, wanted to know where the guy is now. At this time, Gu was fighting with the bear in order to get his attributes. The guy realized that he was not able to overcome the bear and he needed to at least try to take over as many attributes of the monster as possible. During the fight with the bear, Gu used the lone killer sword technique and was able to take down the beast with one blow. Fortunately, most of the attributes of demonic beasts are external, so the guy absorbed the bubbles of the bear in order to weaken it but he could not even think that the attribute of rage could be so strong. Gu regretted that this beast didn't have the attributes of life force and assumed that it was because of its low level. At that moment, footsteps and a voice could be heard behind the guy, who was surprised that the disciple of the outer sect, who was going to be expelled two days ago, was hanging on the fifth level of Kai, was now able to bring down the beast alone. Shei Yong turned around in surprise at the voice. The guy mockingly said that he was even surprised that Gu was actually able to reach the sixth level and asked Shei Yong to tell him about how he did it. In response, Gu rudely asked the man about who he was. In response, he was told that the elder brother Hua Shiron, who is among the top 30 disciples of the inner sect, is standing in front of him, and when such a person says something, it is better to answer right away. Shei Yong apologized to this and said that he did not even remember the second place, what can I say from the 30th? Shiron was angry that Gu was so sarcastic and ordered his escorts to teach a lesson to Shei Yong. Two men and one girl with swords began to attack Gu, but he, using the attribute of rage, rushed past the attackers with great speed. Hua Shiron's bodyguards suggested that this speed was due to the fact that the guy could be a body cultivator. Gu reflected that he had spent a lot of effort on the bears, and the three people attacking him were at least at the eighth level of Kai imprisonment, if not more. And although Shei Yang managed to dodge the blow, there was an inner sect disciple waiting in front of him, whose level was unknown to Gu. Gu said that he had never met brother Hua before and did not know him, so he offered to say directly what Shiron needed from Gu. To this question, Shiron replied that although Shei Yang had no contact with Hua, Shiron wanted to help Zia King Hu avoid the shameful promise to become a hero. Hua suggested that the girl would be so grateful to him that she might have feelings and it would be a wonderful story. Shei Yang quickly realized that Shiron wanted Gu dead. Hua replied that Shei Yang went to the Killian Mountain Range alone being at the 6th level of Kai and in this situation it would be more logical if his bones were eaten by monsters. At that moment, Gu pointed his finger behind Hua's back and said in surprise that Sister Zia had also come to the mountains. Shiron turned his head, but saw no one there. He turned around and realized that Gu had used a distraction and managed to hide while Hua was looking the other way. Gu, who climbed a tree, shouted that Zia King Hu was even ready to cut off the head of Hua's dog in order to fulfill the promise made to Shei Yang. After these words, Gu disappeared. Hua ordered his men to chase him and said that Gu had gone deep into the Killian Mountains. Shei Yang deftly jumped from branch to branch, running away from the inner sect disciples who were chasing him. Nu was thinking that the top 30 inner sect disciples should already be in the Jiayuan realm. 
and the three Hua bodyguards had most likely already reached the 8th Kai level. The guy realized that he did not have the slightest chance to win in a fair fight. Running past the snake, the young man realized that even if his speed attribute was absorbed, he would not be able to resist them. Gu realized that if he was given at least another month of preparation, he would be able to defeat them without any problems. Anyway, at the moment, the guy only had the opportunity to hide in the mountains from his pursuers and check whether Gu could use the power of monster beasts to defeat opponents. At this time, a beautiful girl with pink hair was walking among the trees in the mountains. Someone in black ninja-like clothes was watching her from one of the trees. Suddenly the girl stopped and asked aloud why those with whom she came to the meeting were delayed. A man watching her from a tree launched a rocket into the air, shouting that the target had been detected and he needed reinforcements. The man was calling to the heavenly palace of heavenly warriors. After that, the spy jumped down from the tree and was about to attack the girl from behind, holding a spear in his hands. However, she turned around and asked if the person who attacked her was calling someone hit him with two attacks. The attacker flew into the trunk of a tree, behind which, as it turned out, Gu Yong was hiding. The guy held his breath and assumed that he had met some kind of terrible monster. He thought to himself that the woman standing in front of him was too strong and he had not met such people before. The guy looked at the spy killed by the girl lying next to him and saw his attribute. He realized that the person was above the Jiayuan realm, which meant that the girl he met was in the condensed truth realm. Suddenly, several dozen samurai dressed like the one who attacked her gathered around the girl. The girl was surprised by the number of people sent to catch her. The girl asked the leader if they wanted to keep the palace. To this, she was told that the princess was all alone in the Killian Mountains and this was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Plus, the girl's pedigree looks very tempting. The princess replied that she had heard that the heavenly palace is full of masters and even a little heavenly warrior must have a Jiyuan sphere to enter. The girl wondered who was standing in front of her, one of the four great officials of the Yuan kingdom or one of the twelve gods. At this time, Gu took the attribute of the killed samurai and hid his body in the bushes. The wanderer of the god of day replied that he offered his deepest apologies to the princess and asked her to follow him to meet with Master Zinjun. A girl with a defiantly sly expression asked about what would happen if she refused to go with them. She was told that in this case, they would have to lead the princess by force and several samurai went towards the girl. The girl cursed and told Zinjin to come to her himself. The god of the day replied that such an important matter had been reported to the heavenly officials and it was expected that Master Zinjun was aware of where the princess was. She Yong, who was still hiding behind the tree, absorbed the attribute energy in large quantities. At the same time, on the other side, the three accompanying Hua were looking for She Yong and wondered how he could escape so quickly, because the guy was only at the sixth level of Kai. The girl said out loud that she was afraid to be in the mountains, because they could meet more powerful monsters and she was not sure she could defeat them. In response, another escort called her a coward and reminded her that Brother Hua was already in the middle of the Jiyuan sphere, and they had nothing to fear. Suddenly, a noise was heard nearby in the forest and the birds abruptly flew into the sky. The disciples of the sect paid attention to this and decided that the guy had met a monster, so they ran in that direction. When they arrived there, they saw She Yong hiding behind a tree and were already preparing to attack him. Hua shouted Gu She Yong, die, jumped out of the bushes at the guy, holding a sword in his hands. She Yong recoiled and rejoiced that everything was going according to his plan, decided that the matter remained small. The guy ran out to the princess and the ninja surrounding her in large numbers. Gu shouted that there was a murderer, pointing his finger at Hua and his escorts. She Yong said they killed the samurai and hid him in the bushes. The god of the day asked Hua and his bodyguards about who they were. Excited, Gu shouted to the people to answer as soon as possible. Hua realized that the people standing in front of him were masters and he shouldn't talk too much. Hua Shuron introduced himself by name and said that he was a disciple of the nearby King Yun sect. The guy mentioned that he and his entourage had an order to capture an external disciple of Gu She Yong, who had also been expelled from the sect earlier. To this, Gu indignantly shouted that it was all a lie and he didn't even know Shuron. The god of the day said the guys were making too much noise and ordered everyone to be killed. Gu fussed and asked with fear in his voice not to kill them, because it was too cruel, but it was too early for the samurai and they started attacking the students. Hua and his entourage swore obscenely at the fact that they were being pressed because of Gu and decided that they needed to get out of the forest as soon as possible. She Yong noticed that all the warriors who attacked him were practitioners of the Jiyuan sphere, and he should not fight them without a plan. 
He looked at the princess and realized that, apparently, she was not for one with the attackers. In other words, behind her back, Gu would be the safest. She Yang ran towards the girl, and she looked at him with an angry look. Well, he noticed that the princess had a murderous aura and he felt uneasy. Gu was surprised to notice that the girl he met in Lechu and behind whose back he was trying to hide had the attribute of a murderous aura. She Yang remembered that the sword aura that he took from Zia Kinkyu helped him a lot that time, so he must get the princess attribute in order to survive. The guy attacked the girl of the lone assassin's sword technicians and ran up to her attribute. Gu had almost taken the bubble when suddenly the girl pushed him away from her. However, for Gu's luck, he still managed to pick up the attribute at the last moment. She Yang was filled with the power of the attribute. The princess noticed that Gu had mastered the killing aura and couldn't figure out how he got her ability. The samurai noticed that She Yang had the same aura as the princess, which could mean that he was related to blood, so they couldn't let him go. The girl heard these words and decided that Gu was her relative. The samurai started attacking the princess, but she brushed them off with a single movement of her hand. The god of the day started attacking the princess and said that he had heard that three years ago the princess had reached the peak of the condensed truth realm. So now, after defeating the princess, he would be able to feel the full power of her blood. The girl attacked the god of the day in response and said that he would never be able to defeat her because it was not in his power. Hua, who overheard their conversation, decided that the princess was probably a reincarnation of blood. The girl accompanying him asked Shuron about what he meant. Hua replied that the people who made this rebirth have a special talent that all immortal cultivators dream of. The ability of such people to cultivate is also different, and the speed is several times higher than that of ordinary people. If such people manage to survive, they will surpass the Shenhai sphere in strength, and survival in this case is the main condition. According to legend, blood is an ancient evil creature. She recognized only one person as her partner for life and remained faithful to him until the end. The person capable of reincarnating her must be a genius. That was until the Holy Land discovered an effect called Elixir. Several great masters found out about it when they added blood to their pills. The effect that came out could help them surpass the Shenhai sphere. Since then, blood reincarnations were no longer considered geniuses. Each reborn was sent to the Holy Land, where they were raised as an elixir. Since they are constantly reincarnating, they were considered a constant source. But, the materials for the elixir, that is, the children, found out about their fate and ran away. Every rebirth is reflected in the sky by a murderous star, so when the blood entered the mortal world, the Holy Land went hunting and in the end the entire dynasty was destroyed. Hua shouted to Gu Shei Yang that if he was really related to blood, then the sect, upon learning about it, would definitely expel him. The guy was surprised when he realized that the girl whose aura he took was a blood reincarnator. Thus, when Gu absorbed her murderous aura, the samurai mistook Shei Yang for one of the dynasty. Shei Yang was glad that the princess gave him a break by fighting with the god of the day. The god of the day was flying from the next attack of the princess and had to fall to the ground, but someone's hand deftly caught him. It turned out to be the Lord of Heaven. All the samurai and the god of the day himself knelt before him and were very glad that the Lord had finally arrived. The man said that the blood had not appeared for three years and apparently the team of the god of the day had done a good job in order to find it. So upon returning to the heavenly palace, he would be rewarded. Vladika said that he would deal with the princess himself and was about to talk about the students when suddenly Hua interrupted him. He introduced himself and his entourage and said that he was ready to gladly assist in the capture of blood. Vladika said that he was familiar with the four great clans and was surprised to meet their disciples. Hua, pointing his finger at Gu, said that he had done a lot of bad things in the sect and Shiran was chasing him by order. But in the process he accidentally interfered with the samurai and the god of the day. Gu realized that now there was one more strong monster and he needed to run while there was still such an opportunity, because then it would be too late. The Lord ordered the samurai and the god of day to catch Gu when they rushed in pursuit of him. However, the princess attacked the god of the day, justifying it by saying that they had not finished yet. But the Lord stopped Princess King Luan, saying that he was now her opponent. The Lord summarized that the devil from the Yuan kingdom protects a child who has reached the Kai prison area, and asked King if Gu has a chance to escape from the samurai of the heavenly palace. The god of the day stands alone in the middle of the forest and examines the area around, looking for Gu. At this moment, the guy hides behind one of the trees and reflects that he definitely did not think that even after absorbing the monster's agility attribute, 
he would not be able to break away from the god of the day. Shei Yang looks again at the place where his pursuer stood earlier, but he is not there. The guy decides that the god of the day has left and with the words it seems safe comes out of his hiding place. At this moment, the god of day, who is actually hiding in that very tree, jumps on Shei Yang from above, intending to kill him. Bu smiles as if that's all he needed and deftly dodges the attack to the side. The god of the day notices that he found himself in a small pit with eggs that he himself had just broken. Gu quipped about the preparedness of the gods, in particular the god of the day, and asked if he hunts him or steals eggs. The opponent replied that he thought that Gu had prepared a trap against him, but before he could finish, a huge snake jumped out from the side and pressed the god of day to the trunk of a tree, wrapping its long body around him. Shei Yang said that the monster in front of him is a python that has reached the fourth rank and now its strength is at the level of the Jiayuan region. He also added that this beast always appears when someone wants to covet his nest. Gu joked that the god of day was frivolous when he broke the eggs of this monster and advised him to get ready to feel the full fury of a demonic beast of the fourth rank. The snake opened its mouth and was about to attack the god of day, when suddenly he stopped it with just a movement of his hand. The god of day said that such a pitiful monster of only the fourth level is not capable of defeating him. Shei Yang stood on the snake's head and said that it would not be the beast that would fight him, but he. At that moment, the guy took the attributes dexterity, bloodlust and strength from the monster and swung his sword with the words murderers are always waiting for payback. The attack cut the beast and hit the god of the day, but not critically. The opponent said that Gu made a fatal mistake when he decided to use Python in order to get rid of him, because Shei Yang did not take into account that in order to become one of the twelve gods of the wanderers of the Yuanya kingdom in the heavenly palace, one must reach the sphere of condensed truth. In response, Gu called the words of the god of the day nonsense and said that his opponent most likely noticed that he was slowing down and was now just stalling until the arrival of the other samurai. The god of day replied that a pitiful boy like Gu with the level of only the Kai confinement area could not defeat him. After these words, the opponent fell to the ground exhausted. Shei Yang said that his sword was soaked in the poison of the king cobra and he kept it for Hua Shiram. But if not for the sword, Gu would not have been able to defeat the god of day. Shei Yang concluded to himself that unfortunately, after moving to the level of the sphere of condensed truth, Kai cultivation becomes more internal which means there are no bubbles with life force around the god of the day. Shei Yong decided to take the mask of the god wanderer of the heavenly palace, as it could possibly be useful to him in the future. Suddenly, Hua Shiran and his three escorts ran out of the forest. They noticed the slain god of the day and were a little scared of Gu. However, Hua said that even he at the level of the Jiayuan region would not see the power of the god of day, and such a worthless disciple like Gu would not be able to kill him. Hua decided that the god of the day was most likely fighting with a python, and Shei Yang viciously attacked from behind. Gu said that this version sounds interesting, but it was he who set the demonic beast on the god of the day. Hua ordered his escorts to catch Shei Yang and deliver him to the Lord of Heaven, and the three disciples, following his order, immediately ran towards Gu in order to attack him. A murderous aura appeared around Shei Yang. The guy was not at all afraid of the fact that two students of at least the 8th level of Kai imprisonment were running straight at him. Gu lifted them into the air in one motion, and then dropped them to the ground. Hua, who saw this, shouted that it was impossible, that there was no owner of the 6th level of Kai in front of him. Otherwise how could he overturn such strong opponents two ranks higher than him with one wave of his hand? Shei Yong replied that he still could not understand why they were trying to kill him. Gu guesses that Hua wants to please Sister Zia, and it turns out that Shiran can kill someone he sees for the first time without looking, even if he does not hold a grudge against him. Hua replied that since the guy wants to know the reason so much, he should take into account his weakness and the fact that killing him is the easiest option. After these words, Shiran ran towards Gu with a sword to attack. Shei Yang noticed that Shiran is in the middle of the Yuan sphere, which means that Gu will not be able to defeat him head on because Hua has much more energy, which means Shei Yang will have to finish quickly. Gu should grab a chance to piss him off and hit him with all his might. After thinking it over, Gu shouted defiantly to Hua that if he wanted to kill him, then let him try. Hua abruptly rushed to Gu, but he ran away very quickly. Shiran did not understand how this was possible, because such a speed is at least the level of technology of the earth. Shei Yang who was sitting on a tree, asked Hua about whether a disciple entering the top 30 could not keep up with an outer sect disciple going for promotion. In fact, the python attributes that Shei Yang absorbed accelerated him even more. The angry Hua shouted that the guy would still beg his forgiveness on his knees and ran at him with a sword. At that moment, Gu ran down from the tree, 
pleased that everything was going according to his plan. Now he was interested to see how much stronger he had become. The swords of the two guys collided and Shea Yong's sword cut Hua's sword in two. After that, Shiron flew off and fell to the ground. Gu put a sword to Hua's throat and asked what it was like to be beheaded by a disciple like me, calling Hua a master. Shiron started shouting again that what was happening was impossible, because Shayon was only at the sixth level of studying Kai, and he was in the middle of a Kai meeting, and the guy simply could not defeat him with one blow. Shei Yang thought that the combination of those abilities that he had already managed to collect could even defeat someone like Hua at once. But Shei Yang said out loud that he did not expect Hua to be so weak. Shiron thought that although he was careless, it seems Shei Yang himself did not expect that he would be able to repel his strongest attack. Hua shouted that he had fallen into Gu's hands by carelessness, calling him a brat and urged him to fight once for once if he was not a coward. Gu with the words tell this to Satan was about to cut Hua's throat when he suddenly heard a noise approaching them. They were samurai from the heavenly castle, they were looking for Shei Yong. Well, I realize that the heavenly soldiers will now find him and Hua. At that moment, while Shei Yong was abstractly thinking about what to do, Shiron, having injured himself, got out from under Gu's sword and ran away. He shouted to Gu Shei Yong to wait for him on his return to the clan and wished him to die. The soldiers of the heavenly castle heard this and ran towards the guy. Well, I thought that Hua was really ruthless to himself, because he even hurt himself on purpose, just to get away. Shei Yong thought that there were too many heavenly soldiers and an official who did not know the kingdom, and the guy should also retire. Gu thought that with his new speed, he could easily escape from his pursuers, but he remembered that it seemed to him that the princess had helped him escape. Gu thought that he should forget about that girl and run if his life is precious to him, because he will not be able to fight with that official. However, a sense of duty and honor prevented Gu from escaping and he returned to the place where the battle was going on. Standing on a tree, he observed the terrain. It's a strange thing, but everyone went somewhere and it was not clear who won. Shei Yong thought that it didn't matter to him, because now he could safely return to the clan, since it was still dangerous in the mountains. With these thoughts, the guy was about to descend from the tree to the ground, but suddenly he felt the presence of someone else behind him. Gu quickly recognized the aura of the Lord of Heaven and was dumbfounded in fear. The person behind him asked Gu if he was the guy the princess was trying to save. Shei Yong asked again, as if he hadn't heard the question. Judging by the guy's face, it was given to him with great difficulty. Vladika asked if Gu had returned to save the girl who had protected him and called it touching. Still terrified, Shei Yong didn't say a word. There was only one thought in his head, run. But after trying to pull away from the place, he immediately returned back at the behest of the wave of the Lord's hand. The guy fell to the ground and screamed in pain. Shei Yong lay motionless and timidly looked at the Lord standing over him. He said that now he would check if the princess would come to Shei Yong's aid. Well, he quickly jumped to his feet and began to assure the gentleman that he was mistaken. Shei Yong said that he was just a minor disciple who had never even heard the name of the master and the master could safely let him go. To which the Lord of Heaven replied that he needed to check one thing. To Gu's counter question about what he meant, the gentleman replied that Yan King was well aware of the significance of her blood affiliation for the Holy Land. But why, in that case, she left the palace and moved to the Killian Mountains alone. Gu asked the Lord if Niu had heard the word palace, to which the Lord asked Shei Yong if he did not know that the girl was a princess, the daughter of the Yan Emperor of the Great Yuan Kingdom, Yan King. Now that Gu understood the reason why the girl had grown up so well, the bishop turned to Shei Yong and asked him to allow him to confirm his fears. Gu thought that this was impossible, because the girl could not come to his aid in any way. Apparently, the man was going to hit the guy. Shei Yong had already accepted that today was his last day, when suddenly a princess appeared between him and the lord and stopped the lord's attack. Shei Yong could not believe his eyes while the lord asked the princess about why she had returned, because she had already managed to avoid danger. The girl didn't answer anything, and Gu thought that apparently the old man guessed correctly. Vladika told Shei Yong that he was blessed, to which he raised an eyebrow in perplexity. The princess, turning to the lord, called him an old man and said that he was talking too much and it was time to get down to business. The girl prepared to attack the lord of the royal dragon Kai and struck first. But the lord was able to put out his hand in time and defend himself. The lord said that the royal dragon Kai is really strong, however, if the girl wants to defeat him, it's not enough. With these words, the lord attacked her and the girl decided to take the blow, which surprised the lord inexpressibly. At this time, Gu, who was watching the fight, did not know what to do if even the princess could not fight with the lord. Suddenly, a girl's attribute with the inscription Royal Dragon Kai flew in his direction. 
HZ took it in his hands and the energy of the attribute, along with its enormous power, began to penetrate into the guy, creating an aura around him. The master began to attack the girl with the words with this blow I will break your royal dragon Kai. With a wild look of a madman, the lord began to shout that he was going to destroy the princess today. Suddenly, Gu stood between the princess and the lord and with the words dreaming, old man, raised a sword to them, from which the aura of royal dragon Kai emanated. The guy shouted that now, with all the strength he had gathered, the sword in his hands is the strongest weapon, stronger even than the one that Hua Shiran was waving and with the words give me your life the guy waved the blade. Flatica looked at the guy and indignantly asked him how he dared to attack the master. The man said he could handle Gu with one hand and put his palm forward to stop the guy's attack. But to the surprise of the lord, the sword still cut him and the lord could not defend himself. This angered the man and he again indignantly shouted that Shei Yong did not dare to do this. At that moment, the princess decided that now was a great opportunity to attack the lord, because he was careless. The girl used a blow, after which blood poured out of the gentleman's mouth, and the mask fell off his face. At that moment, the princess abruptly grabbed Shei Yong by the hand and shouted let's go, and began to run away with him. After the princess and Gu had moved to a safe distance, they stopped to decide what the next course of action would be. The girl said that her blow wounded the officer, so he would not follow them temporarily. The girl told Shei Yong to return to the King Yun sect faster. Gu asked the princess about what would happen to her and what she would do. The girl replied that she was the ruler of the great Yuan country, King Luan, and of course, someone would take the girl back. The guy asked the girl to be careful, because that devil in the person of the Lord could catch up with her in any moment. The princess appreciated Gu's concern for her. The guy was about to leave, when suddenly the girl stopped him and said that she still did not know his name. The guy introduced himself by his name and said that he was a disciple of the outer sect, but now he has every chance to become an inner disciple. The princess thanked Shei Yong for saving her life. In response, Gu awkwardly reminded that in fact, first the girl returned in order to save him. Shei Yong asked the girl why she came back, because even the old devil suspected that the princess would want to come to Gu's aid. Before the guy could finish, two giant birds appeared in the sky with samurai riders on them. The girl said that these people had come for her. The guys jumped from the birds down to the ground to the princess. As soon as the men landed, they knelt down and bowed their heads in front of the girl. The most important of them said that he was sorry that he was late and scared the princess, and believes that he deserves to die for his offense. He also added that he would like to ask the princess to return to the palace and reported that he had sent people to search the place to prevent the demon from escaping. After that, the princess and three samurai climbed on the birds and flew away to the castle. Gu still stood and watched them fly away for a while, and then went to his King Yun sect. Standing at the entrance to the sect, Gu thought that he was glad that he had finally returned. Walking inside the sect, Shei Yong thought that he wanted to get out in order to gather some vital energy to speed up his cultivation, and in the end he did something completely different. Gu decided that from now on, it was better for him to go out less and stay in the sect to calmly gain strength. Suddenly, one of the disciples of the Zhang Hai sect ran up to Gu. He greeted Gu and asked him about where he had been, assuming that Shei Yong was training. He reminded them that there were three days left before the semi-annual inner sect exam and they could not miss it. In response, Shei Yong raised his eyebrows in surprise and said that if Brother Zhang Hai had not reminded him of this, Gu would not have remembered about the exam. The guy approached Shei Yong and asked him in his ear if he had offended anyone outside. Gu asked about what happened in his absence. Zhang Hai replied that only yesterday, someone from the inner sect came to find out about Shei Yong's whereabouts. After hearing this, Gu realized that Hua Shuran had returned to the sect earlier. Hearing this, Zhang Hai was surprised and asked how brother Gu could have a grudge against Hua Shuran from the inner sect. Shei Yong only replied that it didn't matter and he was going to follow him too. Zhang Hai said that Hua Shurong is the 28th ranked expert in the inner sect and reminded that inner sect disciples can easily kill outer sect disciples, so it's better not to provoke them. Gu thanked Zhang Hai for reminding Shei Yong about this and promised to avoid Hua Shurong from now on. However, Gu thought about the fact that Brother Zhang is not aware of the current level of Shei Yong's cultivation, so he should just accept his good intentions. Zhang Hai also added that they were lucky that the outer sect is such a bad place that it is not so easy to find someone in it and promised to ask the others not to disclose Shei Yong's whereabouts. Suddenly, Zhang Hai remembered that there was another person who was interested in Shei Yong's whereabouts. Gu was surprised and said he didn't remember him offending such a large number of people. Zhang Hai condescendingly said that Gu is very forgetful, and reminded that last time Shei Yong very humiliated one girl, 
quarreled with her and now he owes her. Gu immediately realized that Zhang Hai was talking about Sister Zia and asked him what she wanted from She Yong. Zhang Hai said that he did not have such information and She Yong had better ask the girl about it himself. After these words, the guy turned around and left. She Yong thought that there was no need for him to ask Sister Zia about what she wanted from him. Three days later, the disciples of the outer sect crowded at the entrance to the temple, waiting for the semi-annual examination in the inner sect. Sister Zia came out to the students and asked for silence. The girl was holding a scroll in her hands. The girl announced that this time, those who took the first 10 places during the external semi-annual exam will receive pristine stones of average quality. The first three places will be pills for Kai cultivation. The winner of the first place will receive a high-level technique. Sister Zia also announced that only those whose level has reached the sixth level of Kai imprisonment can participate in the exam. Participants should demonstrate their abilities in less time. Sister Zia announced the first round, the alley with wooden warriors. The first participant was Tan Ming. Zhang Hai told Gu that brother Tang Ming almost got into the inner sect during the last exam and is now at the ninth level of Kai imprisonment. She Yong asked a friend if Tang Ming had a chance to get into the inner sect this time. The guy replied that, according to rumors, the sixth level is enough to pass the first round. But in fact, even the owner of the seventh level will have to sweat. Gu thought that the points depend on the time of passing, which means you will need to go ahead. At this time, the sect lord sitting on the throne asked Sister Zia if it was true that she had lost the argument. According to him, one brat from the outer sect was able to deal with Zia with his bare hands and this interested the gentleman. The girl immediately understood why the master wanted to attend this exam. The gentleman asked the girl if she had reached the stage of the condensed truth sphere. Sister Zia replied that she had achieved it. The master said that Bei Lin Jiang from the Beixu sect, Jai Xuan from the Hanyu sect reached this level faster than a girl. The master asked Sister Zia about her chances of winning the tournament of the four great sects. The girl convinced the master that there was nothing to worry about, because she would make every effort. The master said that Sister Zia was rumored to practice secret techniques and asked if she was doing this in order to reach the late stage of Kai accumulation. The girl did not answer the master while he said that Bei Mingxu is the best disciple of the Beixu sect, however, by the standards of the great Yuan country, he is at the very end and let it be a simple tournament among sects, it's worth showing your best side no matter what, because that's how you can win. Even Gu Sheyong, who is at the sixth level of Kai imprisonment, was able to defeat the girl. Sister Zia bowed and said that she understood the master and thanked him for his advice. The master said that even though Sister Zia is the strongest in King Yun, but faced with the demands of this world, the girl's cultivation will not pass the test. The gentleman suggested that the girl watch the exam. Maybe the appearance of Gu Sheyong would benefit her. At this time, Tang Ming came out of the testing room. The students noted that even two sticks of incense did not have time to burn during the time Tang Ming passed the test. He passed it so quickly. The students were confident that Tang Ming would take the first place. Gu Sheyong was announced next. Gu decided that since he wanted to get inside, he shouldn't hide his strength. Entering the room, the guy saw a lot of wooden devices imitating people. What was She Yang's surprise when he realized that these wooden fighters are filled with strength, which makes them stronger. The guy noted that this move is brilliant. Seeing a lot of attributes, the guy was delighted and thought that these devices were simply created to increase his strength. She Yang decided that in this case he should not hold back and started collecting bubbles with life force. After absorbing the life force, the wooden opponent's bodies became less sturdy and now it was even easier to defeat them. But in this case, the guy was interested to find out how long it would take him to pass this round. To the surprise of all the students, Gu Sheyong left the room while half of the wand had not even had time to burn. The students could not understand how the guy managed to pass the test so quickly and decided that he could cheat. An observer who had looked around the room ran out and told Sister Zia that all the wooden warriors had been destroyed. The master was surprised and asked how this was possible. The guy said that each of the warriors was blown to pieces and it was impossible to continue the exam. The master said that this was impossible because each of the warriors was at the sixth level of Kai imprisonment and their total energy is even greater. You can pass them only with the help of a strategy because no one will think of going ahead. The master called Sister Zia to follow him so that they could see what had happened. Having entered the testing room and examined all the wooden warriors, the master came to the conclusion that the sword technique had definitely tried here, and apparently She Yong simply attacked everyone who was in front of him, even without dodging them in any way. The master asked the watchman about who did it. The guy replied that it was the work of Gu She Yong. 
Du Sheyong awkwardly greeted Master and Sister Zia. Enraged, Zia ordered the guy to urgently tell him what kind of devilish technique he used that destroyed all the wooden guards. Sheyong said that it looks like the problem lies in the quality of the wooden apparatuses, since Gu only slightly hit the figures, and they collapsed. Zia shouted that it was impossible, as the elder himself was increasing their strength. She asked Gu about how he could have dealt with them so easily while being at the sixth level of Kai imprisonment. The master said that Gu is not at the sixth level of Kai comprehension. He is already at the ninth. The students were shocked when they heard this. The sister could not believe the words of the master, because she herself checked She Yang only a month ago. It is impossible to jump from the sixth level to the ninth in one month. Teacher Zia, called a genius who is born once in a hundred years, took two years to get from the sixth level to the ninth. A month ago it was a dream, but now, Du Sheyong said that he went to the Tibetan scriptures pavilion and learned the lone assassin sword technique, then went to the Kilian Mountains and by a lucky chance came across two ninth level spellcasters. Sister Zia thought that a month ago Gu had already used the sword technique, reached the ninth level of Kai comprehension and mastered the lone assassin sword technique, and if he hit harder, then someone like Sheyong could destroy all the pieces of wood. Only Sister Zia was bothered by the fact that Gu was able to achieve this in just a month, and was able to change so much. The master just laughed and said that it was pretty good that the guy had risen three levels in a month. And even if Shei Yang thought it was an accident, but luck also depends on innate potential. The King Yuan sect seemed to have received a blessing from heaven and another genius appeared in it. The elder patted Shei Yang on the shoulder and instructed him to continue in the same spirit in the next round. Gu thanked Elder Lin for his praise and promised to try his best. The master ordered his subordinate to tell everyone to go to the second site for the next stage of the exam. At this time, Tang Ming was glaring angrily at Gu Sheyong from the crowd. He noticed that what was happening did not match the data he received, because Gu had already reached the ninth level of Kai comprehension. But with the secret pill that Mr. Hua gave him, he could easily defeat the guy. As soon as Gu dies, Tang Ming will enter the inner sect and receive the support of Hua Shuron. The next day, it was announced that those who passed the first round would compete in eight arenas for the right to get into the top ten for several days. The second stage was a one-on-one -on -one fight. The guy She Yong was supposed to fight asked Gu to be gentle. Sister Zia, who was watching this, thought that after the results of the first round, everyone looked at Gu She Yong with new eyes. I wonder if She Yong will be able to take first place in single combats as well. She Yong shouted to his opponent to be careful and go on the attack. With great speed, Gu walked around the guy and he admitted that he had lost. The person in charge of announcing the results announced that Gu Sheyong had won. The same fate awaited Sheyong in the next six rounds. The disciples began chanting Gu Sheyong's name, and the master praised the young man and said that he had no equal in the outer sect. The master decided that Sheyong would need to assign a good teacher when he got into the inner sect. Finally, the last fight was announced, which will determine the winner. Gu Sheyong vs. Tang Ming a crowd of students chanted Gu Sheyong's name in support of him. Tang Ming said he didn't expect Gu Sheyong to make it to the finals. In response to this, Sheyong condescendingly folded his hands and said that he was just lucky and brother Tang would certainly win, because he was the last one who would be so easy to defeat. Tan shouted that he could not just give up the winner's place and went on the attack. Sheyong looked at Tang with a grin and asked him to teach him a lesson. The master who was watching the fight was surprised when he realized that Shei Yang had already mastered the intention of the sword. The students also noticed it and remembered that Zia used it in a fight with Sister Zia. Tan shouted that he had never seen this technique before. Gu's opponent also noticed that his speed had increased significantly, just a little more and he would overtake Tang. Shei Yang ran past Ming, and a trail of fire left behind him on the ground. After that, at the place of the trace, the earth broke in half and a crevice formed. All the students watching the duel were shocked. Tang Ming wondered how there could be such a big difference in strength between them, because Hua Shuron said that Xiaoyan was at the sixth level of Kai imprisonment. While Tang Ming was thinking about this, She Yang ran past him and delivered a strong blow to the opponent's face. Tang Ming flew a few meters away and realized that it looked like he would have to use the thing that Hua Shuron had given him. He pulled out a small ball, a secret pill that increases strength a hundredfold at the decisive moment of the fight. Shuron promised that with this thing, Tang would easily kill She Yong. Huel was angry and intended to show Gu what happens when someone crosses his path. Shuron also warned Tang that if he tried to cheat, he would arrange for him a fun life in the inner sect. Tan thought about what he should do and swallowed the pill in one gulp. Suddenly, he was bursting with energy and light coming from inside. His body began to be filled with the strongest energy. The master noticed that Tang Ming had taken that pill. 
The girl asked the master what kind of pill he was talking about. The gentleman said that he was talking about the pill that Sister Zia had previously called too dangerous. The master told me that he spent half his life making immortality pills, so he knows what he's talking about. Therefore, recently, the gentleman has become less and less likely to accept them. Each elixir or pill has not only healing properties, but also side effects. Usually cultivators use a small amount of warming pills that help in everyday life in order to absorb Kai energy from the world faster. In this case, the harm to the body is not great. Secret pills also only increase the rate of energy absorption, but you realize that they also do more harm. But if there are pills that release the full potential of the human body and can raise the cultivation stage in a second, help break through to the next level and release all the Kai of the cultivator's body in the most painful way. While the master was telling this, Tang Ming was screaming from the pain caused by the effect of the pill. Sister Zia asked the gentleman if she should intervene. The master replied that Tang Ming's body had darkened, which means that the strength of the pill is too high and it has accumulated in his meridians. The damage had already been done and all of his cultivation had gone to waste. The master told Sister Zia to watch Tang Ming carefully, because if in the future the girl meets an enemy that she cannot defeat and wants to use this way, she will face the same end. Sister Zia watched in horror. Gu Sheyang told Tang Ming that with his strength, Brother Tang would be guaranteed a place in the inner sect. He asked Min about whether taking the pill was worth it to be the first. In response to this, the monster that Tang Ming turned into shouted about how Hua Shiran dared to harm him. Gu Sheyang asked about Tang Ming about whether Hua Shiran had given him this pill, to which he replied that he thought that if he helped Shiran, he would help him enter the inner sect. Before Tang Ming could finish speaking, he screamed again in terrible pain. Gu Sheyang noted that Tang Ming had changed a lot in appearance. Now Tan was completely out of his mind. He turned into a terrible monster, into a monster that indiscriminately attacked everyone in a row, and at the moment its target was Gu Sheyong. He attacked him and almost tore him with his claws. Gu Sheyong asked Brother Tang to come to his senses, but he no longer heard him. He was all red and furious. Gu Sheyong noticed that due to the fact that Tang Ming's Kai burst out, bubbles appeared around him. But the attributes were a strange color. The inscription on them read Cursed Energy. Xie Yang saw such an attribute for the first time and was not sure whether to absorb it. Gu thought that even though Tang Ming was trying to kill him, he had already suffered. Gu even felt sorry for him. The master noticed that this pill had let the cursed energy into Tang Ming's body and ordered the guards to stop him. Gu Xie Yang said that the tank was lucky because he was not going to save the guy and he was just interested in his attributes. Suddenly, Tang Ming tried to attack Gu Xie Yang again but he quickly dodged the attack by increasing his speed. Xie Yang took Tang's bubble and squeezed it in his hands. Sister Zia appeared on the battlefield and told Gu to be careful since Tang had taken the cursed pill. Nu Xie Yang turned towards Sister Zia and it became clear that he had taken over the cursed energy. Xie Yang attacked Sister Zia and she flew back a little. The master came to the rescue and asked the girl what the problem was and whether she could not cope with Xie Yang. Tang Ming turned back into an ordinary person and fell to the ground. Sister Zia assured the master that everything was fine and she was just distracted. The master asked her to be more attentive. The girl looked at the guy's expression and noticed that he was already fine. The guy ran towards Sister Zia and warned her that Tang Ming was not herself and she should be more careful. He asked the girl to examine the guy and asked about what he took. He said that Tang Ming is out. While saying this, Gu Xie Yang was hiding behind his back a hand filled with cursed energy. The girl thought that Nu Xie Yang had just pushed her away, but now he looked as usual. Sister Zia came up to the guy and said that he had won this stage, congratulating him on the first place. Xie Yang thanked Sister Zia. The girl said that she and the master would take care of Tang Ming, also mentioning that Mr. Lin is an experienced alchemist and healer. Gu Xie Yang bowed and asked Sister Mya to take care of Tang Ming. The girl noticed that the color of Gu's palms changed and the curse disappeared from his palms. Servants were carrying Tang Ming's motionless body on a stretcher from the scene of the duel. Watching this, Nu Xie Yang thought that he could not imagine that the exam for Tang Ming would end this way. And Hua Shiran is involved in all this, which is very mean of him. Apparently, Nu Xie Yang needed to worry about how to get rid of him. When Xie Yang absorbed Tang Ming's cursed energy, it left his body, but it also affected Gu's body. Fortunately, the guy was able to suppress her. Apparently, Xie Yang should have learned more about his ability to absorb attributes. Gu Xie Yang came to the elder's courtyard. He called him an interesting fellow, because Xie Yang managed to become the best disciple of the outer sect in just a month. The master gave Xie Yang the opportunity to choose any technique he liked in the Tibetan scriptures pavilion. 
Xiaoyan thanked Elder Lin with all his heart and joy. Considering that Gu Sheyang had already mastered the sword intent technique, the Lord decided to recommend Sheyang as a disciple to Elder Lei. He is the most skilled swordsman in the sect, so the master recommended Gu to study with him. Gu said that he has always been interested in creating pills and elixirs and would like to study alchemy. Master Lin was surprised to ask Shei Yang if he really wanted to study alchemy. Shei Yang thought that at the moment he is able to learn by simply absorbing attributes, so it makes no sense for him to learn martial arts. However, studying alchemy can help him better understand the nature of attributes. Gu said out loud that he wanted to study with Elder Lin. Shei Yang thought that the higher the level of cultivation a person has, the fewer attributes with Kai energy he produces, which means pills and stones are the only source of attributes for new Shei Yang in the future. Sister Zia in a rage shouted that Gu did not pretend to be a fool, because he had already mastered the intention of the sword and was going to go into alchemy with such data. Shei Yang only calmly replied that he had always believed that he had the ability to alchemy. He had just come across bad teachers before. But this time the guy did not want to miss such an opportunity. Sister Zia again indignantly shouted that Shei Yang was talking nonsense, because the teachers of the outer sect had not even seen a single pill in their eyes, and Shei Yang says that he has talent. Gu replied that according to this logic, Sister Zia should tell him why she, who also mastered the sword technique, is listed as a student of Master Lin. Sister Zia began to talk about how alchemy is probably a cover for Shei Yang. But before the sister could finish, Gu said that Sister Zia was wrong and Shei Yang did not want to join the alchemists for her sake. The master laughed and told the girl to stop the altercation. Since Gu Shei Yang wants to study alchemy, Lin will agree to become his teacher. But the gentleman said that the fact that both geniuses of the King Yun sect are under the command of Master Ling, someone might not like it. The elder said that Shei Yang could learn from Sister Zia and she would help him with cultivation. Shei Yang liked this news, unlike Kinku, who was put into a stupor by such a decision of the master. The master told Shei Yang to go to the inner office and check in. There are also people there who will give Gu a new home. When Shei Yang was settled, he had to come to Master Lin to start teaching him alchemy. Gu bowed and left to carry out the master's order. However, the girl stopped Gu, saying that she had a conversation with him. The girl asked Shei Yang if he was really going to study alchemy, to which Gu replied positively. He said that he feels that he has no problem breaking through to the next level, and it's just about cultivation. Shei Yang also mentioned that making pills and elixirs is more important for him now. Sister Zia reminded him that she and Gu had made a bet the last time they met, and now she must fulfill any of his wishes. The girl admitted that she had been waiting for his return all this time and even sent a person to an external sect to find Shei Yang. The girl also added that the choice of a teacher should be taken seriously, and if Gu wants to study alchemy because of what happened between them, then it's better not to. Shei Yang was a little embarrassed and told Sister Zia that he did not understand what she really wanted to study alchemy, because she thought he was not bad at it. Regarding the bet, the guy wanted to ask Sister Zia to recommend him a suitable sword technique, because at that time the guy didn't really understand what the intention of the sword was. The girl was surprised by such a request and remembered that the one who gets the first place also gets a high-level technique. The girl said that she was well acquainted with the Tibetan scriptures pavilion and would be happy to help Shei Yang choose a good technique. Gu said he was immensely grateful to Sister Zia. He said that he would go to the office first, and then they could go to the pavilion together. The girl agreed. In the office, a man looked curiously at the person who took first place in the exam. Shei Yang said that he had just become an inner disciple and wanted to undergo the necessary procedure. An employee of the office gave Gu Shei Yang a pass and ordered him not to lose it in any case. Shei Yang thanked the employee for taking such care of him. The man said that it was not difficult for him and asked Shei Yang to follow him to show him the place where he would now live. The worker led Shei Yang to some kind of rickety structure without walls. Hei was lying around and there was a well nearby. Shei Yang was surprised that the dwelling of an outer sect disciple is better than the dwelling of an inner sect disciple. To this, the clerk replied that since Shei Yang is new, he does not yet know that such housing is a way to encourage students to cultivate because cultivators do not pursue human benefits. In response to this, Shei Yang said that the man was lying well, but the place he brought Gu to was more like a warehouse where livestock feed was stored, and not the dwelling of an inner sect disciple, for which the man was trying to pass this place off. In that case, who then lives in all the beautiful tall houses standing nearby? The clerk replied that in the inner sect there is a rule under which the strongest get the right to choose their own home. So the man recommended Shei Yang to be a good boy and stay where he brought him hinting that such accommodation is a consequence of the fact that Shei Yang crossed the road to the wrong people. 
who asked the man if it was the work of Hua Shuron, to which the employee replied that since She Yang guessed without him, there was no point in explaining. The man also added that Brother Hua is the 28th strongest in the inner sect and Gu She Yang is not his equal. In response to this, She Yang replied that he still could not understand something. She Yang quieted down, and the clerk asked Gu what he meant. Suddenly, She Yang became enraged and numerous tentacles with black energy began to emanate from his body. Gu said that he did not understand how some 28th in strength dared to behave as if the entire sect belonged to him. The man was afraid of such a force from She Yang. Gu said that he had made the decision that he would live in Hua Shiran's chambers. At this time, Hua, who was in his chambers, was laughing at Gu She Yang, imagining his face when he found out which chambers he would live in. His servant stood by and said that her master was very smart and his methods were very resourceful. Hua said that Gu was just lucky last time, calling him a brat. But now that She Yang had entered the inner sect, Shiran was going to show the guy his real strength. Suddenly, someone shouted under the windows, calling Hua Shiran to the street. It was Gu She Yang. He said that Hua's chambers would become his and was not going to back down. The clerk began to persuade She Yang to stop and even promised to provide him with other housing. But he was adamant. It was obvious that the worker was scared and did not want a fight to start between the cultivators. Angry, Hua went outside to She Yang. Gu said he was challenging Shiran to a duel for his house. Hua only laughed, saying that She Yang values his strength too highly and he will not be able to defeat Shiran. Gu thinks in vain that if he was able to take first place in the exam, then now he is equal to all the inner sect disciples. Hua said that inner disciples have been training for years to perfect their cultivation. She Yang urged Hua to stop talking. Gu shared that he had heard that Hua Shuran's courtyard was filled with Kai energy and for this reason he wanted to take over his house. Hua was furious. He did not understand how She Yang decided to fight with him, because Gu was only at the stage of comprehending Kai, while Shuran was already at the level of condensed truth. In response to this, She Yang took out his sword and said that in a verbal altercation, Hua Shuran had not gone far from Gu and invited him to fight. In response, Hua agreed, took out his sword and said that he would show Gu She Yang how to spell the word Dai. Gu reminded Hua that last time it was enough for him to use just one move of the sword to defeat him and he hopes that this time everything will be different. The clerk heard these words and could not believe his ears. Was someone able to defeat Hua Shiran with a single movement of the sword? Hua was angered by the reminder of this aspect of their last fight and vowed to destroy She Yang. Hua also added that he had been training the intoxicating spring breeze technique for several years and he would show She Yang what a real sword technique is. After these words, Hua attacked She Yang with a blow of 10 Lai peach blossoms. She Yang was very surprised by what he saw. The guy called it a show off and said he would show Hua his sword intent. The worker watching the fight noted that the intention of the sword of Gu corresponds to the level of the teacher. In the end, Hua lost to She Yong and now had to give him his house. Gu mentioned that in order to kill him, Hua even gave Tang Ming a cursed pill, and now he will no longer be able to cultivate. The employee called She Yong the new genius of the inner sect, because he was able to defeat Hua Shiran with one attack. Shiran said that no one would notice the death of an outer sect disciple like Gu if he finished him off. She Yang said that Hua underestimates Gu, Zia Kink Yu is the first beauty in the sect, but She Yang is not going to stay in it and in general on the Tianyuan continent. She Yang told Hua to get out of his house because Gu was not going to kill him in the sect. But if Shiran catches the eye of She Yang outside the sect, he is finished. The employee thanked She Yang and called him a real hero. She Yang said he could forget about what happened earlier. He asked the clerk to help him re-equip the house and take out all the things of Hua Shiran, and he agreed. After that, Gu left, saying that he still had things to do, and the sect worker thought that the rating of the inner sect would change soon. When he came to the house, the man asked if the young man had already settled in or not. Speaking about the fact that he had already decided about housing and very much wanted to start learning alchemy, the student said and therefore immediately ran to his sensei. To which the man replied that with the abilities of a young man, there was no point in studying alchemy. At that moment, our hero did not understand at all what was happening and why they answered that way. Looking at the stone that was next to them, they saw that it began to glow, and the fragments of Master Sensei's stone slab. The master felt the remnants of the sword's power in them, so he decided to keep it, and Sensei explained. In the next moment, our hero thought that before that he had absorbed the intentions of Sister Zia's sword. But this is completely different from sister's energy, the young man thought, stretching out his hand to this stone. The next moment he felt the power and then Sensei asked what was the matter, turning to She Yong and asking if something was wrong. 
The next moment Shae Yong stood touching the stone and did not answer his sensei. Then he asked Shae Yong what had happened, and at that moment it was clear that the young man was just meditating. Our hero plunged so deep into himself that he didn't hear sensei's question or anything around him. He was in his meditation, watching the sword that was rushing straight towards him, thinking what a strong sword intent the youth had. The next moment, jumping away from his attack, the young man carefully watched what the sword would do next. The next moment, he managed to grab it by the hilt, asking the sword if he really wanted to escape from it. The next moment, he was trying to deal with this sword, and using his strength, he was able to overcome it. Therefore, such power was imprisoned in this stone. The young man thought it was a powerful energy that he felt through this sword. Looking at the sword that obeyed him, the young man realized that he now had as many as two sword intentions. The master at this moment, trying to shout to our hero, saw that the young man was able to answer him and our hero was asking what happened. Then the master, pointing with a shaking hand to the side, told our hero to pay attention there, and turning around, the young man saw that the wall was broken, thinking that he really did it. Sensei, looking at the young man, thought that he was really a genius. He studied this stone for three years, but could not isolate anything from it, and this kid entered meditation from one time and immediately mastered the sword intentions in it. Looking at our hero, Sensei reflected. The next moment, the man offered the young man to look at this stone again and saying that maybe he would feel that if he looked at this stone again. To which our hero explained that he would not feel anything else, the attribute in this stone was already absorbed by him, and a lot of time should pass before the next time. Therefore, Sensei explained that he recommended going to the art of the sword. If such a talent as a young man learns alchemy from him, then he will become the main villain in this sect, he explained, pointing to the shelf next to him and exhaling heavily. The young man also reported that learning alchemy was the dream of his whole life, despite the master. Then when he heard our hero, he did not understand at all if the guy still wanted to study, saying that he would no longer dissuade him. Sensei explained that it was difficult to ascend to heaven only by studying alchemy. Alchemy is 90% talent and 10% technique. Then our hero, worshipping his master, listened attentively to him further. The man explained that you can get a pill, but creating one is another conversation. The only one who managed to reach five levels in alchemy is Master Y. It was the cauldron of Sensei, the origins of creation. It belongs to the fourth level, one level below the vessel with four elephants from the Imperial Palace. Sensei's cauldron is able to increase the performance of pills by 10%. These are the works of his master, he said. There are recipes from lower alchemy, the man explained, handing his student a notebook. Turning to Shei Yong, he explained to the young man that he should try to create a pill with the help of this book, and he wanted to test the young man's abilities in this way. Hearing this, our hero was very surprised. Then the master said that he had already talked to Sergeant Lei and if the young man has no talents in alchemy, then he can just learn the art of the sword from him, the master explained. Our hero agreed with him, because if he passes the test, then the master will no longer be trying to push the student to someone else. Picking up the book that was handed to him, the master smilingly said that, of course, he would not do this if the young man could really pass this test. On the table in front of the hero were the ingredients for making the main pill. It was necessary to start creating it according to the recipe. If the young man had any questions, he could apply. Looking at the table, our hero saw several ingredients that were lying on the table in front of him and got to work. The master carefully looked at the young man saying that alchemy values calmness and silence. If the young man hurries, then he will not succeed. If he understands how much fire is needed for a particular pill, then he will be able to succeed in alchemy. The master explained that the best way to understand is to train a lot in creating pills. Looking at what the young man was doing, the master explained that the young man had a good predisposition to cultivation. But just the same self-confidence that appears too quickly is not at all suitable for alchemy. For alchemy consists of a huge number of failures, attempts and failures, the master said, while our hero was looking at the book at that moment, trying to create his pill. At the same time, the master explained that alchemy would make even a guinea understand what defeat was. At this moment, the young man, slamming the book, began to prepare his pill, waiting for him to succeed or not. Turning to the master, Shei Yong asked if he could take a look at what the main pill looks like. Before that, he had studied little in chemistry, the young man explained, and then showing the pills that lay in front of him on a roll of paper, the master offered our hero to take a close look at them. Having picked up one pill and looked at it carefully, our hero now understood how they looked and thought that now, when he saw her, he knew what he had to do. To create a pill, you need to control the changes in the ingredients in the cauldron. In other words, it is necessary to control the fusion of power inside the pill, 
and at the end to purify it from impurities. The dosage of the ingredients and their quality and most importantly the level of fire that the young man had to maintain. All this is comprehended after numerous attempts. After that, he can find the best way to create a pill, but if you smell the ingredients, then everything becomes different. Looking at this cauldron, our hero thought. There are no bubbles of attributes behind the lid, but a smell comes from the boiler. It takes a little bit of luck to feel how the Kai energy changes. The next moment, adding even more fire, our hero carefully looked at the cauldron that was in front of him and the master, watching what the young man was doing, thought that our hero was doing well, but he was wondering what the result would be. Since the young man saw the attributes of the ingredients, he was familiar with their smell. The fragrance that came from that cauldron, he thought. Figuring out what kind of attribute it is by the smell, and by the strength of the smell to understand how much he should have let in. As shopkeepers at the bazaar, weighing goods every day, they can determine the weight by holding something in their hand. Standing with his eyes closed in front of the cauldron and clenching his fists, the young man thought that he only needed to raise the smell of the ingredients and adjust the fire level. Since he just checked the attribute of the main pill, then everything becomes even easier. The next moment, looking at his master, our hero reported that the pills were ready. Looking into the cauldron, the master saw 10 pills of 80% quality, and was madly surprised by this. Our hero heard that it was all 80% thought that it was unlikely that this color completely coincides with the samples. Turning to the master, who was clearly shocked that our hero managed to do it one time. The young man said that the samples he showed him were also 80% quality. The master just kept silent, and then, without turning to our hero, explained that such periods were very rarely made, usually students practice on them. The master asked if the young man really meant that the quality of his pills was such, because the samples were of such quality. Our hero listened to his master and explained that he had almost never encountered pills before, so he did what his master showed him. If there was a little practice, then the result would be better, clutching his head, the young man said. The master, looking at the guy, thought that during his first lesson, he managed to create pills of 30% quality only on the eighth attempt. But even then, the master said that he had an extraordinary talent. Really, the young man in front of him was a monster. He thought, looking at the guy who was clearly annoyed that his pills were 80% quality, which were made from one time. He could not understand how a person who had never practiced alchemy from the first time could create pills of such high quality. At that moment, our hero was thinking that it looks like some things were not completely processed, and reduced the quality. He was a little sorry, if he could lift the lid and see the attribute, he would create perfect pills. Looking carefully at the pills, the young man sighed and thought that next time he needed to be attentive to the smell. If he wanted to become a first-class alchemist, then he needed it. Otherwise, the pills won't be as effective. The master, looking at our hero, thought about why he sighs as if he failed and thought that he should have given him another try. Telling the young man that he could try again, our hero was delighted and thought that this time everything was better and he could do it. He was sure of it. As soon as our hero got ready to make pills, someone shouted and called Sensei by name, saying that Lint Hessen should come out. The master, addressing our hero, explained that this elder Lei had come again for the young man. Lin had to come out to him. Hearing that the master's name was Lin Hessong, the young man understood that now he would know his name, because before that he had addressed him simply as a master. Our hero understood that now he needed a large number of attributes to break through to the next level. Alchemy takes a lot of effort. If he still learns the sword, then he will not have time for anything at all. Our hero was thinking that it was necessary to come up with a way to get rid of this Master Lei. Going outside, Lin saw Master Lei flying across the sky on a sword and asked him what he was making a noise in broad daylight, and what he was doing here at all. Then the latter, addressing Lin, said that at first he begged to take Gu Shei Yang under his wing and teach him the art of the sword and then took him for himself. Addressing Elder Lei, Elder Lin explained that he would slow down. At first he really wanted Gu Shei Yang to study the art of the sword, but first he chose chemistry himself and secondly his ability in alchemy is no worse than in the art of the sword. But Lei, going down closer to Lin, said that it was clear to everyone that after the exam among the external students, the master simply did not want to give it to anyone. He shouted at him. Then, turning away from his partner, he talked about letting him know that Gu Shei Yang created the basic pill on the first attempt and in the future he has a chance to become a level 9 alchemist. Upon hearing this, the man said that it was impossible, but the next moment, gathering his courage, he said that it didn't matter to him, because the young man would learn from him. Realizing that Lei did not want to give in to his student, Lin said that why would he not ask himself what our hero wants to learn? 
So they started arguing and Lei talked about what he wanted to ask the young man to make sure of it. Going into the house, Lin shouted our hero and called him, and his partner said that he did not even think about stealing a student from him, addressing the old man. The next moment, looking in front of them, they did not understand where the young man was, did they hide him somewhere and asked her. At that moment they saw a letter on the table and taking it Lin decided to read what he had written to him. Our hero informed the master that the main pill was ready. He learned even more about alchemy. He needed to practice the intentions of the sword he received from him. He had to tell the elder that he had chosen a different path to become immortal. He doesn't have time to learn the art of the sword and he apologized by signing the letter as a bad student of Gu Shei Yong. Then, after looking at the pills that were in front of them, Lin reported that the young man really made pills of 100% quality. Lei said that the young man was so talented, why didn't he want to learn the art of the sword? Upset, Lei exhaled and said that he so wanted to send the young man to the tournament of the four great sects. Our hero, at this time, looking at the book, thought that there was still no time to go and choose the technique that he won on the exam. Sister Zia had chosen this inferior technique, which would just help him make up for his lack of cultivation, he thought. Having mastered this technique, he will be able to give attributes and convert them into internal energy with the help of cultivation, so he will be able to increase his level. While our hero was moving towards his goal, he thought that he was unclear about one thing, where Sister Zia had gone, because she had left him only a book. There are so many worries in the inner sect. It was necessary to go to the mountains once again and absorb more attributes in order to break through to the next level. Kill in mountains. Looking at the butterfly that he cut with one movement, the young man understood that the intention of the stone sword and what he received from Sister Zia were fundamentally different. It's unbelievable how this sword intent can reach such a level, the young man thought, looking at the butterfly that was in his hand. This intention helped him break through to new levels and reach the stage of collecting Kai, enter the path of immortals. He wanted to call this intent, the initial intent of the sword. After all, when he came to the Killian Mountains, he was already at the sixth level of Kai comprehension. If he was going to achieve Kai gathering, then he had to go deeper. At this moment, two sisters were also moving deeper into the forest and one turned to Zhao, asking if she was sure she was not mistaken. There was no road ahead. The girl who was walking behind her told her sister that it was strange and last time she found the remains in a cave nearby. But reasoning, the girl raised that a monster was chasing her then, so she did not remember the exact place. She went here with her sister to find the right way. There was definitely something valuable there, the girl said. And the sister offered to look around again. If they didn't find it anyway, then it didn't matter. After all, this time they represent the personal valley of cold at this tournament of four great sects. It would be bad if something happened to them. At that moment, they noticed a cave nearby. Approaching the cave and, the sister reported that it was here, last time she found something here. But she was afraid that there was a monster inside and did not dare to go in. But there were no sounds from there and it is unlikely that there are monsters there. Then the sister said that it would not hurt to be on the alert just in case, although she would go into this cave and hold her blade. Then she saw a stranger and asked who was here and asked to show herself. Our hero, who was sitting and looking at the remains, he was surprised that he had come there yet. At this moment, the girl shouted that the guy's hands should not be removed from this thing, because it belonged to their predecessors from the Valley of the Cold Moon. They came to pick it up, one of the girls reported. Having heard what one of the sisters was saying, the other asked about which predecessors they were talking about and the girl asked to be silent to pick it up for her. Our hero, looking at the girls, thought that they were the disciples of the Cold Moon Valley, the middle stage of Kai Collection, one late stage of Kai Collection and thought that he was not afraid of assessing their strength. After hearing about the thing of his predecessors, the young man thought that most likely someone could not defeat the monster in this cave and now he has returned with reinforcements. Our hero explained that he had discovered this mountain cave, on what basis this thing should have belonged to their predecessors. Our hero explained, putting the thing on his finger. Then she of the sisters said that on the basis of the sword that stood behind our hero, saying that it was theirs and whether the young man had any objections about it. Seeing the sword that was in the floor, our hero split it, telling them that he didn't see any ball here. The girls understood that the guy was also not so simple and whether he would be shocked by this and they had nothing to say. Then one of them, addressing, said that the young man was only at the initial stage of collecting Kai. They could deal with him and not waste their nerves on him. Looking at the girls, our hero understood that these girls looked like they were one time outside the sect. Then he decided to play with them and asked if they really would only deal with him too. Attacking our hero, the girls asked how the young man dared to look down on them. 
When the girls rushed, one of the sisters tried to stop them, saying that it was necessary to talk better. But the girl said that the sister did not even worry, they would only teach the young man a little how to behave properly. At this moment, our hero, taking the sword from one of the girls, said that he wanted to borrow it for a while, and she absolutely did not expect that the young man would be able to snatch her weapon so easily. The next moment our hero started fighting with another sister who had a sword and the girl he took away. She was unhappy that the young man was fighting with her own sword with her sister. The next moment, attacking the girls, he threw away her sword and then she realized that she was in trouble. Our hero thanked one of the sisters for lending him a sword and returned it back. Seeing how quickly the young man was able to return the sword, the sister watching them was surprised at how fast the guy had. Then suddenly someone asked who dared to steal Jai Xuan from her sister. Then turning around, the girls did not understand where the guys were from here. One of them said that Jai Xuan's sister forced him to travel such a long way. A young man named Jiuo Chang Feng spoke with his friends when entering the cave. Dissatisfied with the fact that she was followed, the sister asked the young man if he really did it, and the girl did not like it when she was followed. Hearing her question, the guy began to deny it, saying that she had said some nonsense and that Sister Jai had charmed him when he was in the Valley of the Cold Moon. Since then, he thought only about her, so when she went to the mountains, he was afraid that nothing would happen to her. He followed her, because they are future husband and wife. Looking at the guys who came, our hero thought that it looks like the students of the Cold Moon Valley had some kind of conflict with these guys. The sister talked about who he called the future husband and wife and that the young man could only dream further, because she would never accept an offer from Heavenly Wind Valley. Hearing this, the young man said that if this was the case, then becoming lovers for today was enough for him. The next moment, he ordered his partners to tie up the girls, to which they were completely surprised by his order. At this moment, our hero decided to join this game, saying that everyone should stop. Both the sisters and the newly arrived guys were surprised by who was able to stop them. Then our hero asked what the guys were up to, saying that if they didn't know, then they had to get in line first. The young man was talking about what our hero needed. Then he explained that he needed the same thing as them. Shei Young advised to fuck off, he had no time to deal with them. At this moment, the guys, hearing our hero, began to laugh loudly, saying that the young man made them laugh very much. Turning to Shei Yong, he asked if there was too much pathos for a weakling of a lower rank and how he dared to say such a thing to him. Master Zhuo. The girls also thought that the boy must have gone crazy. Even if he was faster than them, the difference in strength was obvious. He could not stand in this fight, they thought, looking at him standing behind. But the only thing is that the guy had no confidence. After looking at our hero, the girl thought that so far there have been fights going in one round and, as they say, wars are learned in battles and she thought that our hero was not bad. He lacked special skills, but she decided that it was possible to see how the young man would show himself. Seeing that he looked at her, the girl was shy. Zhuo reported that they also had no time and told the guy to get out of here and then he would spare him. The next moment, the girls supported our hero, saying that the brother should go forward, and the other sisters standing behind completely did not understand why the girls supported them. Jai asked Zhao about the fact that her sister was really familiar with this guy. The girl reported that she had no idea who he was, but the enemy of her enemy was her friend. It was a fact. Then Zhuo said that if he was in love with this girl, he could stay. Our hero explained that the young man was talking nonsense. He was ready to fight. The next moment, commanding the attack forward, Zhuo was talking about his partners grabbing the boy and dealing with the girl standing in front of him. Our hero, seeing that he was attacked, said that he did not know any of these girls. At that moment, the girls decided to sort things out tighter and sharpen their swords, because they knew that Zhuo Feng had decided to deal with them. Then running up to the girl, Zhuo reported that she would not hurry, turning to sister Jai Xuan, saying that it was necessary to enjoy this game. The girl reported that she thought that the marriage application came from a noble family, but did not think that the disciples of Heavenly Winds Valley were responsible for it. It's a good thing she didn't rush to give her consent, to which the young man informed Jai Xuan's sister that her tricks would not help her. After all, he had already taken a step and her words would not make him back down. The girl, looking into the eyes of her opponent, said that since this was the case, then it was possible to forget about the pleasantries. After all, she is from the cold moon, which is in the top four of the faction, not because she takes the amount. At that moment, she used her ice power and the floor began to freeze. At that moment, she realized that something was wrong. Jewel, looking at her, asked what happened to her. In connection with this situation, 
would it make sense to use the ice river in 10 directions? At that moment, the girl was trying to figure out what was happening to her. She was an unbearable pain in the Danchen area, although she hardly used any energy. At that moment, her magic began to recede from Jewel coming closer to her, taking her chin. The girl understood that she could not resist her opponent. The next moment, saying that this girl, she reported that the young man could only dream about it further. After all, she would rather die than submit to him, calling him a scoundrel. But the guy said that it wasn't up to her to decide, because he asked her to watch how her sisters disgraced themselves in this fight. The next moment I saw only our hero sitting on top of his comrades. The young man carefully watched his opponent, saying that he could continue, he was so carried away. The young man did not want to interrupt him, She Yang Zhuo reported. At that moment, all of Zhuo's teammates were smitten and unable to fight anymore, and our hero was sitting on top of them. Toga Zhuo could not believe that the guys were defeated. The young man said that a couple of swear words flew out of his mouth, and he was in a hurry so he couldn't resist. And at that moment, the girls thought that Sister Jai and they were fine, thanks to this guy. He took down all the guys with one punch. Hearing this, Juo did not expect this, and the girl took advantage of the moment and ran away from him. Our hero asked why the guy was still busy with girls. Did he really forget about him? Then the young man, turning around our hero, tried to understand who he was. Getting up from his seat, our hero asked to be allowed to explain himself, since they all belonged to the four main clans here. His name was Gu Shei Yong and he was a disciple of the Green Cloud faction. Speaking about the fact that he was from the Heavenly Wind, and addressing the young man, he said that he would testify and everyone would find out what they really were. When he took off their disguise, hearing that the young man wanted to expose him, the guy began to rage. In the next moment, I decided to use my energy. Seeing this, our hero talked about what was interesting in the beginning. The young man noticed these strange bubbles. The next moment the young man began to attack our hero with his unusual attack. Attacking the young man, our hero began to dodge these bubbles, but then suddenly there was an explosion. Everyone was trying to figure out what had happened. Juo addressed our hero as a brat, saying that for the fact that he dared to interfere now he will have a dance. Our hero understands that he was trapped and was trying to figure out where else everything was going. And it looks like he used a barrier because of which the young man could not see anything at all. At that moment, when the fog cleared a little, the enemy was already behind our hero and he failed to react. But the next moment he was able to cross his sword with his opponents. But then his opponent disappeared, circling around him. He asked the young man what happened and did the guy lose him. Our hero explained that he didn't even need to look for him. Judging by the energy consumption and it looks like he had to make more effort, the one said. To which Zhuo said that the young man was very unlucky. No one has ever managed to escape the blow of his ghost knife. Our hero informed him that then he would be the first. The next moment he was talking about the fact that his opponent got caught and was able to attack him. But being already behind our hero, Zhuo told the young man that he had missed and said that this mistake would cost him death. The next moment he was attacking our hero. Jai, watching this, said that Zhuo Chengfeng was a strong opponent. In the Valley of the Heavenly Wind, they do not teach such techniques. It seems that he has a couple of secret techniques in his arsenal. She thought that she should have stumbled upon them a long time ago, but the fog was so thick that she didn't even hear the trampling. Apparently the fog was a barrier. At this moment, while she was advancing through the fog, the girl was overwhelmed by thoughts about our hero, thinking about how he could be Gu Shei Yang the swordsman of the King Yun sect, but she hoped that the young man was okay. At that moment, she saw a silhouette in front of her. It was our hero who was trying to repel the attack of Zhuo, who was attacking him. Flying away to the girl, she was able to hold our hero a little and ask the young man if he was hurt by our hero. Holding tightly to his sword, he reported that he was unharmed. At this moment, Zhuo was standing not far from them, saying that the young man was the first one who managed to dodge his sword. Our hero explained that he could not kill him and his sword was not a hindrance to him. At that moment, Jai spoke up, addressing Zhuo Chengfeng that he needed her, so he could attack her and needed to check what he had learned. Hiding in the fog, Zhuo said that if she was ready, then they would both die. The next moment, our heroes stood back to back and waited for their opponent to appear from where, who disappeared into their eyes. The girl said that she did not understand what was happening, because their opponent was seemingly everywhere. And the young man explained that there was only one Zhuo Chengfeng, the others were only copies of him. I had to find and kill him. After listening to the idea of our hero, the girl asked how it was done. At this moment, they did not see yet, but Zhuo was already attacking them and our hero was attacking him, telling Jai to take care and be attentive. Then the girl understood that their opponent was trying to catch them by surprise. They could have thwarted him by staying alert. 
The young man asked how the girl was feeling. She said that she was slightly exhausted, but now she could only use two forces at the same time. Our hero explained that the girl could defend herself and he would put an end to these games. Then, standing defensively, she asked what our hero had come up with. At that moment, the young man noticed that Jewel was attacking them again. The young man explained that he thought that with the sword technique, which he had recently studied, he could repel his shadow clones. The next moment, he was able to attack one of them using his new technique that all his clones were now visible. Everything was on fire, and the girl said that now she saw his clones. The young man used the lightsaber technique. The next moment, the clones flying up to our heroes had to be attacked by them. The clones flew right up to the fire that our hero was making. The next moment, they stopped near this fire and then disappeared right into it. Our hero told Juo to calm down already. The next moment the guy was struck, his fire and he flew straight into the wall, completely unprepared for such a defeat. TSD watching the young man was surprised at what a strong technique our hero had. At this moment, Gu Sheyang was walking towards his opponent, who was sitting near a rock, absolutely wounded used his power to extract his soul, sucking it right out of the guy who was injured, was already unable to move. Calling her to him, our hero thought that this guy was finished. He couldn't show favor as he did with Hu Xuron. At that moment, the girls approached them, saying that they thanked the young man for his help. Thanks to him, the Valley of the Cold Moon escaped a terrible catastrophe. Our hero did not understand what they were talking about, because who told them what he would do for them? Then the girls grabbed their swords, asking what the young man was thinking. Then our hero asked if they hadn't forgotten that they were going to kill him and take his treasure. One of the sisters said that they did not just want to scare him and asked him not to take it personally. At that moment, when our hero was about to leave, they tried to stop him and the young man asked if they were really trying to rob him again. To which one of them said that he misunderstood, because she was just going to ask her brother what he would do next. Our hero, looking at her fake smile, tried to understand why he had to tell them. At this moment, turning to young Master Gu, and he was asked to let him explain, because they were heading to the Imperial City to take part in the Zong Ghost Tournament. Once every 10 years, the royal family of the Great Yuan Dynasty invites students from all sects to fight martial arts. All participants take the competition very seriously. This great historical event is an occasion for the royal family to demonstrate the power of their country to the whole world and at the end of the school students are all waiting for great rewards. Explaining all this, one of the girls turned to our hero, asked, because our hero was also going to participate in this competition. Hearing this, the young man said that in fact this was not in his plans. He was busy training and happened to be here. One of the sisters, smiling at the young man, said that there was nothing wrong with her if the young man did not know yet, calling him a young hero, addressing him as Brother Gu. Addressing the girls, the young man asked if they did not mind if he joined this tournament. Only now he almost didn't know them, our hero said, after thinking for a while looking at strangers. Then one of the girls asked if it was really so, because in battle, of course, they would have known each other better, but they are already more than strangers, because he saved them. Jai reported that if Brother Gu had other things to do, they did not insist, but it was possible to continue the conversation elsewhere. The disciples of the Heavenly Wind Valley could come here at any moment, then our hero reported that they could leave, watching the guy who was sitting near the wall. The girls had already started to leave, and our hero stopped, looking at this young man, then they asked why he was standing and had to hurry. The next moment, after waiting a little, our hero decided that he, too, had to go along with these girls and followed right behind them. Once in the capital of the Great Yuan Empire, the young man walked along with his new acquaintances. The sister explained that it was an imperial city, there were a little more people here than in the Qingyun sect, but the young man could believe that in the evening there would be no crowd. Jai reported that there was very little time before the competition, but she would like to see the best players of all. Jai, speaking of Brother Gu, will he meet him? Our hero looked around and said that he didn't know anything yet, but he thought Big Sister Zia wouldn't miss this event but so far he hasn't seen her. Then the sister, addressing our hero, said that they seemed to have a great time. The young man at that moment was looking carefully around to see who he was looking for, but then he saw the guys who were walking in the middle of the square, and everyone was looking at them carefully. It was Jiang Lan, the leader of the Heavenly Wind Valley, and everyone didn't understand what was going on and why everyone was so excited. At that moment, Jai Xuan greeted them. Jiang, addressing Jai, reported that they were saying that the disciples of the length of the cold moon must have already been here. 
The girl explained that she had just arrived and they had left a few days earlier than usual. From the valley to the capital is not a close way. She reported, the guys said that it was a nice apologetic thing and asked to forgive him. Addressing Ms. Jai, saying that he hoped to be seen at the competition. Addressing Big Brother Jiang, the girl explained that he was very kind. The next moment, everyone started discussing this situation. People were talking among themselves about the fact that the competitions of the best sects, which take place once every 10 years, would begin soon. But someone had heard that the disciples of Heavenly Wind Valley would not be able to participate and everyone was trying to figure out why. At this moment, everyone reported that it seems that all these students tragically died, so the Heavenly Wind team is now in search of a new team. At this moment, the sister carefully looked at our hero, who was standing with them in the crowd. Then he would ask why they were looking at him like that, because he was already in league with them. Besides, the guys were dead, so the girls had nothing to be afraid of. Sister reported that this was the case, but the Heavenly Wind Valley is one of the four main clans that undoubtedly cherish their secret treasures if they find out the circumstances. Then the girls will have problems. Our hero explained that then he went, if they drip deeper, they will come out on him. It was completely unnecessary for him. At this moment, she asked our hero to stop, because Sister Zhao did not express herself that way. She was just worried about everyone. The girl said, our hero was thinking carefully at the moment about what he should have done and how he should have acted in this situation that happened. Night fell, our hero thought that he did not expect the imperial city to find out about Zhuo Chengfeng's death so quickly, because our hero did not count on it at all, and he thought about the fact that his body was left in a cave on the mountainside. It was strange that this body was not found. So our hero sat and thought that he had found so many untouched artifacts there that Zhao Ming seems to be right. Heavenly Wind Valley clearly uses secret techniques once they stay up to date with all events. The young man thought about the fact that he killed his opponent with the intent of the sword that he extracted from the stone. They have no evidence that would point specifically to him. But if they know that Zhuo Chengfeng was chasing Jai Xuan, and that our hero followed her and her team, then he will become a suspect, because the Cold Moon Valley's fighting technique was different from his technique. Fortunately, the young man fought. He made the decision to move on his own in time and said goodbye to the girls. He hoped that they understood him correctly. At that moment, our hero was looking at the ring he was holding in his hand and thinking that the path was fruitful. This is a storage ring that he had in his hand and is rarely a jewel, and the one whose remains he stumbled upon in the cave was clearly someone famous during his lifetime. Because of all this turmoil, he never looked at what was inside and now he finally finds out what's there, our hero thought lifting the ring with his energy. The next moment, he immersed himself in the world of stones and thought that it was the first time he had seen so many of them. If he extracted the attributes of each of them, and combined them with those that he took from the monsters on the way here, he would become much stronger. The lower level of the triple yin shen technique, looking at the book, was read by our hero. But unfortunately, it was incompatible with his Xuan technique. Next to it was the book Shining Shadow Sword technique. The young man thought that this was more suitable for him than the lone assassin sword technique. She will help him get the attributes of the sword energy, our hero thought. Putting the ring back on his finger, the young man realized that now he also has a storage ring. It was a great device. At that moment, he saw that the ring might have extracted the same attribute as our hero thought. Looking at the cloud in front of him, he thought that there was not much Yuan energy, only 12 points and the energy of space was 23. Then, after looking at the space, our hero thought about how it worked. At that moment, when he looked back at the treasures that were nearby, he realized that he had teleported. Then, coming closer to the door, the young man decided to try again, and realized that it was enough more. He realized that it was teleportation, but it was impossible to get through the walls with his help. These are the strongest attributes of all that he had with him. He will be able to kill the enemy with one blow, the young man thought, looking at his ring. But the young man understood that even with all the attributes of the ring, he could not move more than a meter and it looked like he would have to find a way to get more rings and other attributes. But the young man thought that it was best to understand how to create such an amazing attribute himself. At this moment, while he was thinking, he heard that someone was asking where the owner had gone. There were guys standing on the threshold, addressing the attendant next to them that they would like to settle in and he informed that he would prepare rooms for them. Our hero saw the captain of the Valley of Heaven win Zhang Lan. Surprised, the young man thought about what this guy was doing here, looking at him from the second floor. The guy was standing at the bottom with his sect members and asked them where the disciples of the Cold Moon Valley were staying, to which they replied that they were not far from here, at the Tianbao Hotel and their people had been following them all day. 
Master Zhuo pursued Jai Xuan and other members of the Cold Moon Valley in the Killian Mountains. And this guy was with them, the young man thought. It was also necessary to introduce surveillance to him and find out who he is as soon as possible. Jiang thought about our hero. After all, Master Zhuo was the son of Senior Mr. Zhuo. It was necessary to find the culprit as soon as possible before the arrival of Senior Mr. Everyone obeyed what the young man said and our hero who heard all this, realized that it seemed they recognized him and had already begun to suspect. Therefore, our hero was wondering if the Qingyun sect was already in the city, and Sister Zia might also come to the competition, he wondered. Then the young man thought that he could not count on them, continuing to extract attributes, eventually he would have to leave the sect. If the conflict situation with the Heavenly Wind Valley worsens, it may reflect badly on Sister Zia and the entire valley. He had killed their disciple with one left hand, and with this ring, he had nothing to fear anymore. The young man extracted the attribute of space. The valley of the heavenly wind was nothing to him. Our hero thought about it. At that moment, Jai Xuan was sitting and looking somewhere into space. At that moment, Zhao, approaching sister Jai, said that she knew that she had spoken without thinking and asked how she thought how in the imperial city they would find out about Zhuo Chengfeng's death. The girl said that she just shared her suspicions. Tu Yang saved everyone and it occurred to her that maybe he could give them a ride. To which she said that it didn't matter, because Shei Yang was gone, and Jai Xuan was worried about something else. Then Zhao, turning to her sister, asked what was bothering her. The girl said that Zhuo Chengfeng was going to propose to her, which means that he is one of the high society. But then she had a bad feeling, she refused him anything about him, without finding out what the girl was saying. Zhao, hearing all this, asked what her sister was driving at, excited that she had shared such information with her. Jai Xuan said that it was Zhuo Chengfeng who threatened them and he deserved to die, and She Yong was there by accident. He did it to save them, so it was their duty to protect the young man from the consequences. The girl explained that she and Soi should have told the captain that she killed Zhuo Chengfeng after he attacked them first. After hearing this, Zhao didn't understand if the girl really wanted to do this, to which Tu said that it was impossible to allow She Yong to confess to the murder, and she wanted to find him first. The master's body was found and then Jiang Lan asked where senior master Zhuo was now, looking at the body. The servants reported that the man would arrive in the imperial city tomorrow, and then the young man asked his attendants where the guy he ordered to follow was. They replied that the young man was still in the guest house, then he asked to bring him. When they went after our hero, they flew out the window. The young man, having gone down to them, asked if they were not tired of keeping an eye on him all day long. At that moment, he saw Jiang Lan, who was asking if our hero had killed Zhuo, who was standing in front of him and was silent. So they fell into silence, but Jai Xuan came and said it was her. Our hero did not expect such a confession from the girl, then she once again confessed that she had killed him. After hearing this, the guy did not understand what the girl was talking about and said that unless she Jai Xuan had a reason to kill a disciple of the Heavenly Wind Valley. Then Jai decided to tell me what happened. Standing next to our hero, the girl told her opponent that their valley is one of the four strongest sects. She was really sorry that she had such vile unscrupulous students. She said that she refused him the wedding and he chased her all the way to the mountain and wanted to defile her honor. She would not have hesitated to finish off even the same Zhuo Chengfeng. Then the guy was talking about that Zhuo was dead, the whole speech is just empty words. Then everyone asked Jai why she was saying this because he is the only dear son of senior master Zhuo. It's a tragedy for the whole valley that Zhuo Chengfeng just missed the bride. He said goodbye to his life, the senior master will not leave it like that, the guy said, because there should be a more reasonable explanation for what happened. But looking at his sword, he said that if they wanted, he would punish them. The girl asked why there were empty conversations, and our hero at this moment was only standing silently behind her. Jai was talking about how she had heard how Masterful Brother wielded a sword and would like to see it with her own eyes. When the guy asked if she was sure she wanted it, the girl replied that she wanted it. The next moment, the guy rushed straight towards her, wanting to deal with her for what happened to Master Zhao. In the next moment, Jai began to defend against his attacks, using her cold attack and turned everything into ice. Our hero was thinking that the Cold Moon Valley has an incredibly strong technique. She instantly took over the territory, thinking about the girl. Jiang Lin's strength was similar, only he used a disguise technique, and her position was completely exposed. At that moment, the girl saw her opponent and was ready to defend herself using the flying flower, attacking her opponent. The same one tried to defend himself, but the girl used the heavenly dance to catch him. The opponent was so fast that she felt that his energy had disappeared and was trying to figure out where he was. But then, she realized that maybe he was just out of her line of sight. 
and the next moment, turning around, she saw a guy who was trying to attack her from above and again used ice to crush him. But the guy broke through all her ice to attack her. Then Jai realized that he didn't really need her at all, but Gu Sheyong, who was standing next to her. Jai thought that he would be able to punish our hero by pointing his sword at him. At this moment, I asked him to stop. Our hero used teleportation to move from his place and avoid the sword of his opponent. Jai was looking attentively at our hero at that moment, and realized that at the moment when he was about to attack him and he just disappeared. Jiang Lin was also shocked by the fact that he saw the young man just in front of him, and then the young man was already in another place. Our hero, addressing the enemy, asked why he was attacking him. She Young guessed that all this time his target was him, not the girl, asking his opponent about it and looking at him standing nearby. The shocked opponent certainly did not expect such a blow, and that the young man would be able to dodge it. The next moment, all three of them were standing in the middle of the ice and trying to figure out what had happened. Then, Lin thought that how did the young man do it, looking at him, who was standing nearby. Lin wondered if Jai was able to track his movements with the help of an ice field and thereby limit his abilities. But this guy, even after all the attempts to confuse him, realized that he was his target. However, the trick that the young man pulled off now scares the most, V Lin thought, remembering him, how the young man was able to dodge from under his blow and literally disappear. After all, it was not like a quick evasion, but rather teleportation, he thought. Turning to Shei Yong, Lan said that he was able to avoid the blow carefully thought out by him and seemed to be discussing with the young man that he really underestimated him. At this moment our hero replied that he would have thought better about it, since they are familiar with his sister. He should know her technique and even he saw that her technique perfectly combined with his. If he wanted to deal with her, he would have acted openly and ruthlessly. But the young man said that his opponent was avoiding the fight, so he realized that he actually wanted to attack him. But at this moment Jai started talking about the fact that she was facing a disciple of the King Yun sect, so he had to think about the consequences when addressing Lan, Jai, before striking his blow. At that moment, the guy did not know that the young man was really in the King Yun sect, said that he did not know this and was wrong. But he also reported that he knew the elder Zhuo's disposition, so as the chief disciple of the Heavenly Wind Valley, he had to settle this matter. After all, none of them wanted the conflict to grow to the scale of a sect. Jai asked if it was possible because Zhuo was to blame in the first place, the girl reported. To which the young man said that it didn't matter to him whether Zhuo Chengfeng was alive or dead. The main thing now is to pacify the anger in their master Zhuo. Therefore, he simply had no other way out. Hearing this, our hero began to laugh loudly, from which Jai and Lan were surprised. The young man said that he now understood how Heavenly Wind Valley, one of the four best sects, solves its conflicts. It was clear to everyone here that it was their fault but they wanted to shift it onto someone else's shoulders, our hero reported, addressing the youth who stood in front of him and tried to slander them. Immediately pointing the sword at our hero, he said that he was a weakling, because he accepted his fate. He will take the life of a novice who has recently identified the Kai Sphere, and will end there. Was this the right outcome? Besides, the young man killed Sajo. Our hero, having heard all this, said that he had a better offer. Raising his sword, the young man said that his proposal was this, he wanted to finish off this senior Zhuo, ask about whether the issue would be exhausted if this happened. Hearing this, Na Jai Xuan was surprised and looked at the guy, shocked by his words. To which Lan said that this guy can push a speech, but he doesn't even know how to spell the word deaf, informing him about it. At that moment, he was very angry and started attacking our hero, saying that as soon as he caught him, the young man himself would be able to talk to Master Zhuo about it. Our hero, seeing that the enemy had made his choice, began to defend himself. At that moment, he saw that the young man had flashed by his side, so fast. Surprisingly, he was faster than with the speed attribute, our hero thought. At that moment, the opponent was already behind him, pointing the sword at him, talking about the guy trying to dodge this time. Che Young, seeing that the ball was aimed directly at his back, was able to dissolve right in front of him, being already behind his opponent, which he did not expect at all. Che Young thought that it was strange to him, but it seemed that the distance to which he could teleport was shortening. It was necessary to put an end to him immediately, and therefore our hero went on the attack on his opponent. At that moment, because of the fog, nothing was visible. The young man did not understand if his opponent was able to avoid the blow. But then he realized that his teleportation required more and the space was getting weaker, and he had only 23 points left. He had to take care of them. This moment, while he was thinking, the enemy was already behind him again attacking our hero in the back. 
The young man realized that it would not be so easy, but he had to teleport only at the most critical moments. At that moment, he was able to return from the attack because Jai Xuan was able to put an ice wall between two guys so that they wouldn't kill each other while protecting Shei Yang. The girl, using her power, said that after all, she warned Lan that it was their business with him and there was no need to involve a novice in it. To which he, angrily looking at the girl, said that if she wanted to die so much, then he would fulfill her whim. While the young man was distracted, our hero used the beam of the golden torch and the intention of the sword first. Attacking his opponent, he called fire. Seeing this, both Jai and Lan were surprised by the power of our hero. Looking at his opponent, the young man said that the last blow would decide the course of this duel, directing all his energy directly at Lan, who clearly did not expect this. The next moment there was an explosion, Jai Xuan, who was standing nearby, could only cover herself with her hands, protecting herself from the smoke that was coming straight at her. At that moment, our hero moved to her, holding his sword in his hands and looking at what was ahead of him. There was a vague silhouette in the fog. At that moment, they saw a man who appeared in front of them and was able to save the guy. Looking at our hero, the man raised his hand, saying that did he really kill his son? When Jai Xuan saw this man, she immediately realized who it was and asked in surprise if I was Senior Master Zhuo himself. Everyone thought that it was a bad thing if Old Master Zhuo appeared in front of them. Our hero only grabbed his sword tighter, I think that their spheres are at different levels with him. He only has 15 space attribute points left. The young man had already understood how the teleportation technique works. The costs would depend on the range of motion and now he could teleport five steps further. Holding onto his sword, the young man thought that it looked like he could not win. At that moment, his hands were shaking, and the man said that the young man was right to start from his seat directly towards Shei Yong. Zhuo was talking about the fact that they were all going to die now. At this moment he was ready to attack the young man. Using only one hand, the opponent began to attack Shei Yong and he tried to dodge him using his sword and defending himself with it. In the following moments, they began their battle. Shei Yong was trying to avoid the attacks that the enemy was inflicting on him. Jai Xuan, watching this, asked if the youth was okay. Our hero, flying away from another attack, thought that he was trying to block his blows. But it was all useless, realizing that he was attacked and there was no way for him to resist this opponent. The elder Zhuo said that now it was Jai's turn, to which the girl, using her strength, shielded herself from him with an ice wall. But it was all useless, using the dissection, the man was able to easily cut through her ice wall, and attack the girl. She tried to use her sword to resist him, but it didn't work out and she was also hit by this opponent's attack. The young man, seeing that he was attacking the girl, tried to shout to her, but Jai Xuan was very badly injured. Zhuo said that it couldn't even be called a battle. It was too easy a death for these two, looking at our hero and the girl, he thought. The young man, getting up from his seat, thought that after extracting so many attributes, he could not believe that he had not repelled a single blow. His abilities were on the same level as King Luan and Yan King at the Battle of Mount Kilian. Frightened, our hero realized that he did not have a single chance. At that moment, the man grabbed Jai by the hair, who was lying right in front of him, saying that apparently she was very brave and then he had to kill her with a feather. Speaking about this, he was going to pay tribute to his son and at that moment the girl tried to hold on, but tears themselves flowed down her face. At this moment our hero asked the man to stop. He thought that from the moment he learned to extract the attribute, he thought he would become invincible. Remembering all his battles, what will be able to defeat an opponent of a level above him in one move? What will be the best in this world? But why did everything happen like that? Our hero thought. Remembering his last battle with the elder Zhuo's son, he tried to understand what was already wrong. At this moment, his father was ready to attack the girl who was in his arms. Jai Xuan squeezed her eyes shut so as not to see this horror that she was about to experience. The young man, looking at the girl with tears in his eyes, wondered why he was still so weak. He couldn't believe that it took so long to reach the level of Kai gathering. At this moment, the devil Kai of the royal dragon was next to him, so in that case he decided to use this power. Paying attention to our hero, the man stopped and saw his Kai. Looking at the young man who used this Kai, the man thought that the young man was out of his mind. You need to kill him before he does something, he thought and let Jai go. Then he rushed to our hero, but it was too late. The young man used this Kai and began to laugh devilishly. His eyes began to glow with different colors and large energy emanated from his body. At that moment, the guy started screaming, because this power was incredible. At that moment, the man, running up to him, saw the face of the devil that our hero had and tried to attack him but realized that the strength of the young man seemed to have grown at times and the Kai energy changed dramatically. 
he was in a rather precarious position. Our hero, madly looking at his opponent, was waiting for his attack. Then he understood that it seemed that the guy was about to lose control of himself completely. In that case, he decided that he would help him with this and went on the attack on him. Our hero, grabbing his sword, was ready for this attack and began to counterattack his opponent, who turned away from his rapid movements. The youth's attack was so strong that if it continued to increase, then Juo Sr. was afraid that he would not be able to defeat him. At that moment, it scared him, and he was looking at our hero, who was clearly trying to catch his breath after his attacks. The man understood that it looked like the young man was waging a war of attrition. After turning into a demon, he began to put all his strength into every blow. But this would not last long and soon the young man would die of exhaustion. The green stone square at the palace walls, a master from the Kingyun sect, Lei Lai, greeted the newcomers, saying that the village of Northern Snow had arrived and there was a disciple named Bei Lin, known for his abilities, next to Master Lin. In front of them was a youth with silver hair, it was a disciple of the Northern Snow village of Bei Linian. During this time he undoubtedly expanded the Yuan Sphere, which makes him the strongest opponent in these competitions. The student Leia said that she would overcome this young man full of determination. Then someone asked where Jai Xuan, the beloved disciple of the Masters of the Cold Moon Valley, was. The Cold Moon Valley Master Hanui greeted everyone. At the head of the team from the Valley of the Heavenly Wind was Master Chang Feng. The leader of the sect of TSN Lan apparently cannot join them. They understood. Chang Feng stood in front of them, the Master of the Heavenly Wind Valley. A student standing next to Lei said that she believed she was investigating an accident that had recently happened to a student of the Heavenly Wind Valley. Hearing this, Lei said that heaven was blessed only to good people, and the path of the Heavenly Wind Valleys was never paved with good intentions. The girl, getting up, said that she thanked everyone for having come such a hard way to get here. Her Highness the Princess was in front of everyone and the girl asked to leave the formalities. Going out to their guests, the opening ceremony will take place in two weeks, and they will make sure that it is successful. When she met her guests, she informed them that they had been working for several years to raise their cultivation level. Therefore, she hoped that they would enjoy the upcoming competitions. She also reported that she had prepared a new space for everyone, adapted for cultivation, and later everyone was taken there. Mr. Lei thanked the girl, addressing her as her highness and bowing to her. Then the princess asked if all the sex disciples were taking part in this year's competition. The man said that it was certainly so, but why did she ask? He was surprised and looked at the princess. At that moment, he exchanged glances with his student, and the princess said that it was not important. Then the girls asked what she was doing there and had to come out sooner. It was Zhao who was hiding behind the building. Coming out and addressing the master, she asked to save sister Jai Xuan. The people from Heavenly Wind Valley are chasing her. After hearing this, the girl did not understand what Zhao was talking about, then she decided to tell her everything. At this moment, our hero stood with flaming strength and watched where his opponent was. The elder Zhuo, hiding behind the columns, thought that so much time had passed, and he was still holding himself perfectly in this form, as if he was being directed by a stream of endless energy. At that moment, our hero noticed his opponent and went straight in his direction, breaking the pillar at which the man was standing. He managed to dodge, tried to attack our hero, but it was beyond the young man and this only encouraged him. Therefore, grabbing his sword, he was able to attack Senior Zhuo head-on, which he did not expect at all. Looking with horror at the wound that our hero inflicted on him, Shou Jai was lying on the ground. Her sisters came to her, who tried to save her, trying to understand what happened to the girl, what happened here at all. The next moment they took the girl away to try to cure her. The next day, when she opened her eyes, everyone was talking about how she finally woke up. The girl was trying to figure out where she was. And then, standing up from her bed, she immediately asked where the guy was, where was Shei Yong. Zhao reported that they did not find the girl lying on the ground, but there was no one else nearby. To which she was completely surprised, because Master Shei Yong could have died, and they had to save him. Jai informed her sisters. They asked me to calm down first and tell them what happened. Then the girl with tears in her eyes said that Master Zhuo SR wanted to kill them, and She Yang fought with him, and then she lost consciousness. The other sister at this moment was trying to figure out if She Yang was fighting with Master Zhuo. At that moment, the girls were talking among themselves, and the sister explained that Zhao Ming had told her about what he would do in She Yang. Then here Xuan was trying to say that he just stood up for them from Zhuo got what he deserved, so now she could not leave this young man in trouble. At that moment, another sister was saying that she had to save her Kushal Yang, 
and Lei was trying to stop her at that moment so that she wouldn't do anything stupid. At that moment, the sect elder was saying that it was true that they were to blame for the death of the disciples. However, they had no proof, so it was easy to get away with it. A fight broke out between the two sects. At that moment, the girls were talking about what would not happen, but would not allow their students to be insulted by looking at Jai Xuan, who I was sitting next to her. Lei also said that the first thing they had to find Shei Yong. Then after they found out the truth, how to better monitor their language to everyone else. At that moment, in the mountains, Master Zhuo met someone who greeted him, asking about where the master was in such a hurry. Then the man would ask what the one standing in front of him would do. The stranger was asking if the master had not expected to see him. He was here to remind him that now is not the time for revenge. They had to carry out their plans. Master Zhuo realized that he was being accused of impulsiveness. His son was dead. How could he turn a blind eye to it? The man said. The masked man reminded him that if the general failed because of him, they would envy the fate of their son. Zhuo the elder talked about not being tested for strength, already inflaming with anger. His partner told him that he just advised him to think carefully before getting into trouble, to wait with his revenge. Now is not the time and not the place for her. It was necessary to remember the responsibility that lay on him. After hearing this, the elder Zhuo just kept silent and looked at his interlocutor. At that moment, our hero was in the very mountain he had once come to, wounded and bleeding. He was sitting in this mountain. The next moment he thought that the elder Zhuo was too strong and he could not cope and flew off the rails, the young man understood. He realized that his affairs were bad, but he was lucky that he did not die and was able to slowly suppress the Kai energy. Shei Yong slowly absorbed only the demonic Kai from Tang Ming's capsule, forgetting about the energy of Yan Qingyuan's imperial dragon and Zhuo Chengfeng's ghostly Kai. The young man could not even think that he would lose control over them too, remembering how he went crazy during the battle with Mr. Zhuo, and not to make mistakes anymore. He had to find a way to perfect them. We had to hurry, Senior Zhuo could appear at any moment, our hero thought, sitting in this cave. At that moment, she came to the battlefield and saw that there were traces of a fierce struggle everywhere, because she saw traces of blood. As a result of this struggle, both subscribers suffered, it seems Shei Yang had a great chance to escape, looking at the destroyed quarter, the girl thought. But then she wondered if she had decided to stay and really for Jai Xuan's sake, trying to figure out who Shei Yang was. She asked him to be okay, to herself, trying to cope with herself, worrying about the young man. At that moment, Zhuo Sr. was standing in the middle of the forest and Jiang Lan came to him, saying that the young man had escaped. Giving him a slap in the face, the master said that the guy was useless, because he beat him half to death, and the young man could not even catch him. Turning to his disciple, he told him to find him and, although he got him out of the ground, he found him. To which the guy said that he did not think that now was the right time for this. The guy reported that the sects are staying one after another, they all know about Zhuo Chengfeng. This is an imperial city and instead of a master, it would be best to solve the problem before it arises, what he was doing. But now that the great families had arrived, it was no longer in their power, the young man said with a sigh. To which Master Zhuo, hearing how proud and harsh he was, the guy asked if the young man dared to order him. The young man reported that he was just offering a solution, because Jai Xuan is with the elders of the Cold Moon Valley. Now, Cold Moon Valley and the Green Cloud sect are looking for Gu Shei Yong. Killing him could simply put the sect at a disadvantage, he reported. He understood that Master Zhuo was saddened by the death of his son, but now everything looks like the machinations of the Divine Wind Valley. Master Zhuo reported that Gu Shei Yang should die, as well as all those who were involved in the death of his son. At that moment, someone showed up and asked where they had taken Shei Yang. Lan said that there were problems when he saw someone from the sect in which Shei Yang was. Addressing Lan, the girl standing in front of them warned if they touched the young man, she would kill him with her own hands. It was Sister Zia who came to check where the young man was. The deer reported that they were not interested in eating in any way, if they were looking for him, they had come to the wrong place. Then she suddenly saw a man who stood in front of her and asked if he was Zhuo Chengfeng's father. The elder Zhuo said that it was so. If they killed his son, then he will finish off this master, not to mention the younger henchmen of the Green Cloud sect. When the girl asked if he really meant that Shei Yong, the girl said that she was a novice of the Green Cloud sect. If they really killed him, then she asked her to forgive. But she would have to take out her sword and fight them. At this moment, Lan, standing looking at the girl, was trying to figure out if she was going to fight with the elder. The elder Zhuo started laughing, saying that it was great, he had already been in the mountains for a few days, 
but he only fought with some small children and it was nonsense for him. Looking at how the girl started attacking him, she said that she was offended, pulling out her sword and attacking the man. Senior Zhuo only grabbed her sword with two fingers, telling her not to be mistaken, she was talented. She is known as one of the three outstanding geniuses of the great Yuan country, but she was like the moon before him, the man said, holding a sword between his fingers. The gap between the realms cannot be filled with the simple word genius. At that moment, he started attacking the girl, and she tried to restrain him, but was defeated. Watching this, Lan realized that even she could not compete with Elder Zhuo. It was obvious at the initial stages of Kai accumulation. How could Shei Yang not just escape? but injure even Master Zhuo. The young man tried to understand if everything was explained by his madness. Master Zhuo was looking at the girl who was near the tree, raising his hand over her, saying that the next time before asking a question, she thought and whether she has the right to do so. Lan stopped the elder, asking why he wouldn't let her go this time. Enraged, Master Zhuo talked about the young man to get out as soon as they return. He will deprive him of all his powers, pushing the guy away, he said. To which the young man replied that he wanted to remind him of today's situation. He silently looked at the girl and began to leave. Speaking about She Yong, Master Zhuo reported that he had to die. Even if the Lords of Heaven himself intercedes for him, if they dare to provoke him again, he will not restrain himself, he reported as he left. At that moment, the girl was saying thank you to the young man for saving her. Turning to Lan, who also received from Master Zhuo, she asked if Shei Yang was alive and the young man did not know what to answer her, because he did not expect such a question from her. Our hero was sitting in the cave at that moment, exhaling, he realized that finally all the attributes had been improved. This time it didn't break and even though it was a little more dangerous than before, he still got a good reward. But surprisingly, the young man was able to fully assimilate these attributes and reach the late stage of accumulation. And now when faced with Master Zhuo, he will not have such problems anymore. At that moment, he saw a silhouette that was asking what it was he saw in front of him. The young man realized that someone was a stranger in front of him and asked what was about him. It was the same man who had previously talked to Master Zhuo about their plans. Our hero, seeing him, was surprised. While in the house, Jai Xuan woke up and started coughing as she got up from her bed. Then turning to Mrs. Jai, she was told that it was time to take medicine. Turning around, she reported that everything was in order, and then on the threshold she saw our hero. She was very surprised when she saw Shei Yong. Then the young man said that Mrs. Jai herself was in serious condition, but was still worried about him. She asked with tears in her eyes if our hero was okay, because she was so worried all these few days. After all, when he fell into madness, with the face of a demon, fighting with Elder Zhuo, he hit Shei Yang strongly, so she was very worried. She was afraid for his life, but at the same time she could not do anything, the girl said. The young man, leaning towards her, said that as she saw, he was safe and sound, stroking Jai's head, Shei Yang said. The girl said that she saw that he was fine and asked how he got out of that situation. Our hero sat down on a chair that stood not far from her bed and brought her story. The young man said that at that moment when she saw him in madness, he really merged with the fire. But Elder Zhuo's attack was imperfect and in the end he managed to escape into the cave. The young man reported that, fortunately, he overcame the demons within himself and was able to recover. Going outside, he came across Sister Zia, who was looking for him, and that's why the young man was currently here in this room. After listening to him, Jai, embarrassed, said that his sister was truly beautiful. The young man did not understand what she was talking about. The next moment, he took out a bottle and said that these were Kai and blood restoration pills. He made them for the girl's internal wounds as soon as he returned to the city and talked about how she should have taken them. Seeing that our hero made pills, the girl was very surprised, because she did not know that Shei Yong could create these pills. Our hero reported that his master was Lin Hesong of the Green Cloud Sect, a first-class alchemist in the great country of Yuan, so yes, he knew how to do it. Hearing that the young man told something about himself for the first time, the girl noted this and was very surprised when our hero handed her the pill. Looking at the pill that was in her hand, she couldn't believe her eyes, it was a level 10 pill. Jai was very surprised and asked how our hero made them himself. The young man explained that he could not buy them, so he made them himself and asked not to worry and accept them, because he had enough of them. The next moment the girl swallowed the pill, and our hero helped her drink it, putting water to her mouth. Blushing and embarrassed, the girl thanked our hero for his help. At this moment, Zhao came in, saying that it was time for her sister to take her medicine. Then, I saw our hero standing at the girl's bedside. Both were very embarrassed when they saw that they had been interrupted. 
The girl said that everything was fine. They could continue, saying that she didn't see anything. She ran out of the room. Our hero turned away in embarrassment, saying that Mrs. Jai wanted to apologize. He only wanted to give her medicine and nothing more. The girl also turned away, became a little embarrassed and said that she understood everything. The next moment, Zhao returned, had just brought the medicine and still didn't give it to her. She had to come up with a better excuse and, handing our hero the medicine, she asked to give it to the girl. Then, by removing his hands, our hero showed with his gesture that he really only brought medicine for Jai. Zhao said that she didn't say anything and didn't see anything, and in the young men's bodies he could convey this to the girl. If he did this, she would leave. At this moment, Jai began to laugh. While running away, our hero told Mrs. Jai to take the pills, and he would come back to visit her a little later. The day of the competition arrived. Everyone was gathered and ready to compete with each other. All the sect stood and looked at their opponents. Our hero's sect was also here, and when Lei arrived, he asked Shei Yang how things were going with his sword technique. Looking around, the young man said that he had trained a little and gained experience, but it was not enough for battles. Lei said that he was sorry that the young man would not be able to take part this time because it would be a great opportunity to exchange experiences with geniuses from other sects. The young man said that everything was in order, he would do it next time. At this moment, the sect said that as a murderer they dared to appear here without a bit of fear, turning to our hero. The young man, looking at the man who was talking about this, was surprised. Zhuo stood next to this man and said that if these were people from the Green Cloud sect, and they should look around. Lei said that the Chang elders were also here. On behalf of the Divine Wind Valley, he had to not let the people around him say nonsense. After all, the story was known to everyone. They could let this matter slip through their fingers, but if they insisted, then he would join the other sects, and they would decide it all in the royal court, Lei explained, looking at the sect that stood in front of him. Lei also said that when the time came, they should not blame him that they would be at a disadvantage. Zhuo was very angry looking at Lei who told him this. At this moment, a sect representative came out, telling Zhuo that there was no need to be angry. Today is the day of the competition, and injuries are not uncommon at competitions, so Elder Lei must also control himself if something happens. After listening to this, he said that they were really counting on personal revenge. Then turning, Elder Lei said that they must be joking. The competition will be between all talented novices and they all have different kingdoms, so at the first stage something can certainly happen, asking if he really didn't think so. Lei reported that although their chief novice Zhang Lan has some talent, he declares that they will win. How arrogant they were to ask if they thought so. The man then asked why he thought they only had Zhang Lan. The man who stood there wearing a mask said that he was a disciple of the Divine Wind Valley, Sai Wu King greeted Elder Lei. Our hero could not understand that this Wukian was the divine judge Sai Wukian. Looking at him, our hero could not believe whether this man would really represent the Valley of the Divine Wind. The start of the first round of the Phantom Divine Heart Formation was announced. It was necessary to allow the rules to be explained to all sects, the man said. Information about the Divine Heart of the Phantom is an ancient pharmacy left on the territory of this country to this day no one has unraveled its secrets. Everyone had to take into account that they had sealed the most dangerous areas in the formation. If you saw the seals, then there was no attempt to break them. The danger in those places was extremely great even for the level of the Sea God. They will be able to cope with the remaining areas, the presenter said. There are 30 special jade talismans in the information. They were the goal of everyone present here today and having received the talisman, they had to go to the center of the formation in order to pass the stage. Seats will be allocated based on the number of mascots. The stage will take three days. If they fail to reach the center of the formation by the end of three days, they will be disqualified, the presenter reported. However, there are no restrictions within the formation. Those who committed murder and injury will not be punished. Hearing this phrase, our hero realized that it was no wonder that Cheng Feng was confident that they would take revenge. But he is not participating in the competition, which means that their target will be Sister Zia. And they asked their father not to deal with Sister Zia. Now they can't do anything with our hero, so they decided to take it out on the Green Cloud sect. The young man thought, looking at Mr. Zhuo, who was standing nearby and chuckled proudly, looking at our hero. Addressing Sister Zia, our hero told her to withdraw from the competition, approaching the girl, who said that the young man was probably joking with her, because she understood why he was worried that she had fallen out of favor with them. But in this competition they intend to take first place. Our hero said that, however, just as he wanted to continue, the girl stopped, saying that the young man was a genius of geniuses, his cultivation was perfect, 
but the young man still did not have enough experience. It is quite normal to retreat when you feel that you are twice as inferior to the enemy, she said. But the sister also continued that some things needed to be done. She made her way into the realm of true Kai condensation, so she was able to take care of herself, as the girl said. Hearing this, our hero said that this Xi Wukang was hired by Tian Fenggu. He is not their novice and his strength surpasses the realm of true condensation. Sister Zia told her brother that it was too late for them to retreat. She was obliged to participate not only for his sake, but also for the sake of the entire sect. Our hero just looked sadly at the girl, realizing that he could not dissuade her. At that moment Lei came up, saying that the girl was right. They had no choice. If they retreated to the valley now, the divine wind would only continue the aggression. Lei also said that it was good that the venue was an ancient illusion pharmacy. It was almost impossible to track anyone there. Addressing the girl, he told her to remember that everything was unclean with this Wukian. If she met him, she was not supposed to engage in serious battles. She sensed danger. She should immediately run to the center of the formation. Lei reported that once the girl was there, no one would dare to harm her. Sister Zia agreed. Then our hero asked why it was safe in the center. Lei explained that this was because one of the organizers of the competition was a talented princess of the Great Yuan Dynasty. She will personally greet the participants at the center of the formation. No one will dare to do anything in front of her. Hearing this, our hero was incredibly surprised. At that moment, several people were standing on the mountain and, turning to one of them, the man told Lord Tianyuan that the competition had already begun. Then he asked what was about the secret passages. He was informed that they were open, he could enter the formation at any moment. This was great for him and this time the four divine magistrates would join forces to seize the blood, they said. The Divine Heart Phantom Formation is an excellent place of the Great Yuan Dynasty, really considers it its own, one of them reported. Another said that unfortunately for them, their divine palace had already deciphered this formation a long time ago. They wanted to deal with several situations at once. The Star King of the Divine Sea would personally greet the participants, so they needed to seize the blood before he appeared. And since she dared to leave the palace without the protection of Emperor Yang, they would be able to capture her, and they should not forget that she was the god of the sea, blood, their goal. Another said that everyone should not lose their vigilance, because they had been waiting for this moment for a long time. The twelve gods should listen more to them, follow them into the formation and seize the blood. Thus, the presenters declared the Phantom Divine Heart Formation competition open. Everyone had to run inside the formation, and the students rushed there. Lei, turning to Kinku, told her to be careful, because this was an unusual competition. The girl listened to her master and also began to run after everyone else. Our hero could only look after her, thinking that it looked like Yan King Luan would be in the center of the formation. It was no wonder that Sai Wukang was speaking on behalf of the Divine Wind Valley in this competition. Now Zai Wukian's logic is clear. He made a deal with him with the valley and now he can get to the center of the formation. But he also wants to see Shei Yang as part of the Divine Palace. Therefore, he cannot kill him. Our hero tried to understand what was the matter. He then realized that the Divine Wind Valley was using the Divine Palace to deal with the Green Cloud Sect. He needed to find a way to communicate this to Kin Luan. Our hero thought, angry looking at his new acquaintance. At that moment, the same one handed him a map indicating the secret entrance to the formation. The young man thought that it was good that he pretended that he intended to join the ranks of the Divine Palace. The problem with entering the formation has just been resolved. Addressing Elder Lei, our hero said that he would come and inspect the formation. The next moment our hero decided to leave the observer's place. While our hero was walking through the forest, he realized that this is what the ghostly zone of the heavenly heart looks like. At that moment, having stepped onto the water, he did not have time to take a few steps before the place was completely transformed. This means that in order to move to the next location he must break through these shifts in space and he had to be careful and remain vigilant. As soon as our hero thought about this, a dragon appeared behind him that lived in this lake and tried to attack our hero. Then the young man began to attack him with his thousands of swords. Having defeated the dragon, our hero began to fight it, jumping on top of it and trying to attack the sea monster. The appearance of the sea dragon was unexpected. Only he could not understand why this dragon was so weak. It was possible that the demonic serpent was level 5 or 6, he thought. But maybe not when he realized that this dragon could attack from a long distance. At this moment, the dragon, puffing up its mouth, wanted to defeat our hero. The next moment, the young man noticed a jade talisman right in his mouth. He didn't think he could find it so quickly, but to get it, he must defeat this giant dragon, our hero realized. 
but the problem was that he was unable to even injure such a powerful demon. In addition, the young man did not see his attribute, which means he could not extract it. The examiner said that the most dangerous areas would be marked with a seal only at the entrance, there was no seal. But if the masters in charge of these competitions were able to install this jade talisman, then it should have been easy to pull it out, our hero thought, again going to attack the dragon, running very close to him. The young man thought that this dragon was just an obstacle created for competition, and not a real dragon. The next moment, the young man thought that it was an ordinary illusion, for which he could not extract attributes from it. The next moment, having dealt with the dragon, our hero did not think that the power of illusion could reach the fifth or sixth level of a demonic beast. But since it was an ordinary test, he coped with it with ease, and the attributes were still inside the talisman. At this moment, he received Yuan energy equal to plus 300. Yuan's energy is quite small, but this was the first time he extracted an attribute from a jade talisman, so he could still absorb it. At that moment he understood how it worked. Now the location was completely revealed to his eyes and it seemed that he saw a way out. Looking at the cave that was not far from him, the young man, moving there, thought that it turned out that, by extracting the attributes he found, he could follow the shifts in space. But the jade talisman contains only a small part of the attributes, so when it gets to the next location, only part of the territory will again be available to it. In this case, our hero thought that in order to reach the center of the ghost zone, he had to collect jade talismans, otherwise there was no way. At that moment, someone appeared behind our hero, saying that he was already very tired of waiting for him, and the young man saw Mr. Wukian, who was standing not far from him. Turning to Mr. Wukian, the young man explained that the secret passage that he was shown really worked, although at first he very much doubted it and, in his opinion, this place was not suitable for holding the competition. Hearing this, he said that the Sky Castle had been exploring the ghostly zone of the Heavenly Heart for several years, and had learned as many secrets as the royal family had never dreamed of. Hearing this, our hero said that it looked like the castle in the sky was full of tigers and dragons. He wondered why such an insignificant person like him would suddenly be needed by the Lord of Heaven. This time, they probably thought out a whole plan to capture the Bloody Hawk. He hoped that he would not be used as a pawn when turning to Wukian, our hero said. Wu King said that everything was captured with the bloody hawk. He was almost in their hands. He needed the young man for something else, and then our hero asked what he was needed for. Wu King reported that everyone knew about the ghost zone of the heavenly heart hundreds of years ago. As the young man thought, why did the royal family need to monopolize this formation? Our hero, smiling at Mr. Wu Qian, said that he should have understood that the young man was still young. He did not have access to as much knowledge as was available to him, our hero said. Then the man said that since ancient times the ghost zone has been responsible for protecting mountains, houses and keeping dangerous criminals. The phantom zone was created for a specific purpose and the royal family knows this very well. At this moment, our hero realized that the ghostly zone of the heavenly heart was guarding something, and knowing the power it possessed, we could call it a mountain guard. But Wu King explained that she was not protecting the mountain, but the country. Having heard about the country, our hero was shocked by this news. Wu Kang only reported that it took the Sky Castle 200 years to explore the Ghost Zone and they were absolutely sure that this place was the entrance to King Xuan's underground castle. Ancient writings say that King Xuan is the only one who has managed to reach the realm of the Divine Sea in a thousand years. Apart from him, no one has ever learned all the levels of changes in space. Of these, only twelve are used in the competition and help confuse the participants. The key to the gates of King Xuan's castle will be waiting for the young man at the very end, after passing through all the locations. Then the Sky Castle will be ready to take over the Ghost Zone. Our hero didn't really understand what use he was to them. Wu King reported that the young man would help him break through the center of the ghost zone. Hearing this, our hero asked why he, because there are much more capable magicians in the sky castle. Wu King said that the young man was, of course, right, but, unfortunately, they alone could not cope and they needed someone who had not yet reached the sphere of rotation of the Dan Tian. They had one person in mind, but when they met our hero, they realized that no one would be better suited than him. Looking at Wu Qian, the young man asked why they thought he had enough strength for this. Wu Qian explained that when he first saw the young man, he was still a child at the 8th level of Kai study. Even then, he was able to kill one of the gods of the heavenly castle. A few months later, the young man struck several opponents of the Kai collection level at once. Moreover, capable of fighting with masters three times his age, the young man was the best among his peers. Having heard everything that the man said about him, our hero asked how they knew that he killed the god of the Sky Castle. 
Wu King said that he could pretend that this did not happen. When the doors of the king's underground castle open today, he will share this great success with our hero, he explained. The young man laughed, saying that it was a great honor for him and thanked him for dispelling his doubts. Now it would be impolite to refuse such a generous offer. He had been stuck here for half a day, and he had just now told him about the 12 levels of change in the space of the ghost zone. Maybe Wu King should have shown how to overcome them. And then the young man will definitely be ready to serve the Lord of Heaven. Turning away from him, Wu King reported that reaching the center was not so difficult. The young man can do it himself. This way he will better understand how the ghost zone works. This experience will play into his hands in the future, Wu King said. To which our hero, pouting, said that he was talking about it so naturally, as if it was as easy as shelling pears. The next moment, interrupting the young man, Wu King reported that someone was approaching. Our hero just stood surprised, behind his partner. He disappeared, saying that everything else depended on the young man and that they would see each other again. At this moment, several students approached, asking if they had seen anyone. They said no, but if they did not want to say goodbye to life, they had to speed up. Our hero, seeing the guys, said that, judging by their clothes, these were students of the Cloud Seagate. This is a pretty strong sect. Although they are not among the top four, why are they running away? Does someone really want to take away their jade talisman? Our hero thought, looking at the fleeing young men and through the fog. If Wu King told him the truth, our hero recalled, then he simply needed this talisman. He had to follow them and deal with anyone who wanted to take him away. The next moment, the fog cleared and the guys were talking about not letting the man who was wearing a mask approach them. After all, they will give him the talisman and withdraw from the competition. They said that they would do this only so that he would spare them. The next moment, the man took the talisman from them, saying that they seemed to be smart guys, but intelligence alone was not enough to survive. The guys looked at the man who stood in front of them wearing a mask. Then he said that he had the talisman and he did not dare detain them any longer. The next moment they began to run away from their opponent. Our hero, watching this, realized that the guys had simply disappeared or that a new location had opened for them. At that moment our hero disappeared. Moving to another location, the young man thought that they had definitely done it. But who was the guy who was chasing them? What sect he was from? At that moment, turning back, our hero saw the dead and it looked like it was a very strong magician who dealt with them. Climbing the stairs, the young man had to be on alert, because it seemed that this was a dangerous location. It was even better not to meet other participants, he thought. The next moment, rising up and opening the gate, he saw a masked man standing right in front of him. Apparently fate was not kind to him. The young man thought that there was something wrong here. The man just stood there and did nothing, as if something was holding him back. Looking at the man in front of him, our hero thought, and also this man was not at all bothered by his presence. Maybe he was waiting for our hero to come. Looking at the man, he realized that his clothes were torn, as if he had just fought. But these marks on his skin and clothes did not look like wounds from a sword. The next moment, our hero decided to pick up a stone from the ground, throwing it at the man who was in front of him. But I realized that there was a wall here, as if it were some kind of labyrinth. Then suddenly turning to the young man, Zhang Lan asked what he was doing here and our hero saw Zhang Lan jumping over this wall. The next moment the young man grabbed his sword and went to attack him directly. Then Lan said that he was not going to fight him. The young man explained that the last time they fought tooth and nail, and now he was afraid to fight one on one, asked She Yong. Zhang Lan explained that at that time, as the leader of the Heavenly Wind Valley, he was given the order to detain our hero. But now Elder Zhuo has retreated, so he is not our hero's enemy, Lan explained. Moreover, he did not support Senior Zhuo's approach to solving the problem. Because of him, in the eyes of others, he became a villain. Hearing this, our hero asked if the young man really thought so. The young man replied that it was indeed true. He promised our hero that he would not interfere with him in the ghost zone and the young man said that he would believe him, putting away his sword. The next moment, both guys looked at the masked man who was standing in front of them and Lan asked what was happening here and who this guy was. After all, he saw the bloody bodies of Cloud Sea Sect disciples at the entrance to the location. Was it really his doing? He wondered. Our hero answered that he did not know. He followed them, hoping to stop him, but did not have time. Lan said that he would once again emphasize that he did not wish our hero harm and hoped that the feud between them was over. At this moment, our hero asked the young man to take care. The next moment he saw that Lan was missing and tried to understand what had happened. After all, as soon as he stepped onto another cell, he immediately disappeared, and that guy followed him. This means that each cell is a portal to another dimension. Our hero thought and wondered how then that guy moved from one cell to another, 
What if for this it was necessary to deal with changes in the space located inside each of them? Standing on the squares on which our hero was, like on a chessboard, he thought that one way or another there had to be a way out of this labyrinth. At that moment, Lan appeared again in front of him and our hero was surprised when he saw him, and he said that the young man was lucky, Shei Yang, that he did not give up his words, asking how the young man dared to deceive him. Our hero explained that he had nothing to do with it, asking where he was transported. Then Lan explained that he had been transported to a hellish place with a sea of fire. He almost burned to death. Our hero explained that that guy also stepped on the next square and disappeared with a row behind him. Che Yang thought that it was all one continuous labyrinth, where each cell is a separate location, from which there is only one way to get out, otherwise it would be the end. The Doe, listening to our hero, asked where they should go now. The young man said that he didn't know, because this place consisted of identical black and white cells, there was no specific pattern here. The plan explained that when then what was the point of wasting time on conversations, if the young man did not know the loophole. The only way out was to use force, maybe he could think further, Lan reported that he went. Our hero only carefully watched his new partner, thinking that the labyrinth consisted of identical cells, without any pattern. It is possible to find a jade talisman. This talisman will show them the way, which means they had to follow Jiang Lan's example and move along the cells. The next moment, when Lan stepped onto one of the cells, a portal appeared in front of him. He thought that he had moved one more cell forward and that it was not bad. Apparently he decided not to stand still. He should also be able to cope if he chose the same route as him. The next moment, Lan, standing on the cages, was thinking about what cage he should have chosen. The next moment he moved and thought that he was standing on the field between the giant soldiers, thinking that he had not been here yet. Lan tried to understand how he needed to get out of here. At this moment, the masked man was watching him closely. The figure that stood on this board shone with red eyes, and Lan, looking around, thought that he did not see any dangers. The next moment, these very figures began to move. The guy, seeing this, was stunned and they were controlled by the one who was wearing a mask on the shoulder of one of these figures. The next moment, the figures began to attack Lan, who realized what a powerful blow these figures had and was afraid that he would not hold out for long. As he dodged these figures, the young man thought that there had to be some way to stop them. It was definitely necessary to find a flute talisman, the guy remembered. With this jade talisman, he thought that he could defeat these statues. The next moment he asked if this was what the young man was looking for by chance. It was the same masked man who stood on one of these statues. Seeing this man, the guy said that if he was the one who controls these statues, he should stop it now. To which he said that he was thinking about how to find Zhang Lan, and he himself came to him, addressing the leader of the Heavenly Wind Valley, to which the guy did not understand how the stranger knew him. The stranger said that he really knew him, and that he also wanted to kill him. The next moment, holding the talisman in his hands, he thought that these statues would help him. Hearing this, Lan asked if this man really served the Heavenly Castle, because it was the Elder Zhuo who probably ordered him to get rid of him because he did not want to join them. The man said that the young man was a fine fellow and quickly guessed, and now he had to die, calling the young man ungrateful. The next moment, the masked man jumped away and the figures began to attack Zhang Lan. The same one said that he wanted to see which of them would die. The next moment, breaking through the figures, he wanted to get to the man who was wearing a mask, but was carefully watching him. But at one moment one of the figures tried to grab the young man. Jumping back, he looked at the three figures that were right in front of him. The statues began to attack the young man, and he thought that if they continued to run away, he would quickly end. Therefore, it was necessary to quickly deal with their puppet master. At this moment, the puppeteer was already behind our hero, saying that he must have lost him, since he disappeared from his field of vision. The young man did not expect the man to move so quickly. At that moment, our hero also moved to this dimension, because it was strange for him, because he heard a roar as if something was collapsing. At this moment he was trying to understand what was happening here. Then suddenly someone flew away, and he saw Jiang Lan coughing and trying to come to his senses. Looking at the man who was hanging in the air, the young man asked if he did this to him and the masked man said that there was a rat in front of him and greeted him, saying that this is what follows him. Is it really he also wanted to say goodbye to life? At this moment, Lan decided to warn our hero. He said that the young man should be careful because this man controls the stone statues with the help of a jade talisman, and that the young man would not be able to defeat them. At this moment, the statues were already looking at our hero, and at Lan, who was wounded and trying to help the young man. Our hero explained so that this one would know that he did not do this for the sake of Lan. He just needed a talisman. 
At that moment, the masked man began to laugh and, holding the talisman in his hand, said that our hero could try to take this talisman away from him. Drawing out his sword, the young man said that his enemy asked for it and went on the attack. Jumping straight towards his opponent, he did not expect that the young man could move so quickly. The next moment, our hero was already behind him, trying to attack the masked man. Then, looking at this, he could not understand how the young man did it. At that moment, he spoke about having all the statues finish off our hero, and they began to attack the young man. But our hero was very funny about this and he used the intentions of the sword of the first son to attack everyone at once. The next moment, Lan closed his eyes and couldn't believe what he saw. And our hero, approaching the masked man, decided that their battle would be much more fun. But it seems he was wrong. Looking at the talisman that stuck in his hand, at the defeated stranger, Jiang Lan, trying to get up and approaching our hero from his seat, coughing up blood, asked if it was all over. Our hero explained that he should not even think, because he would not receive a talisman, holding it in his hand at that moment. But Lan said that the young man misunderstood. He simply did not expect that our hero was so strong and thanked him for the fact that the young man was able to save him. Our hero asked if Lan knew him, and Lan said that he didn't think that Elder Zhuo had made a deal with the Sky Castle to kill him. But I asked the young man not to worry. As soon as they get out of here, they will report this to the Elder. The young man informed our hero, I'm worried about what will happen next. The young man said that at least now the doe was ready for the next attack. They would not stop, so the young man had to be careful. Our hero explained that he would go, he had some other things to do. At this moment, Lan asked if the young man knew how to get out of here. Shei Yong explained that he had one way, but if Lan wanted to leave the labyrinth with him, then he had to promise him something. Hearing this request, the young man became interested in what step our hero wanted him to promise. The young man asked that when they were outside, they could see his jade talisman. Lan said he wouldn't do it. Then the guy said that if the doe didn't trust him, then he could stay here. The next moment our hero was about to leave, but Lan said that he would believe the young man, so he could look at the three talismans that he had collected. Asking whether our hero would definitely look, because some valuable thing or something else was hidden in them, he asked. To which the guy said that he does not reveal his secrets and grabbed two talismans to look at. The young man realized that it was right to take a promise from him, holding the talismans in his hand. The next moment he gave them back to Lan, thanking him and saying that now they were even. Lan, looking at the talismans, thought that nothing seemed to change. Our hero treated him, saying that he was not a murderer at the end of the test. At this moment, Sister Zia came to the lake where a huge toad was sitting, and the guy named Bei Ling and asked if he was here too. Sometimes the young man said that he did not think that they would collide in the ghost zone. Apparently it was fate. Looking at the girl, the guy asked how they would decide which of them would get the jade talisman. The girl was surprised and asked what the young man was talking about, because there was no jade talisman here. To which he said that she should not pretend that she did not know what this jade talisman looked like. It was amazing how she got here then. After all, most of these talismans were hidden in the most dangerous locations from the ghost zone. Now they were in a swampy area, in the middle of which this giant beast was sitting. The young man thought that this beast was guarded by a jade talisman. The girl, looking at him, understood that her lies had failed and she could not predict that they would have to fight in the final round. They said that sooner or later, this was bound to happen anyway, drawing his sword. Sister Zia is also ready and told the young man not to expect mercy from her. The next moment, she began to attack Bei, and he tried to defend himself from her. So they continued their battle around the beast, which was watching them. The girl thought that the young man had improved his heart technique. In just a split second, he created this huge ice field. The guy used the snowstorm covering the skies to attack Sister Zia, who was trying to defend herself from him. At this moment, the beast began to make sounds and both of our heroes decided to see what was about to happen. They wanted to grab the talisman that was supposed to appear in front of them, but the next moment they saw that the talisman was grabbed by someone who had simply arrived at this place. Turning to our heroes, the young man who arrived said that he thanked them for receiving the jade talisman without any effort. Then Sister Zia asked who this young man was and he said that it didn't matter anymore, because soon the end would come for both of them. Chapter 37 The next moment, when Sister Zia and Bei were looking at the stranger in front of them, the girl shouted at the guy to be careful, because the enemy was heading towards him. The next moment, Bei invited the young man to experience the power of his sword by attacking his opponent. But the enemy was so confident that he was able to grab his sword with just two fingers, to which Bei was completely surprised by such a reception. 
After laughing, the young man was able to defeat Bei with just his strength. At this moment, the elder sister began to challenge the young man to a fight. She tried to attack the guy, but the boy was so fast that he was right behind her and decided to attack the girl. Defending herself with her sword, she dropped it and jumped back, to which he said that the girl was not at all his equal. When he said this, he decided to call on his sword and use the technique and sword of the lone killer. The young man immediately rejected it, attacking. The next moment Sister Zia threw another sword at the enemy and managed to cut the young man. Then, seeing this, he thought about what an interesting sword the girl had. They, looking at this, was also surprised, asking if the girl was really using two swords at the same time, standing behind her at that moment. At that moment, the girl began to cough up blood and said that she had acquired this style especially for him. It was a pity that it was useful only now. The young man only remained silent when he heard this, and the enemy said that it was not bad and the girl managed to wound him. But, unfortunately, she was still far from reaching his sphere. He also said that her techniques were insignificant against his absolute power. Gathering his strength, he said that the girl was finished. And at that moment our hero appeared, saying that it was his turn to show what he was capable of. The enemy saw a young man who was able to repel his attack with the speed of the wind. Seeing our hero, the enemy asked who he was. She Yong, coming down in front of his sister, said that he was a disciple of the King Yun sect. The one who decided to harm his sister will have to deal with him, the guy said. Turning to his sister, he asked if the girl was okay. Seeing the young man, she asked She Yong how he ended up here. Without turning to his sister, the guy said that it didn't matter, the main thing was that he had time. Otherwise they might not have seen each other again. The next moment, the sister, having heard such statements, blushed and now remained looking at our hero. Then the enemy, looking at She Yong, wondered who this young man was. Then, recalling the conversation with Wu Qian, the guy realized that when he asked about who would be in charge of the center of the ghost zone, Wu Qian told him not to worry, because he had found the ideal person for this job. The young man realized that it was the same candidate six looking at She Yong. The young man, thinking to himself that since She Yong did not know him, he could take advantage of this and check what kind of guy Atsun had chosen. Then our hero asked what would happen if the one who died was not he at all, but the young man who stood in front of him. Sister Zia told her brother not to provoke him, because he was much stronger and the young man would not be able to defeat him. He could have died, the girl said, to She Yong, who was already ready to start a fight. Well, She Yong, being fearless, said that he wanted to see which of them would be the winner, and who would be the loser, pointing his sword at his opponent. Using his sword intent, the youth was about to attack his opponent. He saw this and asked if the guy really wanted to use such a slow technique against him, thinking that it would work. Our hero grinned at that moment. The enemy realized that the young man who had just been in front of him had disappeared. The next moment he noticed that the guy was already above him, high in the air, trying to attack him. She Young used the lone assassin sword technique to attack his opponent. Sister Zia, watching this, thought about what a powerful blow the young man struck. Wondering how strong She Young had become, she tried to understand by watching the progress of the battle. The enemy was able to block the intentions of our hero's sword, but was very surprised by his attack. And the next moment, looking at the young man, he saw that he began to attack him with the technique of the first sun, directing the entire stream of fire energy that he had at his opponent. At this time, my sister was always watching She Yong, thinking about how the young man managed to improve his skills so much, amazed at his strength. The young man was able to wound his opponent, and he, trying to come to his senses, coughed while in a fog. At this moment, our hero appeared right in front of his opponent. He, looking at She Yong, said that even he had to admit that the young man was good and talented and had a quick reaction, talking about Wu Kang and the fact that he made the right choice. He also addresses She Yong and said that, having become the magician of the Heavenly Palace, the young man will soon be able to reach the level of four heavenly officials. It seems this time the plan might actually work for them. Our hero, smiling, said what was going on about his sister, asking if the young man would leave her alone. Then the guy said that he understood that our hero wanted to become the one who would save the beauty. Then he said that he would have no problem pretending that he had lost and leaving the battlefield. In this case, the young man said that he was sorry, which surprised his opponent. The enemy asked what our hero was up to. At this moment, She Yong was telling his sister to be careful. Then, looking back, the enemy tried to understand what the young man was talking about, because his sister at that moment was not where She Yong indicated. It was a diversionary maneuver, and our hero was able to wound his opponent with his sword. He did not at all expect such a dirty reception from our hero, and asked if the young man really decided to fool around, saying that whether the guy even knew what consequences he would have to face then. 
Shi Yong asked if anyone would care when the guy dies. Hearing what the young man said, the enemy asked if he really wanted to kill him. Our hero, rushing to attack his opponent, said that this was indeed the case, because his opponent was not the best person. At this moment the guy began to use his power, the young man had to retreat. Sister Zia shouted to Shei Yong to be careful. At that moment she came to his defense and then the guy began to attack the girl. Our hero used the intentions of the sword of the first son to protect her and was able to defeat the enemy's attack. The enemy was again surprised, saying that our hero was a very strong guy. The next moment the enemy fell in front of the young man. Looking at the body that was in front of him, the sister asked if the enemy was dead. Our hero talked about what it was like, extending his hand to help her up. Looking at all this, Bei thought that maybe there was a younger brother and was able to destroy a strong magician. Thinking about when their sect succeeded in growing so much and who it was, this young man, looking at our hero, fought the guy. Our hero stood in front of his sister and thought that he could not suspect that this guy would have five jade talismans. The next moment he realized that he now saw a way out and turned to his sister. The girl said that the guy was a very powerful magician, who had probably already reached the middle of the sphere of rotation and she said that she was surprised that the young man was able to defeat him. After all, they had different levels of training. Then our hero said that he was simply lucky that he was able to dodge and turn around a sudden attack. Didn't he think that he could handle it in a real fight and turning to his sister, he asked if he could look at this talisman that she had taken. The girl looked at our hero and asked why he wanted to do this. Was there really something hidden inside the talismans, she asked. Then the young man said that he noticed that each talisman had an unusual pattern. So by putting them together, they might be able to reveal the secrets of the ghost zone. While reporting all this, our hero thought to himself that he was apologizing to his sister. That's all he could say to her. He needed more jade talismans to reach the center before the sky castle and save the girl. Hearing what Shei Yong said, the girl obediently gave him her talisman, saying that she only had two of them. After looking, the sister asked if the young man found the differences. Our hero only remained silent, thinking that they were absolutely part of a scheme that, having assembled it, would allow them to break through the ghost zone. Unfortunately, this was not enough, the young man said. As if hinting at one of those present, in this conversation, the young man said that if he added another talisman, then he had everything he needed to do it. They asked why the young man was staring at him. Did he really want him to sacrifice his jade talismans? Turning to our hero, he asked. The girl told him to stop talking nonsense and give the jade talismans here. The young man said that even though the guys were outnumbered, he was not afraid of them. At that moment, sister said that he was very annoying to her. Having taken away the jade talismans from the guy, she said that it turns out Bei had collected one more than she did. Our hero, having absorbed their power, stood silently in front of his sister, talking about why not just admit that they were incredibly lucky with him and be more polite, Bei said. Put on some perfume. At this moment, our hero was talking about how everything would be fine. Hearing this, the sister asked what was there and whether the young man was able to solve the mystery of the ghost zone. When the guy said that it was almost like that and told the sister to follow him, the young man thought that he had already collected 16 jade talismans. This should definitely be enough to reach the center. They, watching from the side, said that the young man became more and more persistent and suspicious, so he kept an eye on him. Bay reported, at the same time, that he was returning the talismans to Bay, throwing them into the guy's hands. Seeing him, the young man spoke about what he really was like. Everyone knows the incomparable genius Bay, but he thought that the young man would be immortal. He, embarrassed, only remained silent and did not answer our hero. The young man then told his sister to take the jade talisman he had collected. Seeing so much from the young man, she could not believe it and asked where it came from. Our hero said that he got four himself and the rest were in groups of officials that day. The young man was silent about the fact that he received one from the lake bridge and three from Tiangong's subordinates. If he could get a few more, Sister Zia could take first place, so the young man wanted to try his best. Look at the jade talismans that were in her hand. Sister said that the young man worked so hard and that she could not take these talismans. Addressing his sister, the young man said that she had forgotten that he had no right to participate. Everything was fine. Besides, he had more important things to do in the magic array. Hearing about more important matters, the girl looked at our hero in surprise. He reported that this was a different story and he needed to get to the formation as quickly as possible. Then sister asked about the heavenly official who was mentioned earlier, and wondered if Shei Yong knew this person and if he was somehow connected with him. The young man said that it was too dangerous for her to act alone. This competition no longer made sense. Something may happen soon that could endanger the entire Yuan kingdom. 
Therefore, he will explain everything and along the way, the sister reported that she would listen to our hero. The next moment, everyone was in the center of the formation, waiting for those who could win. The princess, sitting in the center, asked her subordinates how long they had been waiting. Then one of them reported that only an hour had passed, addressing her highness. Hearing this, the girl asked how long it took the fastest player of previous years to reach the center of the ghost zone. Then the young man answered that it was two days, but the one who completed the test on day three collected the largest number of talismans. The difficulty is to collect as many talismans as possible, so some participants set up an ambush near the center of the ghost zone. The closer to it, the bloodier the battles. The real battle began today on the second day of the competition, addressing her highness, saying that she could return to the palace and rest, because there was no need to sit here and wait. At that moment, when the princess was about to leave, they suddenly heard screams nearby. Then everyone tried to pay attention to who it was. They talked about how they finally came out of the forest and saw the Imperial Guards, thinking that they really hadn't reached the forest of the Ghost Zone. I turned to those above, one of the princess's servants asked who he was, he had to identify himself. He, bending his knee, said that he was Bay and turning to Mr. Examiner and saying that his name is Very Bay. He is a student of the village of Silver Snow. Then the Examiner congratulated Bay. He was the first to reach the center from the village of Northern Snow. The young man reported that in fact, he was not alone in doing this. Behind him, Shea Young was talking about how fortunately they arrived on time. The princess asked what the young man was doing here. At this moment, our hero came out to the princess along with his sister. Wu King at that moment, together with his servants, also moved close to the center, saying that they were near the center and were ready to start everything. All the minions reported that they were already in position and awaiting his instructions. Addressing everyone, he asked where Lao San was and why he had not been there yet. Then they all said that he thought that the young man was having fun, as always. Wu Kang, saying that it was the same every time. If because of him the gods had to bring such an important event, he would not be happy. The next moment, they all decided that they needed to start their plan. Sister Zia, looking at our hero, did not know that the young man was personally acquainted with the princess of the Great Yuan Kingdom. Turning to Sister Zia, did she really think that they just came to chat and had not seen each other for a long time? Or was there something else going on here? Hearing what the young man was saying, our hero's sister asked what kind of nonsense the guy was talking about. In the village of the Northern Snow there were all such gossips. They reported that he thought that the girl was also interested because she had been looking in their direction for half a day, to which the girl, embarrassed, said that this was not at all true. At that moment, he interrupted their thoughts, saying that someone was approaching them. It was Wu Kang who said that it seemed that he was not the first to reach the finish line. Then the examiner said that he knew him because the young man was a newcomer from the Valley of the Heavenly Wind. Now he could give him the jade talismans he had collected, the examiner reported. The results of the round were announced in three days. The young man saw the entrance and thought that there was a bloody hawk. Because there were no changes in the plan, they must have suspected something was wrong. Then one of the princess's servants asked if the young man really had any questions, and if so, then he could spend these three days here. The next moment, Wu Kang used his strength and attacked his opponent. The man grabbed his throat, and our heroes arrived to save him. Wu Kang grabbed the man by the throat and he, trying to restrain himself, said that the guy would let him go. Then Wu Qing said that no one dared to talk to him like that. The next moment he broke the man's throat and this was a sign that it was time to attack. All his partners had to act according to the plan and, descending from their places, went on the attack. At this moment, Bei asked who this guy was to be one of these examiners. Did he really think that the royal family would let it all go? The next moment he realized that everything had not gone according to plan and decided to attack. At that moment, Zia stood next to him, saying that there was one and she had to sit down with these strangers. At that moment, our hero arrived in time, telling him to stop to save his sister. But Wu Kang was very fast and was able to move, grabbing his sister. They say that he was surprised that Shei Yang was already here. Taking out his sword, the young man said that he would not dare to touch his sister and asked to let her go immediately. Then suddenly, when all his subordinates arrived, saying that where did the bloody hawk go, asking Wu Qian. The man explained that the blood hawk must have been around here somewhere and the two of them were supposed to inspect the area. One of the masked people was talking about how it looked like someone screwed up. Well, the king of the stars won't leave it like that. Wu Kang, angry, said that everything was in order and famous officials began to carry out tasks at the same time. So not only he would be punished, the probability of success of the operation is 70%. They could have caught him in time. 
one in a mask reported that he would do his job. But if Wu King did not open the underground palace before the King of the Stars arrived, the gods would not be able to help him. The young man had just reached the center and was ready to keep his promise, but Zia would not go without his sister. Our hero said, looking at everyone, looking at the young man, he asked why he should have believed him. Our hero explained that he had the right to choose what to do, and whether he should believe or not the ghostly zone of the heavenly heart is completely under their control, so he had nowhere to run. The young man simply did not want his sister to get hurt, that's all. He said that I remained in agreement, letting my sister go, saying that the guy opened the centers, as they agreed. But if he decides to pull another trick, he will recognize the wrath of the king of the stars. The sister stood next to our hero and he told his father not to worry. He also wanted to see what the legendary palace of Xuan Wang looked like. At that moment, it looked like some kind of portal was opening. And looking at this, the sister just said that it was similar. When the portal opened, our hero said that he knew that one of them was located in the kingdom but did not think that there were two hidden in the ghost zone of the heavenly heart. Therefore, I decided that I had to go there. Wu King said that in addition to the key to the gates of the underground palace, the soul of the king was located here. Its strength depended on the number of people who entered there, so they could not use group tactics. In general, he advised the young man to go alone, to which he said that he would have done so, but he could not leave his older sister with them, therefore saying that everyone should wait. The next moment I walked through the portal with my sister. Having passed through the portal, the sister, looking ahead of her, said that if this was the same place, then it looked very creepy. At this moment, our hero said that it looked like this was an underground palace. My sister said it was strange, they didn't see any lever or anything like that. They shouldn't have opened them. At this moment, our hero said that his sister should be careful because they were attacked. The young man managed to grab his sister and save her from the attacker. She saw that the spirit of King Xuan was in front of them. Seeing that this spirit had an attribute, our hero thought that it was luck for him. The next moment, the king, using his power, made the stone statues that stood in front of him come to life to attack our heroes. The next moment, these stone statues went to attack our hero. His sister then grabbed her sword, saying that there were a lot of them and her strength was not enough to defeat them all. The young man used the intention of the first son and attacked his opponents, melting them and defeating them. Looking at this, the sister could not understand how the young man managed to do this and when he managed to train like that. To which our hero shouted that now was not the time to talk, and she had to watch for something more powerful to move towards them now. At that moment, the foot of a giant statue should have stepped on them. The sister managed to return. She Yong remained under the pressure of this boot, and then using his power, he said that this statue was just a piece of stone. He will deal with him at his expense. At this moment, using force and the command crush, the young man began to attack his opponents. Sister, looking at the direct breakthrough technique, thought that the youth's level was even higher than the realm of condensed truth. Nearby is that if he had not found the bubbles with attributes under the soles of these statues, his strength would not have been enough. At this moment, the spirit finally decided to enter the battlefield itself, heading straight towards our hero and attacking the young man. Repel his attack, She Yong felt this power. His spirit energy was more powerful than She Yong's several times. At this moment, Sister Zia, starting from her seat, told She Yong that she was also ready to help him. The spirit, seeing that the girl was heading towards our hero, began to attack her. Having injured the girl, our hero at that moment thought that this was a good chance to use it. The next moment, the young man jumped over the enemy's back and then the sister, looking at our hero, who began to scream, asked what was happening to him. That friend, it seemed that the soul of the king was becoming weaker, and the young man, using his sword, did exactly the same thing as the soul of the spirit, the movement of the king. The next moment the young man and the spirit of the king began to fight. Seeing this, the sister could not believe her eyes. After all, our hero was able to defeat the spirit, who said that it was impossible, that he was defeated, worrying about his legacy. Zia was beside herself with surprise, saying that She Yong had really mirrored the king's technique and defeated him in one move. Listen to this, our hero suddenly leaned on the sword, feeling that he felt very bad. The sister, having caught him in time, asked how the young man defeated such an opponent and how he succeeded. But he reported that he was able to repeat the intentions of his sword. At first he thought that he would not succeed. But luck smiled on him. Wu Kang must have already had this particular jade talisman. He disappeared and filled this place with vital energy. They had to absorb it as soon as possible. And as soon as the young man recovers, he will deal with Siatsen. After listening to our hero, the sister agreed with him, saying that they would do exactly as he decided. 
Returning from the portal, Wu King caught what our hero threw to him. The young man said that this was what he was looking for. Seeing what he had in his hands, Wu Kang realized that it was indeed the same jade talisman. How could the young man defeat King Xuan so quickly? He thought, holding the talisman in his hands, laughing. Wu King said that the guy was just a real hero. Now they had the key with which they would finally open the gates of the underworld. He reported and commanded that the ceremony was about to begin. They used their power to open a portal. Wu King told him that they were almost at the goal. When they get to the treasure, the young man will receive his share. They asked what happened now, because it looked like they would really be able to get into the palace. Our hero just watched this. The next moment, everyone was caught up, talking about what would never happen, and for everyone to give up. Looking back, everyone wanted to see who it was who could resist them. The princess, coming forward, asked how the minions of the heavenly castle dared to attack the great country of Yuan. Then Wu King said that they really decided that by killing these subordinates they would immediately win. Little did they know that the heavenly officials occupied the lowest level among the magicians of the heavenly castle. At that moment, something happened and Wu King said that soon the god of the stars would arrive at the gates of the underworld. And then he personally teaches everyone a lesson, saying that everyone should have seen this. The young man understood that now he could do what he had in mind and attacked Wu Qian, saying that he did not have a single chance. While dealing with Wu Qian, he could not believe how our hero was able to do this. The same explained that not everything is under his control. At this moment the young man was grateful for the attribute of space that he had extracted from the storage ring that he had given him. At this moment the princess spoke of the need to capture her sinners, and turning to our hero, she thanked the young man for saving her and the country. The young man, accepting congratulations from the princess, said that he had not done anything special. He simply sent the message on time, did everything in his power. They asked where the other magicians of the heavenly palace were that Xi Wuking spoke about and the princess reported that they took care of it. She thought they had already been detained, she was just worried about She Yang, that's why she came here. They reported that he asked for forgiveness, but he had to help his comrades. Sister Zia said that it was time for her too, she wanted to check if Master Lei was okay. Our hero asked his sister to wait for him, but at that moment the princess told She Yang not to worry because she would go with him, grabbing the young man's hand. The next moment there was an explosion and everyone turned to look at it to see what it was. He, going down, said that the young man had contributed and appreciated him to the common cause, and promised that when he returned to the heavenly castle, he would treat him with the best. When he saw the princess, he thought that it was probably the god of the stars that Shayan was talking about. Bloody Hawk, was it him in front of them? He asked about the princess. Normally, he thought that four heavenly officials would be enough to catch her, but it seems he underestimated the princess's power. But now he wanted to get her even more, the man said. At that moment, our hero attacked him, then he was able to repel his attack with just one blow. Our hero informed the princess that it was necessary to leave, grabbing her, hiding from this enemy. He, looking after our heroes, thought that they probably wanted to run away, but no one could escape from under his nose. Chasing our heroes, the man thought. At that moment they descended underground, and the princess asked if this was an underground palace. The god of the stars should not have followed them here, she said. Our hero explained that there were quite a lot of moves here, and besides, the palace is still part of the ghost zone, so they are safe here for a while. Then the princess asked how they would then get out of here themselves, to which the young man asked not to worry, because he would lead them out. But first they had to try not to run into a fight and break away from the king of the stars. While they were walking through the tunnel, they saw a man coming out of the water, and the princess asked our hero to pay attention. And then they realized that it was the keeper of the tomb. He pointed the sword at them. The guardians of the tomb had all reached the final stage of the sphere, the princess said and that they were dangerous at this moment. Our hero thought about what kind of return it would be, because it was the first time he had seen so many attributes in one place. If he manages to extract them, he will reach the Dantian rotation area. The princess at that moment began to attack one of them, but was afraid that she would not be able to kill them all, depending on how many warriors were right in front of her. Our hero explained that he would do it himself and went on the attack on his opponents, dealing with one after another. After all, he knew that they would disappear as soon as he removed their attribute, because the energy of the supporting souls would dissipate. She Yong thought that his task was now easier, looking at several more opponents who were standing right in front of him. The princess watched the young man, thought that She Yong would easily defeat these opponents, as soon as they came closer. They immediately weakened. How many secrets did the young man keep about himself? The princess thought while watching his attacks. After all, even then, in their first meeting, she realized that the young man was special. In just six months, from a child with level 8 Kai study, 
he turned into a powerful magician. Watching him fight, she thought that maybe he was exactly what was needed. At this moment, our hero defeated several more opponents, thinking that he had now collected enough energy attributes to move to the next level. The tomb of King Xuanyu served as the foundation of enlightenment for him. The princess approached the young man and congratulated him on reaching the last level of Condensed Kai. Now the young man was ready to open the Dantian Rotation Sphere. Our hero reported that if he could, it would only make the princess laugh. He simply felt the energy emanating from the guardians of the tomb. The girl asked to leave these titles, from now on he could call her King Yuan. Hearing this, the young man asked again and then the girl said that throughout her childhood and youth, she was considered cruel. But the young man was the first who seems to have never allowed such a thought, and that for the first time they cared about her so much. The young man reported that he just wanted to pay for the fact that he saved him then. Besides, he didn't think that her second personality Bloodhawk was a curse. Hearing this, the girl asked if he really thought so. At this point the army was ready and had previously reported that everyone was ready to carry out his orders. He said that even though they turned over the mountain, they had to find the princess, and everyone obeyed him and he said that the insignificant minions of the heavenly palace dared to go against the kingdom. He would make them pay and after so many years, the god of the stars finally appeared, saying that he was coming for him soon. While our heroes were in the cave, fighting with the guardians, the princess thought that this was probably the grave of swords. After all, there were a lot of them, but she didn't think that she would also protect them. But the guardian is also different from the previous ones. His abilities have spheres. The young man said that he was no longer worried about himself. It was the object in his hands that filled him with strength. So the legend turned out to be true, and he actually has a soul, the girl said, looking at it. The young man was now asking what legend the princess was talking about and she decided to tell our hero. That once upon a time, people discovered dozens of underground tombs, and although they were not real, several things belonging to the king were hidden inside them. There were rumors that only by taking possession of the king's soul sword could one become the owner of his true heritage. But, unfortunately, among the abandoned borders, this sword was not yet there and a legend appeared. Hearing this, our hero said that it turns out that the time when he encountered the soul of the king, today in the center of the ghost zone, he brought it with the help of the movement of the heavenly sword. Perhaps when it was part of him, the young man thought to himself that he had dealt an incredible strong blow. On this occasion in the world the soul of the king and his legacy he would have a chance to protect the spheres. At that moment, someone attacked the keepers, saying that it was true, this ball contained a real soul. With the help of the girl, he will finally become the new king. Seeing her opponent, the princess said that he was daydreaming. Asking what he was doing, our hero, who warned, said that they could not allow him to get this sword. At this moment the young man said that the enemy really didn't find this strange. A minute ago, since less than the king's life keeper had in his hands, today it was so easy to get. The girl agreed with our hero, but said that they still couldn't let him go just like that. The man reported that this question was not funny, they did not think that a few stupid phrases would make him give up the sword. Our hero said that one way or another they would soon find out whether his assumption was correct. At this moment, the princess thought that maybe Shae Yong really decided to mislead the king of the stars. Looking at the young man at this moment, the king said that therefore the girl's blood would help him improve this sword. At this moment, his majesty was thinking that he was afraid that it was a fake tomb, but now he saw that it was not so. Walking inside, the star god saw him and couldn't understand that it was the divine general of the southern region. The masked man was talking about how the last time they saw each other was several years ago when he tried to steal the princess. Was this true? Addressing the god of the stars. He said that the bloody hawk was sitting still, waiting until it was caught. After all, it was not he who was created for him, so others will try to do it. Our hero turned around and was surprised. His majesty reported that he was not here to argue. He had to leave the soul of the king. From here turning to the star god, he said that he was still called the god of the stars. But will it really not increase? I thought that during this time, he has not become stronger, because this time he will not lose to him. He said, taking the sword. The majesty said that it was not a matter of power. He simply would not allow him to touch the princess. At this moment, a battle was supposed to break out between them, but the princess stopped them, saying that no one replaced her control, neither the god of the stars, nor even the holy land, even after death. Hearing what the princess was talking about, our hero looked at her in surprise. The next moment the girl went on the attack, seeing his majesty. He asked her what she was doing, and the girl decided to attack the god of the stars and his majesty decided to help her. 
The next moment, the princess grabbed the sword that the god of the stars was holding to take it away. Seeing that the princess was hurt, our hero wanted to rush to her aid and so did his majesty, but something was wrong. The girl was able to cut off her opponent's head. Then our hero asked her to wake up and not let her mind be consumed. The next moment, the girl looked carefully at our hero, who said that she should hold on, because he would save her. Our hero rushed to attack the princess, who took on her unusual appearance, thinking that in this way he would be able to save her. At that moment, the princess was able to repel his blow, and carefully watched what our hero would do next, attacking him too. Things were bad. The young men thought that they would be able to attack in full force, but then she might get hurt. The young man, the girl bounced off. The next moment she again went on the attack on our hero. Shei Yong realized that it was bad. The next moment she was able to hurt him, and our hero could not say anything. The next moment, she attacked him so that the young man flew into the wall, being wounded. Looking at the girl who came up to him, he saw only the attributes of the murderous aura that surrounds her. Why couldn't he distinguish the sword spirit? The young man wondered. But it looks like she had no choice but to snatch him by force when she attacked him again, our hero realized. While the girl was raising the sword, the young man waited for a moment, thinking that now he could do it. At this moment, to help, the girl began to roll tears, and a drop of tears fell on our hero. At that moment, I was surprised to think that maybe there was this water, then I realized that it wasn't water, it was a girl crying. She said that she simply could not attack the young man. The next moment she remembered how her father had taught her, saying that he had to remember that she would always be haunted by misfortunes. In the entire history of the Bloodhawks, none of them could live for more than 20 years. Some were even used as founders so that the owner could rise to a new level of cultivation at the expense of others. The girl will never look like an ordinary person. Therefore, her father wanted her to know about it from an early age. After all, she doesn't have much time left in this world. Unfortunately, he could not help her and this knowledge of him as a father is madly knowing. The girl said that she did not want to die and asked her father to save her. The man said that he was powerless here, but she should have known that the gods were never cruel enough to leave the blood hawks with nothing. They say that they endowed them with talents, which is why the enemies wanted her so badly, but only the girl could save herself. Therefore, she had to work harder to become one, grow up faster and then there would be a way to change her fate. Asking about what will be the next step of the Bloody Hawks, referring to our heroine. The girl tried to recover, shouting that she would not allow anyone to decide her fate. At this moment, I address her to his majesty. He said that she could not control herself, she was going to turn. Our hero realized that the girl is guided by King Xuan Wang. He tells her to take the form of a Blood Hawk. At that moment she tried to attack our hero. He said that he would not get a girl, because the young man would fight for her. He was trying to stop the girl's attack. The young man thought that even though he was not capable, there was an attribute here and he could still pull out of the ball. Trying to get the spirit out of the ball, our hero asked him to get out of there. At that moment, the spirit appeared in front of our hero. The young man understood what he had done, looking at the spirit that appeared in front of him. This is the attribute of the sword with the soul of Xu and Wang. The young man thought, looking at it and touching it, he received boundless power and then saw the liquid aura that was right in front of him, trying to figure out what it was. But it feels like ordinary, but cleaner and condensed. The next moment, the sword fell, and the girl began to fall into the arms of our hero. Turning to the girl, he asked if she was okay. She hugged him, apologized very much to the young man, tears were rolling down her face again. She said she was really sorry, she didn't want to do it when she tried to stop herself, but she couldn't. The young man, looking at the girl's head, said that everything was fine, she was not to blame for anything. Then she asked how our hero was feeling and whether he was in pain, because she would heal his wounds right away. Shei Yong said that everything was fine, it was just a scratch and he had to deal with them himself. At this moment, the man who was standing behind them thought that it looked like the power of the sword was gone and asked our hero how he did it. The princess represented her father Yan Wang to Shei Yong. Seeing the girl's father, our hero bowed to him, saying that he was glad to meet him, addressing his majesty. Looking at the young man, the man said that the abilities of the younger generation are really impressive. He did not expect that the young man would be able to stop her turning into a blood hawk. Even he couldn't do that. Our hero reported that the idea came to mind to extract the spirit from King Xuan's sword. It was just wondering if he could repair it for himself while Princess King Yuan was in his power. He tried to do everything carefully so as not to harm her and hoped that she was not hurt. The man was surprised that as our hero, as well as the daughter who was standing next to him and he asked if the young man really wanted to say that he managed to extract the spirit of the sword. 
The young man said that he did not know for sure. At first he felt some kind of energy coming into his body, but then this friend just disappeared. The young man thought that he could not tell them that he had extracted the attribute of the sword and hoped that they would just take his word for it. At this moment, his majesty was talking about the young man trying to put his aura into this sword, giving him the sword of King Shuen. Our hero tried to put the aura there, then they saw that Shei Yang really extracted his spirit from the ball. And Yang Wang said that it looks like it is. The young man received the spirit of King Shuen Wang and purified it. Turning to the princess, he asked if this was her chosen one. Then it seems that he is a good person. The girl was embarrassed, turning to her father, addressing Shei Yang. He said that he would not forget what he had done for his daughter and upon returning to the palace he would generously reward him for his work. He said. The young man said that with all this turmoil, they completely forgot about the rebels. They were going to attack the palace and hoped that the masters and other disciples of his sect were not hurt, because he was worried about them. Yang Wang told the young man not to worry. All the rebels entered through a secret steamer and ended up in a ghost zone full of dangerous locations, so the outside world was not affected. Only that the rest of the sect members could be helped by his guards. He informed and asked not to worry the young man because soon he would see his friends. Returning back to ours, the hero saw Sister Zia, who greeted Shei Yong and asked if our hero was not injured, because they had been waiting for his palace for several days. She was afraid something had happened to him. Addressing his sister, our hero said that everything was fine with him. Jai immediately arrived, saying that Shei Yong had finally returned. When the young man saw Jai, he asked if she had already recovered and the girl said that she wanted to thank him for everything. Of course, it took her some time to regain her strength, but now she was fine, the girl told our hero a little embarrassed. His Majesty Yang Wang asked Shei Yang the rest to go to the palace. When they arrived at the palace, they were invited to sit down at a table where they thought that everyone present was aware of the current situation. This year's competitions were overshadowed by the invasion of enemies, His Majesty said, addressing everyone in the hall. But now the problems were solved. Everything was over, I hope that everyone had learned their lesson from this incident what he proposed to celebrate at this festive table. Addressing his sister, our hero asked what his majesty was talking about. Then the girl explained that it turned out that the elder Zhuo was in cahoots with the enemies. And even though he was dead when they found him, his majesty still ordered something. In general, now there is one less main sect, the girl said, and the heavenly wind sect is no longer in the top four. Our hero explained that they had chosen their own fate. The elder Zhuo's son started all this mess, so they totally deserve it. At that moment, addressing Shei Yang, Yang Wang said that he had participated in the rescue of the princess and had to tell him what he wanted and then his majesty would fulfill the request. Getting up, the young man reported that he, honestly, was just lucky. As a reward, he had already received what he needed in Xuan Wang's underground palace. Hearing about the fact that the young man received something in Xuan Wang's underground palaces, the one that opens its gates once in a thousand years, everyone was surprised. They, looking at the young man, realized what it meant after all. The young man managed to get there and it looks like he entered the underground palace with the princess. If Bei hadn't left then, could he really have had a chance to get there too? The young man thought, looking at our hero. In this case, his majesty said that he himself would decide how to thank the young man. Addressing everyone in the hall and our hero, his majesty said that he was ready to entrust his daughter Yuan to him. How about becoming his son-in-law? His majesty asked. When he heard that the young man could become the son-in-law of the emperor himself, he was very surprised at such a proposal. His majesty said that he and his daughter had gone through fire and water and were even on the verge of death. They would make a perfect union. Hearing this, Lei thought that the young man was being offered to marry the princess, and everyone was surprised. The leader of the sect said that she would like Jai and Shei Yong to be together, but apparently the emperor also noticed how special Shei Yong is. It seems that Shei Yong and Princess King Yuan were created for each other. Saying that Jai didn't like it much, the girl started crying. The girl and her sisters informed Jai that they were afraid that the young man was not her intended. At that moment, his majesty, hearing our hero, asked if the young man was not grateful for such an offer. The young man hastened to notify the king to be grateful, it's just a big step for both of them. First I had to tell the master about it, because his movements depended not only on him. And Yang Wang was talking about why there were such difficulties, isn't this the best opportunity in his life? He is sure that his master Lin Hesong will definitely not mind. In the sect, too, everyone will soon find out about the wonderful news, because he will send them invitations to the wedding, to which our hero was very surprised by such an onslaught. The next moment it was night, Shei Yong, addressing the princess, approached her to chat. 
Then the girl resentfully asked why at today's banquet the young man did not agree to the marriage. She asked if he really didn't like her. The young man hastened to assure that she was beautiful and talented. She was the only one in the whole world. Of course, he liked her. Then the girl asked why he was looking for an excuse. The young man explained that she was very good and many wanted to marry her. He was just a disciple of the main sect. But how could he be on the same level with her? The young man explained. If marriage is what she wanted, he would rashly agree, wouldn't it ruin her life? Turning, the young man to the heroine, and asked her. The young man said that if, in addition, the girl agrees to marry him, only because he could save her from bleeding. Then at that moment the princess took a desperate step and kissed our hero. She was saying that now he knew what she meant. Speaking of which, the young man was a fool. Since childhood, her father constantly sent her somewhere. If not for her will, how could he marry him to some other, she said. And if she marries, then only the princes of a neighboring state. But the young man made a mistake, decided to marry him, not because he could save her, and because of the status they met with him two times and both times the young man saved her. She said that he had no reason to give her a helping hand, but he did it anyway. Every time he looked like the man of her dreams, she reported. Our hero, listening to all this, was insanely surprised that the girl was so frank. The princess reported that no one had ever treated her like that. Everyone approached her with a specific purpose. At that moment, our hero hugged her, saying that he understood, and on his return he would save her. Hearing this, the girl asked if it was true and our hero, holding her arms, said that he liked her too and asked to listen, saying that he would return and report to the master, and then officially marry her. And the next moment our hero kissed a girl, the King Yun clan. It was reported that She Yong and the others had returned. Greeting them, everyone was trying to figure out if it was true that the princess was going to marry Shei Yong. The girl was of royal blood. Everyone was talking about how it could be, because the girl is the daughter of King Yan. The whole kingdom knows about it. Shei Yong was showing the honor and glory of his clan. At this moment, returning, the sister was carefully watching our hero. Addressing Lin Hexang, Lei congratulated him, now they had one more student. The latter, greeting our hero, smiled at him, and Sister Zia said that she would go first, addressing the elder. Lin asked what was the matter, because it seems the girl was not very happy. Lei reported that everything was fine, just the girl was a little jealous. Then our hero talked about Elder Lei not being stupid, because it was because of him that she walked all the way like this. Lin listened and asked them what they were saying, because the more he listened, the more confused he became. The next moment, Lei was leaning on Lin's shoulders, informing him that he would tell him everything and had to go inside. She Yang wanted to go with them, but Lei suggested to him, why didn't he hurry up and comfort the girl? Because it was normal to have three wives and four concubines. After hearing what Elder Lei was saying, our hero asked what kind of nonsense he was talking. Sister Zia, running away from all the commotion, came to the waterfall, where she decided to wipe her tears. Then our hero looked at her, and the girl asked why he came, wasn't he going to prepare a ransom and marry the princess? The young man, addressing his sister, said that he did not expect that everything would turn out this way. Who knew that King Yong would force him to get married right away? Looking at the waterfall, the girl said that she stepped into the King Yun clan at the age of eight. Ten years have passed since then. Initially, she thought that they would fight all their lives, but suddenly the young man came inside and decided to get married, and he was with the princess. Our hero reported that he did not expect this either. Initially, he thought that they would follow the same path, but when he heard his proposal, at that moment he was very surprised. Then he realized that he liked the girl too. The young man said that he asked her if she was marrying him of her own free will. After making sure of this, he was very happy. The young man found out that the princess also liked him. Hearing this, Sister Zia was surprised that they were already so close and asked what plans he had for the future. The young man said that he would go outside and find out everything. Then my sister asked if our hero would really leave the clan. Our hero explained that not just the King Yuan clan, the southern territory consisted of only nine kingdoms, and he wanted to visit not only the Yuan kingdom or the southern regions, he wanted to visit all the remote places. She Yang will travel to all cities and rivers and then become the strongest in this world. However, the young man was only at the true stage of perfecting immortality, although already in the Yuan kingdom, but still could not reach the next rank, she explained. Our hero asked who said that he was at the true stage, because he would return to them after the wedding, then break into the kingdom of Zundan. Hearing this, the sister realized that the young man had already completed the true stage and was very surprised. Then our hero explained that he felt that his income would reach a new level. The girl was very happy and laughed, then the young man asked why she was laughing. 
Then the girl said that if he remembered, then six months ago he could not even reach the sixth level of Kai purification. He was almost expelled from the clan. She did not expect that the young man would soon surpass her. Our hero explained that if he had not been given a second chance, perhaps he would not have had what he achieved today. Then the sister said that she would go with him to the kingdom of Zundan. If his level was higher than hers, then she would fulfill any of his requests. Our hero said that they had agreed and then his level would be higher than hers. Then she would fulfill any of his wishes. And if on the contrary, then she would fulfill it. The young man said that she could wish for anything she wanted. Speaking of what everyone has heard, after all, Shi Yang and Sister Zia are going to the kingdom of Xuandang. And if someone has a higher level, the loser will fulfill the request of the other. Hearing that he could fulfill any request, it would be unfair, because if Shi Yang wins, he will be able to take advantage of Sister Zia. The guards were discussing the sensational news. One said that his partner was joking. Sister Zia is the main disciple of the inner doors and they have long perfected their true Kai. He was waiting for the best time to get into the kingdom of Xuandang to get into the top three of Tangden. Over the past six months, Shi Yang has advanced by leaps and bounds, and the kingdom has been chasing Sister Zia. He will regret it later. Then one of the guards asked what the other meant. He explained that since the Xuandang kingdom is no better than others, martial arts are an important part of the practice. The ranks of the Xuandang represent a scale, and only a martial artist can get to the very top. If you stay at the ninth level of Xuandang, then development will stop for life. A person can never become stronger. The kingdom of Xuandang can be divided into three parts, three lower grades of Rendon, three higher grades of Heavenly Pills. Only those who have received at least six grades have the opportunity to influence the Shanghai kingdom. If a person receives four grades, then he already has an idea of life and death, and if you are able to reach class three, it's almost a hope for the kingdom. The vast majority of Xuandang warriors have mastered only the first grades. If a person has mastered six grades, then this is enough to be called a genius. In all nine countries of the southern region over the past thousand years, several more people have managed to reach the highest level. That's why my sister was never in a hurry. While they were chatting about it, our hero was sitting in front of a bunch of books and thinking that he would finally be able to figure everything out. The absorbed life force turns into liquid which is the best guarantee for him to reach the highest level. Others need talent or luck, which occur once in a thousand years. But he only needs to constantly absorb life force with every drop of life force. His level increases by one more unit. So as long as he continued to absorb the life force, he was definitely able to handle the heavenly pill. Thinking about all this, our hero meditated. When he was at the outer gate, his income was only 5,000 stones a month. This led him to be able to extract attributes, but he rarely had the opportunity to extract the highest grade. But the stone of the highest grade absorbed only a dozen pieces before it condensed a drop of liquid, our hero thought. Although the effect was rather weak, it was necessary to slow down, in the end it was a reliable way. What is irreplaceable now is the Yuan stone, our hero thought, adding another stone to his collection. King Young is right, if he insists on dowry, then the Yuan stone is something outside his body. It needs to be converted into energy, the young man thought, sitting in front of a huge pile of stones, talking about it all alone. Half a month later, Sister Zia stood and listened to the fact that she was asked about what she had in mind six that Shei Yang himself suggested going to Xuandang. The girl said that it was because of this that she decided to go there too. However, she had been absent for more than half a month, and Shi Yang never sat still and turned to Master Lin. She talked about how that's why she can't wait to ask the master to find a way. He said that she stayed in one place for so long and did not improve. She should understand that if she wanted to get there, after her conditions are met, she needs to fulfill the whole essence to be sure. The girl said that although Shi Yang has an excellent talent, it is from this that his strength grows too fast and the understanding of everything comes slowly. If Lin acted rashly this time, he could say goodbye to his life. It was all her fault. At that time she was passionate about competitions. She forgot herself and reacted only now. She said that she would ask the master to think about how to save Shi Yong. He said that there was nothing he could do right now. His influence on Xuandang was worse than on ordinary people. It was made that he could use and realize a little more and overcome the barrier. The next moment, when they communicated, the clouds thickened. Everyone in the sect was trying to figure out if Shei Yang had broken into the realm of radiance. Rushing into the sect, everyone thought that this guy had really broken into the Xuandang realm and everyone wanted to hurry there as soon as possible. After all, Shei Yang is going to take a pill. Everyone who all ran to our hero was watched by Sister Zia and Master Lin. 
he said that it was impossible for people to have such power and cause such chaos. Looking at the sky that was throwing lightning, the next moment, he realized that this was happening and how this could happen. Looking at it, the sister thought to herself was it really a thunderstorm right in front of them? The girl said that it was a thunderstorm and something had to be done sooner, everyone had to take the formation. Mr. Lay asked, because there should not have been a single thunderstorm left. Everyone grouped up, and the sister understood that it was something bad. The next moment, our hero grabbed the lightning and felt the force. And the next moment, the thunder and lightning disappeared and the sky changed in an instant, said all the disciples of the sect. Master Lin stood by and watched this carefully. Then our hero appeared in front of those and started laughing and showed up. Then, turning to Shei Yong, the sister asked if he was okay. The young man said that they could enter. Turning to Shei Yong, they asked how he felt, what kind of thunderstorm it was. Then the young man showed the sword that appeared in front of them. It was his weapon of immortality, or rather that sword of immortality, our hero reported showing it. Master Lin saw the sword of immortality and asked where the young man had it from, and he explained that it was all thanks to the soul of the sword of King Xuan, which he received. He also took advantage of the thunderstorm to improve it. Master Lei, I heard that only at the second level of the Danchen or the highest there is a chance to pass the heavenly test. If so, then Shei Yong has reached rank 2. We have not met such talented students for a long time. Shei Yong thought about the second rank. I thought it was a sword pill, purified from the soul of King Xuan's sword, refined by thunder and lightning. It has the properties to attack with thunder. Now he is the only one of his kind. During this thunderstorm, Shei Yang had already realized 40% of the power of the thunder sword. But with the help of the pill, he became more powerful, our hero thought. So now this sword is his future, but still you can't talk about it to avoid unnecessary trouble, the young man thought. Addressing the master, he said that it was a coincidence that he was able to reach the second rank and a sudden thunderstorm almost tore his soul. Sister Zia congratulated her brother, saying that there were only a few people who could achieve this in the Southern Territory in 500 years. There are no more than three here, the girl said, addressing her brother, that his future achievements would be higher than those of the king. After hearing about three people, our hero thought that he was still high enough. Addressing his sister, the young man said that, looking at her, he found out that she had reached the Chuandang level, so he did not know and the girl said that four grades, getting into Tandon is even more difficult. This is a good result. The young man thought that it was even more awkward, realized that under the same pretext he needed to get out. The girl said that she and Shei Yang agreed that if he was higher in rank, she would fulfill his wishes, so the young man could tell her. At that moment, our hero remembered about it, saying that he hadn't thought about it yet. Then the sister reported that she would wait for his decision. Turning to the young man, she informed him that he should remember their agreement. If he was higher in rank, he would fulfill her wish and asked if he would fulfill her wish. At that moment, the masters behind her exchanged glances with each other. Our hero explained that it seemed he had already talked about it and then the girl said that they had agreed. Imperial City The 18-year contract had expired and the servants were here to get the blood serpent. Then his majesty asked what if he refused. Back then, he was told that they were just ambassadors. If Emperor Yang was unhappy, then they could go to Zhongshan territory to discuss the matter. Eighteen years ago, the master could not bear the disasters that affected the residents of the southern region, so he signed an agreement with them. Now that the deadline has expired, Emperor Yang was asked to think about his submissions before making a decision. The princess was telling them to stop talking. She'll just leave. Hearing this, the girl told her father that everything would be fine and she would just go with them. Seeing off his daughter, his majesty thought that he hoped that Shei Yang would be able to catch up after such news. And the girl thought it was a pity that she could not see him for the last time. Initially, I thought that I would have time to marry him before all this happened, turning to my father. The girl thought that even this seemed to be a luxury for her. The next moment, standing in front of the portal, she had to leave. At that moment our hero appeared and shouted that the girl should not dare to hide it from him. Our hero appeared in front of her, descending from heaven. Seeing Shei Yong, the girl was very happy. He used the light of the sun and moon, attacking this funnel, where the princess was to be taken, from which the hand appeared. Attacking our hero, we thought that it was a rather interesting unusual sword. After all, this is just the Xuandang kingdom. At that moment, this hand was able to attack our hero. He had to jump away with his majesty. Addressing his majesty, who helped the young man, Shei Yong said that he was prevented from taking away. Whether he knew what the consequences would be, he said that everything depended on the master's decision. Addressing the emperor, our hero asked why he did it and he explained that the young man had to know something. 
On the girl's birthday, she had an appointment with Ji Zhongshan. Now the contract has expired. Then our hero explained that he had seen that he had the ability to suppress her blood snake. But nevertheless, he gave her to heaven. Jan was ready for her to become a valuable specimen in their hands for experiments, our hero asked. Then the father asked what he needed to do, to exchange the three million lives of the people of his country for her life or something else. Our hero said that he did not know this. The man told the young man that the Yuan kingdom is just one of the nine kingdoms of the southern region. For the Zhongshan region, it is like a mosquito. When Ian saw the young man, he thought that he was the only one who could pull them out of the sea of suffering. Why he wanted to marry his daughter to our hero, she herself can't wait for this moment, but she had no way out. The young man, waving off his majesty, knew that he was only saying this nonsense. She was his bride, and no one can take her away from him, our hero said. Then he grabbed his sword and his majesty asked what the young man was going to do. Our hero explained that they were completely different and he was not going to go, but the young man would go to save her. Our hero packed up and hit the road. At that moment, Sister Zia was chasing him, turning to the young man, asking about why he was here and what had happened. The young man said that she did not understand and the girl said that she really did not understand why he did not say a word and just left the letter and left. Our hero explained that she had to understand that he had already said that sooner or later he would leave this country. The girl reported that he said this two months ago. She understood that this would happen sooner or later, but she thought that the young man would at least be within the framework of the kingdom of Shenhai or Xuandang. Our hero explained that he also thought that he would stay here for at least another couple of years and would not leave until he reached a high level. Unfortunately, everything happened differently. Then she said that the young man was in a hurry so that she would not become his wife. He was talking about the Yan Emperor being taken away. In any country the kings could easily retreat to another country. Even King Yan could not fight back, saying that for the sake of the people, he was quietly taken away. I told the girl that she didn't know, so I apologized. Saying that a lot of things happened, our hero explained that it had nothing to do. He used to think that he always had a way to convince the opponent until his sword was recognized by the king. Now it seems that not only he, but even the entire southern territory is like a joke compared to the holy land. The young man explained that they like to treat this mister as their own backyard garden. But he is still happy to be part of the Yuan kingdom, our hero explained to Sister Zia. Saying that it was really funny, the sister just listened attentively, and then asked what our hero was going to do. The young man explained that he was going to study in the depths of the Lion Mountains for a while, and then he would go to Zhongshan. Then the girl talked about what it means he wasn't going to come back. Our hero explained that he must first fulfill his promise before returning to his hometown. When she heard about the promises, she asked if he still remembered the promise he had made to her. Our hero explained and apologized, saying that he could not do it, at least for now. The girl reported that she didn't care. She would wait for him to come back from the mountain. Apparently he said he would always respect her if she went to Zhongshan. Then go there to find him, the girl reported, because he would never be able to escape from her. Our hero, leaving, apologized to his sister to himself, because he did not know what he would have to go through when he went to Zhongshan. If the girl was with him, he didn't know what danger he could put her in. At that moment, our hero left, and his sister followed him with her eyes. A year later, the Hanhai clan, announcing silence, the man explained that today is the day of the selection of students from different regions and clans. Everyone had to line up to register. They will invite them to join the sect for selection later. The disciples at this moment were waiting to join the sect. It was the Hanhai clan of the Zhongshan kingdom. None of the students have been to Xuandang yet. The young man, addressing Brother Gu, said that he did not understand. His father has already given our hero the place of an elder. Wouldn't it have been better to stay in the southern territory for King Xiu's sake? Why was it necessary to be here, to spend a lot of effort and energy to be a disciple in this kingdom? Addressing Brother Zhu, our hero said that he did not understand. Master number one hails from the southern region, and in the Zhongshan territory there is a chance to explore everything. At this moment, touching our hero, the guy was talking about getting the young man out of the way. His friend told him to forget about it, because he wouldn't tell him anything else. In the mountains, Shei Yong saved his life. Zhu wanted the young man to enjoy life in the southern region, but our hero insisted on going to the middle sky region. A new acquaintance of our hero asked to let him say first that this is a letter of recommendation that his father prepared and really did not want to suffer here. If Shei Yong was willing to do this for him, then he was happy. But whether this plan will be crowned with success will be another question. Because the Southern Territory has not recommended students for the Middle Sky for many years. Our hero explained that he thought that he had the right to try, whether he succeeded or failed. 
If he stays in the Zhongshan domain and his friend wants to come here, then he will repay him in full. Hearing this, his new acquaintance laughed, saying that he never wanted to come here again. Our hero, approaching the registrar, handed over his book. When he saw about the southern region, he thought carefully. Our hero explained that his older brother helped him. Then the man said that they no longer have a place from people from the southern region and could come another time. Then Zhu asked him how this was possible. Because every five years you can recommend students from four main regions. He had seen a letter of recommendation from his father, Zhu said. Then someone came up to them, asking if the young man was the son of that old man Zhu from the southern region. The young man said that it was the younger generation and it does not know all its predecessors. The man said that, to be honest, he thought that old man Zhu had returned to the west a long time ago. The young man didn't think he was still alive. Then he talked about the young man coming back and telling his father that this guy had borrowed a letter of recommendation from their southern region for the eastern one. Zhu asked the stranger about how his new acquaintance dared to insult his father. Did he really think that there were only weaklings in the southern region? At that moment, the young man hit Zhu, and our hero tried to hold the guy so that he would not fall. Was it really possible to just say that there was no one in the southern region? Then our hero asked, as soon as possible, is his father sitting idly by all this time? Then one of the registrars said that their Hainan clan was a third-ranked clan of the Zhongshan region. They have always respected strength. There have been no sensible people from his region for many years. They have beautiful people, wasn't it wrong? Then Zhu said that these people were lying. So the young man was talking about that. What they said about respect for the force, asking a stranger. What if people from the eastern region cannot defeat him? Our hero said, addressing a new acquaintance. He explained that if the young man could defeat him, the old man would pay for his future. It was our hero who asked if that was all, because it would be too unfair. Then the young man asked what our hero was talking about. Shayan said that if he won, no one from the eastern region would be recommended, because they were all garbage. Addressing our hero, the man asked if the young man would like to challenge him. Would he like to fight his students instead of him, he asked. Our hero explained that it was too troublesome. He had a lot of students from the eastern region. It's better to fight him so that everyone else can shut up, the young man said, pulling out his sword. After seeing our hero's sword, everyone began to be surprised, saying that it was necessary to pay attention to the aura around the sword. It seemed a little different. Then his opponent talked about the fact that the young man did not think that he was invincible, only thanks to the cultivation of Kai energy. Today he would weaken his energy and show how big the difference between them was, he reported. Our hero explained that he had not fought with anyone for a year, and it was necessary to understand how far he had progressed. At this moment, the young man took out his weapon, saying that he wanted to see what he was capable of and could not be embarrassed in front of his students. The disciples at this moment felt that the sword Kai was really so powerful, and they were thinking that sword cultivation did not have such abilities, talking about everyone retreating. After all, the young man is being attacked from a long distance and everyone could have suffered. Then the opponent, going to our hero, explained that it was all a bluff and he could not continue this for so long. Looking at our hero, he said. The next moment our hero was standing, and he was attacked by his opponent. The next moment our hero attacked him and then the enemy asked if that was all. Even if the young man was allowed to attack to the end, he would not be able to break through his defense once, the stranger reported. The young man said that this was not all and said that his opponent would get from the one he had prepared for him. The next moment our hero attacked him and then the students found out that this young man was really so strong. It was an amazing attack shouted Ju, who was supporting the youth. The man who was standing next to him was asking what was the point of being elegant. How much energy he spent to show such skill. If the opponent is weak, he may have a hundred enemies, he reported. But when faced with someone who is stronger, such a long-range attack that uses the life force simply burns from the inside, he said. The next moment, the enemy said that if this was all our hero was capable of, then he would not apologize. The young man asked who said it was his only attack. The next moment, he used the explosion to attack his opponent again, and the latter, using protection, looked back and realized that his protective dome had begun to collapse. The next moment, our hero again rushed to attack him, which his opponent did not expect at all and tried to defend himself from him. Attacking the man and dismantling his protective dome, our hero was able to take the sword away from the man who fought with him. Seeing that his sword flew off, our hero informed the man that he had lost. The man, not ready to accept defeat, said that the young man simply broke through his defense, and he would not be able to defeat him. The next moment, his own sword slightly wounded the opponent and cut off a clump of his hair. Seeing this, everyone was shocked by the technique our hero used. 
Then the young man asked if they would continue this senseless fight. Our hero reported that he might not be able to kill his opponent, but he wouldn't let him hit him back. He just wanted to ask something. Hold your sword in your hands. Our hero asked if he now had the right to a letter of recommendation from the southern region. The opponent, looking at this sword, almost hit him in the back of the head, he could have died on the spot. Where did such a person come from in the southern region? He thought, looking at our hero. Ju, approaching our hero, informed his brother that he fought very beautifully. It turns out that the young man uses a sword to control thunder and lightning. Our hero, looking at his friend, just smiled. He said that he understood, but now it is risky for the southern region. Approaching them, the enemy reported that our hero had won and he would keep his promise. They recommended Gu Shei Yong from the southern region in the Hanhai clan. At the moment, they offered to follow the messenger into the teleportation system and prepare to go to the main sect. Addressing our hero, the guy informed the young man that there was a teleportation system, telling Shei Yong to go exactly where he was pointing. After all, they used a stone with teleportation. Our hero at that moment was carefully watching this stone that was in front of him. The young man thought that this stone was an element of spatial magic, which means that there is a spatial attribute. He heard that this thing was produced for storage, but he did not know where it was produced. Looking at the stone, our hero thought. Standing in a circle where there was a magic sphere, our hero was offered to freeze in place, because he could feel uncomfortable and uncomfortable, but soon it will all pass. The next moment, the young man began to move and moving. He realized that it was probably teleportation. While he was moving, the young man saw the attribute bubbles and realized that the bubble with the spatial attribute was right in front of him. So many spatial attributes were next to the youth. There were a lot of useful storage devices in the southern region, but there were no more than 1,000 attributes. The young man thought that with these attributes he would be able to use the teleportation technique in a real battle. There was no need to use the old techniques anymore, our hero understood. Moving through the portal, he found himself in a picturesque place, trying to figure out if this was the legendary Zhongshan place. I feel the aura. He was thinking that it is considered several levels stronger than that of the southern region. No wonder no one from the southern region was able to enroll here. The next moment, he heard a sound and it was the sound of a bell, so the Hanhai clan was where this sound came from. Then our hero thought that this sound was so strange, it shocks people. Holding his head, our hero understood, and then suddenly he saw that this sound was sending out the vital attributes of these people who were right in front of him. Looking at the vital attributes, the young man thought that now this vital force should belong to him. Everyone thought that maybe it was Brother Yang's lightning. And our hero, thinking about the thunderstorm, realized that a year ago he had improved to the kingdom of Xuandang. He had extracted power from the thunderstorm, but still had not defended himself with something like that. If he could extract the thunder attribute from it, perhaps his sword might become stronger. The young man wondered, thinking that it was necessary to deal with this, going straight to the lightning. Yan Xinyu, a disciple of the Hanhai clan's radiance, a candidate of the clan. He was standing in the lightning trying to figure out if he was going to die here today, realizing that he didn't want this. Looking at his hands, the young men thought that his thunder powers were decreasing. Did the elders find out about it and rush to his aid? He thought. The next moment they saw our hero, who was nearby in the air, holding a sphere. Clutching the attribute in his hands, the young man thought that this attribute was much stronger than the one he received in the Xuandan kingdom. At this moment, he was imbued with vitality. When the guy saw him, he asked who it was, was the young man really crazy, because he would face the thunder directly, looking at our hero, he thought. A good opportunity, intentionally or not, but the young man could take the opportunity to deal with this. He thought and sat down to meditate next to our hero. At this moment, the rest of the sect was closely watching this, and then announced that the elders had arrived at the venue of this event. In front of those were the third elder, the second elder and elder Hanhai. Then one of them said that it was necessary to look there, was it really their new student? Asking about what he was doing there and it was necessary to remove the young man from the mountain, which he meditated in lightning, it seemed to them. Then one of the elders said that everyone should wait and maybe it was for the best that the young man was there. He showed up there just in time, he reported. Our hero was thinking at that moment that it was very cool, it was the strongest attribute he had ever absorbed. Now there will be no problems, our hero thought, smiling. The young man thought that if he met an elder from the eastern region, he wouldn't have to worry about creating any thunder techniques. The next moment our hero was thinking that thanks to the young man, he would be able to survive this thunderstorm, otherwise he would have already died from the blow. Our hero addressed the one who was sitting below him. 
Looking at the young man who was unconscious, our hero thought that it was possible to forget about it. Maybe they will still be brothers in the future. The next moment, everyone was talking about how it was over. Brother Yong coped with this, and our hero went down to the elders, who approached the young man and asked who he was. Our hero reported that he was in Gushe Yong from the southern region and greeted the elders by bowing to them. Then one of the men said that it was not an elder, it was the head of the clan to whom our hero bowed. The elder was asking where Yan Xinyu was. At that moment, holding onto a stone, addressing the third elder, the young man said that he was here and congratulating his brother, the guys said that he did a great job. Then the man standing next to him said that Xinyu would be able to safely cross any boundaries without relying on anything, and that his future was limitless. One of the elders, addressing our hero, asked if he was from the southern region, because no one from the southern region had been recommended to them for many years. Asking about how our hero ended up here when Xinyu was coping with the thunder. Xinyu, hearing about this, asked about the southern region telling the third elder that he already knew, because none of the students of the eastern region whom they recommended did not come, but a student from the southern region came. Then one of the men said that he had received a message that the young man had no support here and could get confused and lost here. Our hero, bowing to them, reported that he had inherited the soul of King Xuan in the southern region and created a sword from a pill. And King Xuan's soul had its own thunder attribute, so he can handle such an element well. And the young man came here. Before he finished, he was interrupted by the head of the clan. He reported that they have a sect of creation and improvement, but this is a different direction of improvement under the kingdom of Zundan and he said that he had heard a little about the legacy of King Xuan in the southern region. But this is the first time he has heard about such a sword and thunder attribute. At this moment, our hero showed him clearly his technique. The young man said that the disciple was unlucky, since he strongly depends on the elders. Of course there is an attribute of thunder and a secret that this guy was just lucky. At this moment, our hero was showing the sword that he was holding in his hands. Seeing the thunder attribute, everyone was surprised, since after such a thing he had not 10% more chances to cross the border. Definitely, this young man was very strong. Looking at our hero, all the disciples of the sect discussed. Then they talked about the fact that there had been no students from the southern region for many years. As a result, they had such a student. Then the young man, pointing the finger of our hero, said that he lied and he did not help him. By that time, he had already passed two steps, was just about to go to three, and the young man suddenly appeared. But after three times the thunder suddenly changed and fortunately support was prepared, the young man was on the verge of death. After listening to his disciple, the man turned to our hero and asked if this was an attribute of thunder, asking if it was easy to attract thunder with lightning with such a physique. If so, then it will not be easy for the young man to cross the border. This will lead to even greater tragedy and if, for example, he acts recklessly, then there will be big problems. At this moment, the clan head was saying that after some forces were transferred to the previous leader, the southern region clan's teleportation system failed. After that, the teleportation system can hardly be used, whether it was somehow connected with each other, he asked. At that moment, the man who had previously spoken with the head of the clan looked at our hero very strangely. The young man could not understand why he was looking at him like that, thinking that he might have been from the eastern region. One of the students warned that thunder is a punishment from heaven, there is no school that could cope with it. It makes no sense with this state of affairs, it will be more difficult for a young man to cross the border. Our hero, approaching a young man who was almost on the verge of death, asked if he really survived after three steps. After all, the young man lied without blushing at all. If our hero had not helped, then the young man would already be dead and immediately came to their aid. Our hero, addressing the guy, said that it was necessary to let the thunder and turn it into porridge and then no one would doubt. Jan, hearing that our hero was talking to him like that, asked how he dared to talk to him like that. The young man had no respect for his elders at all. When our hero heard about respect for elders, he asked himself what the young man who stood right in front of him was worthy of, saying that he should look at himself carefully. What does it mean to be angry? Looking at our hero, the young man thought that he did not have time to deal with this, so he will use it to gain trust and respect. The elder asked everyone to soak, saying that it just stays open later they will sort it out. But a sword that can cultivate the thunder attribute is unusual. He was afraid that there was no one in the Zhangshan territory who would also worry about representing the sect. The test was passed successfully, as all safe and sound, they had to continue. The head of the clan said that the young man was very talented, 
but had to give up arrogance. We had to go forward together. Our hero said that he would follow the instructions and the next moment he went with everyone else. After the bell rang, everyone gathered here, from the least powerful to the strongest. Then the bell will ring three times. If everyone feels that they are not strong enough and they weaken, they could leave at any time. The elder reported. Despite our hero, he said that as for those who can survive the last trials, they will be promoted to students in Xuanei and will be able to compete for the position of Zong. Our hero was thinking that even before that, one sound of the bell was enough for some students to fall. There are those who are above the rank, above the rank of Xuanei, and he was wondering, among those present, he is the only one who has reached the rank of Xuanei. Isn't Yang at the level of Zongzi, our hero thought. The man says that he just wanted to offer to expel our hero from the sect, addressing Ian, saying that the second elder had helped him and he was clearly against him. At this moment, the young man, who had recently lied to our hero, said that whatever had already been promoted, he was better than others. Even if the young man could reach the rank of Xuanyi, he would no longer be his rival. The guy said that the rank of Zongzi was his, whoever gets in his way, he will kill him. The next moment the bell rang and everyone was told that if the bell rang two times, then everyone had to be ready. Some immediately got caught, saying that it was very fast. They were not ready, and our hero sat down in a pose and began to meditate, thinking that this bell is really strange. If someone was not strong in spirit, he would become weaker and weaker, and those with a strong spirit, he strengthened strength, had to take advantage of it. When the opponent of our hero also began to meditate, his mentor said that he had a good idea. Every time the bell rings, four elders nearby are busy with this and he has made friends with six elders who rang the bell and will help the young man now. Can help him become stronger, he needed to cope with this task and then no one will be able to compete with him. The young man said that then he would sort it out. The next moment, everyone realized that they could no longer fight it. Someone was very bad, and someone said that he had already given up. If he continued in the same spirit, he would go crazy. Our hero was trying to meditate and the next moment he realized that he was somewhere trying to figure out what it was. After all, he had just been in a meeting, and now he found himself in a completely unfamiliar place. White airflow, it was a familiar feeling, our hero thought. Seeing this flow and it was soul power, an attribute that he had previously extracted. It must be in his body, but why was she here? The next moment, walking through the air, he said that he heard a bell. It was the same sound that was at the meeting and thought that it was alarming him. Apparently it was a soul attribute that our hero had previously extracted, and also comes from here, where he was going and all these white streams were moving with him in the same direction. It was to this bell, where our hero was going. When he came to the bell, the young man thought that it was an ancient bell of the Hanhai clan, so it absorbs its power and now everything was clear to our hero. Previously, he had no idea how to use and where the soul attribute is located, but it turns out he was here all this time. This ancient bell wanted to absorb the power of his soul. When he first entered his consciousness, he encountered this. Our hero could not allow this to continue. This attribute has always been a part of him, couldn't let him do it and decided that he would change everything. One of the men who was watching our hero thought that he had summoned the soul of the bell to absorb forces with the help of sound. Why was the young man still calm? He thought. At this point, it is said that those who can wait for the test are promoted in rank. A man in the distance, watching our hero, and realized that many participants had suffered and conducted tests over the past few versions, where there were no Xuanyi students. Looking at our hero, the man continued to think. The next moment he sat down with our hero and thought that in this case he wanted to see what the last call would be. This is the greatest power that the sect could summon to this bell, he was sorry that it affected the rest of the participants, he thought. The elder did not understand what happened with the last stroke of the bell. After all, the power of the bell simply disappeared, unless it could never happen, someone said. Ian, who was watching our hero, was thinking about whether he had failed. What is its origin? Even if the charms of the ancient bell could not knock our hero out of the rut. Opening his eyes, at that moment our hero was trying to meditate. He wanted to extract the power of the soul. But it accidentally merged with the power of the soul that he had previously extracted, our hero realized. It turned out that this ancient bell contains the technical protection of the soul, used to counter attacks of the soul level. Just like King Xu and soul, it was a legacy. The young man realized that it might have been a defensive technique. If he had been perfected well enough, then he would have died during the attack and it looks like in the future he would have to sit over its study carefully. Holding a bell in his hands, our hero thought. At this moment, the head of the sect was carefully watching our hero, thinking that the young man had really inherited the ancient bell. 
After all, this guy was lucky he was able to get into his sect, the head of the clan fought. The next moment, our hero continued to meditate, and the students next to him said that they were announcing that Gu Shei Yang, Duan Hongshan and Lu Shang had been promoted to Xuanyi students. One young man congratulated the other saying that he had become a disciple of Xiaoni, and the guy was crying with happiness. At that moment, the head was saying that he was announcing the start of the selection. The four members of the Xuanyi family will be surpassed on the martial arts field. The next moment we stood around the field and wanted to see what would happen there. The guys talked about what they had heard, that this year's conference was very difficult, and many guys were obsessed. Maybe others also noticed incredibly that three disciples were promoted to the rank of Xuanyi. It was all because the ancient bell was out of order and did not radiate the original power. However, speaking of that, even if they were lucky enough to become a sect disciple, the true strength would be revealed during the competition. While everyone was discussing among themselves what the fight was supposed to be and who could achieve what, they announced round one, saying that Giant Zinyu was against Duan Hongshan. If Duan Hongshan and Lu Shang follow the example of previous years, they will hardly be able to enter the ranks of Xuanyi's disciples. A head thought, Yan Zinyu was the only student who was promoted to the rank of Xuanyi last year. There was a big gap in strength between them, it was obvious. And although this novice Shei Yong has excellent talent and has perfected his sword, he was recognized by Gu Zhong. But if you compare him with Xinyu, with his current strength, it is obvious that there is a gap in strength, the head of the clan thought. After a few years, he hoped that he would be able to maintain contact with the person who came after him and reached great heights. Turning to his brother, he said that they could do this. The young man said that Brother Duan could hurry up and be serious. In order to fight, addressing his younger brother, he said that he did not dare, then the young man drew his sword and began to attack the opponent. The next moment, the observer saw that the young man defeated Brother Duan with one blow, just watching it. Our hero went to the duel and announced the second round, Gu Shei Yang against Lu Shang. Our hero greeted Brother Lu Shan and bowed to him. Then he said that Brother Gu from the southern region has a good base was promoted to a disciple of Xuanyi, said that his future was limitless. The young man said that he asked him to teach him something. The next moment he was attacked by the enemy, and our hero was able to evade him just by stepping aside. In the next moment, he was able to hit the youth with just one blow. Having been defeated, he bowed to our hero, and all the observers were happy for the newcomer. Shei Yong remained standing on the battlefield. A young man approached him, asking if the winner would get everything. The loser would forget about this place and said that the young man was only at the last stage of Dai development. He could not beat him, because he was the best. Our hero, listening to the young man, asked why they... People from the eastern region were so unreasonable, did they really like to rely on others? The young man said that in this case he would use it to defeat the young man, taking his sword out of its scabbard. When he heard that the young man would rely on him, he wanted to see if he would break it and rush to attack our hero. Che Yang said that he tried to do it and reflected his blow. The next moment, the guy did not expect that our hero could be so strong, thinking to himself about how his strength could be so huge that he bounced into the wall and punched it. Seeing this, the clan head asked if it was a sword that could be used in the late stage of Xuandang. Was the thunder and lightning attribute so strong? The opponent of our hero thought that the young man was so strong, but when they start using their trick again, he will strike before he has time to cast a spell, he thought. The next moment, he started circling around our hero to attack him. Surrounding the young man, he said that if the young man could get in, what was the point of using him again? The next moment, when our hero was trying to use his weapon, his opponent realized that now he would use his speed to finish him off, coming from behind our hero, trying to attack him. But the next moment the young man flew away and our hero, turning, looked at his opponent. Our hero said that in the face of absolute power, all his tricks were useless, to which the young man said that it was impossible. He was stronger than our hero, but he could not defeat him even at the late stage of Xuandang. At that moment, blood was dripping from the guy's mouth. He said that it was impossible, because the young man did not even use any other technique. Then he talked about using his power. He didn't believe it, that the young man could be better than him, that his skills could be better than his. Our hero explained that he didn't come here for that, to fight for Jingzu with someone like him, thinking to ask that the young man will make it easier for him only to work. He might be able to resist after such an attack, but this is not the end. Only he got his title due to the help of others and our hero wanted to let them show what a person who survived a catastrophe at a late stage should look like. The next moment, he used his weapon and began to attack the young man using 1000 balls. As long as there is no life force left, 
He will summon thunder and lightning like this, our hero said. By hitting this moment your opponent. At that moment, the head of the sect shouted that it was him. She Yong had to become a member of his sect. Pointing his finger at our hero, he said. Looking at his opponent, She Yong asked now how he thought whether the young man could become a member of the sect and whether he was worthy of it. And his opponent was defeated, and lightning was flying around him. Then everyone standing nearby asked what it was, because it looked like something like a thunderstorm. They announced that Gu She Yong had won this duel and everyone congratulated the young man on joining their sect. The head of the clan, sitting and waiting for the young man, said that he did not expect that the southern region could advise such a talented guy, asking what kind of reward we wanted for Jingzu. Our hero explained that he was pleased for his concern for the southern region. Tai had enough resources. He hoped that he could choose a few elixirs so that he could fight. The head of the clan said that as a member of the Hanhai sect, the young man could choose what he wanted in the Tibetan Sutra Pavilion. His sect belongs to your sect in the Zhongshan Kingdom, and there are also special pill books. The pill materials he mentioned are not the same thing, he reported. Our hero, already upset, asked if they didn't have medicines. Then the head of the sect said that it was a long story. Because between the kingdoms of Hanhai and Jinyang there is the kingdom of Xiaohan. There are many medicinal herbs growing in this place. Filled with vitality, this place opens every ten years. The man continued his story, saying that his sect and the Jinyang sect had made an agreement to send their disciples to each other. Originally, it was the main source of medicinal materials, but many years ago, the Jinyang sect became one of the best and this place gradually became common to four sects. It was just those who did bad things to his family and since then the medicines have become less and less. From year to year, they were sorely lacking. For the same reason, the Hanhai sector was chosen by Zongzi, and the head of the clan, approaching our hero, hoped that it would be possible to bring students to the Xiaohan territory, which will open in a month. We need to prepare and expel other sects from this territory. Listening to this whole story, our hero had a single question, asking whether these sects were strong. He was informed that they were not inferior to this sect in terms of overall strength, and Elder Hanhai's strength is higher than those three. But the disciples they send are in the center of Shenhai, so his sect could never gain an advantage in Xiaohan territory. The young man thought about what it means is connected with the interests of the sect. The sect's martyrs periodically clash there. The disciples of the kingdom of Shenhai, our hero thought and understood that perhaps this would be a problem. The head, leaning on our hero, said that he was waiting for our hero to answer with his sword. He believed that the young man would be able to win the glory of the free sect. He would receive 30% of the resources from that territory before handing them over to the sect. The head also said that it was even more important that a strong blow should be delivered to them, but now they could translate the negotiations. Our hero agreed, saying that the pavilion of the Tibetan Sutra is located in the inner courtyard of the sect. He will let you say hello to them. Our hero thanked the elder for this. Jinyong sect. Jinyong sect elder Jin Fei reported that two sects were invited today to discuss the Xiaohan situation. He didn't know what they were thinking about the distribution, referring to the rest of the elders. One of the elders said that the Yuihui sect always supports them. They will demand to receive 20% of the profits. I thought it was really not enough. It was the elder of the Yuihui sect Guan Zhao who spoke. The elder of the Yingyu sect, Yun Ruo, said that it was six times when she came here. Her Yingyu sect accepted two disciples of the Shenhai kingdom. It was time to remind about it, the girl said. Then the man asked, how much did she want and she got up from her seat, saying that she thought that it became fair for them to compete and everyone to rely on their own strength. Then the man reported, what they seem to have forgotten, that this territory is the border between his Tishinyan sect and the Hanhai sect. It was better not to contact their Hanhai house, he said, asking about what the other elders thought. Then the elder said that, according to their abilities, they would receive 30%. We can consider this as compensation for the students of Yuehua and Yingyu, who in recent years went to the territory of Xiaohan. The elder girl standing nearby said that it was a good invitation. Then the elder who gathered them said that they should listen to Guan Zhao. He thought to himself that his appetite was really brutal. This year they have several Shenhai students, I thought that this time they would be able to divert big benefits.